I was killed by a rich second generation in order to protect my girlfriend, and my body was thrown into a chaotic burial ground. The next day, my girlfriend slept with the rich second generation. Even the zombie king couldn't bear to see it and said he would turn me into a zombie for revenge. As I lay dying in the overgrown grass, I said to the person who claimed to be the zombie king, Are you insulting the nine years of compulsory education I received? I'm on the verge of collapse. Damn it. What kind of sin is this? Before I die, I'm being dragged by a lunatic who keeps bragging, making it impossible for me to die peacefully. What makes me even angrier is that this middle-aged man directly squeezed a drop of blood from his finger onto my wound. Don't you have any diseases? This could infect me. But whatever. I'm going to die anyway. I sighed in despair. The middle-aged man spoke. Young man, you won't die. From now on, you are the zombie king, the successor of the royal lineage. You are the new zombie king. Two hours later, the moon tonight is so full. I lay in the grass, staring at the moon. Damn it. It's been so long. Why am I still not dead? Although waiting for death is long. This is too long. Another hour passed, and something doesn't feel right. I still haven't died. Can't it be quick and painless? Why am I feeling more energetic? Just as he was puzzled, he suddenly heard a girl's voice. Wait for me. I'll be right there. Then I saw a very pretty girl with short hair rushing over. Because I was in the grass and it was night. The girl didn't see me on the ground. I saw her walk to where my head was. Then she loosened her pants and squatted down. What is she doing? Can't she have some manners and respect for someone who was about to die? If she pees on my face, it would be so undignified. So, I spoke up. Girl, it is forbidden to urinate or defecate here. Those who violate this rule will be photographed as a keepsake. The atmosphere immediately became awkward. The girl lowered her head and glanced at me. Our eyes met for real this time. Suddenly, the girl let out a scream, pulled up her pants, and ran away. I finally breathed a sigh of relief, avoiding getting urinated on before dying. However, after about 10 seconds, the girl came back, accompanied by another girl. Meng Meng, are you sure you saw someone lying on the ground watching you pee? How is it possible for someone to be lying here in the middle of the night? There must be ghosts. Be careful. I could tell that the first girl was clearly scared. As they slowly approached, they both saw me in the weeds. What are you looking at? Haven't you seen someone about to die before? The two girls exclaimed together. Then the long-haired girl named Zier calmed down and said it was a person. The short-haired girl from before looked at me on the ground again, and then both girls looked at me carefully. Who are you? What are you doing lying here at this late hour? Playing dead? Zier said irritably. Yes, playing dead. Just leave quickly and don't disturb me while I'm dead. Is it so hard to die peacefully? I replied. At this point, the short-haired girl named Xiaoming wasn't afraid of me either. But you're fine, aren't you? How could you be dead? You're perfectly fine. Are you blind? Can't you see all the blood on me? I was speechless, thinking that everyone I had encountered tonight was crazy. Both girls looked at me in confusion. Then Xiaomeng said, Where is the blood? I'm so angry. I sat up straight and pulled at my clothes, saying, Come, 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 look and see if this is blood. Looking at my clean clothes, I was stunned. Wasn't I covered in blood before? Where is the blood? No. What about the wounds on my stomach? The ones that were stabbed twice? I searched for a while and realized that there was no trace of any wounds on my body. At this moment, only mom can express his feelings. After all, he doesn't have much education. How can he die and still be alive? Could it be that I have really become an immortal zombie? Being born in the new society and growing up under the red flag, I find it hard to believe that I have actually turned into a zombie. But since I haven't died, I'll take my time to settle some scores. I won't forget how I lay on the grass. And those ruthless siblings in school better wait for me. The beautiful woman who peed on my head asked. Hey, why are you here so late at night? You're not a lunatic, are you? After all, I just saw you naked. And I'm not happy about it. So I'm not being polite. I took a deep breath and asked back. What are you doing here so late at night? What, what are you doing? We were driving from our hometown in the countryside to the city. And we just stopped here to use the bathroom. Speaking, Xiaoming blushed for a moment then pointed to a car on the road in the distance. Is it convenient to run to the cemetery? That's impressive. If you're going to the city, it would be convenient to give me a ride. The two women looked at each other and nodded. The car started, and I asked. You two are quite brave, driving from the countryside to the city so late at night. Aren't you afraid? Upon hearing this, Zier, who was driving, said that this is exactly the feeling she wanted. I was speechless and about to say something when I noticed a woman in a white dress standing by the side of the road, waving slowly. 
Someone was flagging down the car. So Zir stopped and asked the woman in white what was the matter. The woman in white had a pale face, expressionless, and with empty eyes, she said, Can you give me a ride? Sure. Where do you want to go? Zir asked. At the same time, Xiaomeng had already opened the car door and let the woman get in. After getting in the car, the woman in white said in a leisurely voice, Go to the underworld. Ziajiji, don't joke around. Where do you really live? Xiaomeng asked with a smile. I spoke up and said, she might not be joking. Xiaomeng and Zier both looked at me in confusion. Ever since I saw the woman in white, I noticed a faint gray aura around her, and as soon as she got in the car, it became chilly inside. Late at night, in the wilderness, a woman with pale skin and a faint gray aura all over her body stopped a car to go to the underworld. Damn it, who would believe she's not a ghost? Luckily, I become numb after almost dying just now, so I'm not only unafraid of ghosts, but also a little excited. If I were a zombie, does that mean it's like meeting a fellow villager? So, I reached out my right hand and nervously said to the woman in white, Fellow villager. No, I mean, hello, female ghost. My name is Jean Fong. It's my first time meeting a ghost. Please take care of me. The female ghost was momentarily at a loss and could only extend her hand, her pale hand shaking hands with mine. Zir and Xiaoming were both stunned. Is this how you treat ghosts? Shouldn't you be scared and screaming? Handshake. What the heck? Is your head made of iron? I saw fear on both girls' faces, ready to scream. But then I spoke up again. By the way, how can you prove that you're really a ghost? Like, do you have any identification? The female ghost was also taken aback, thinking, is the ghost industry really that bad now? Do we have to show identification to scare people? So, the female ghost apologized and said, it's my first time scaring people. I'm not familiar with the ropes. I feel embarrassed. Then she brushed aside her bangs, revealing a pair of completely black terrifying eyes. She then held her head and was lifted up by her neck. I wonder if this proves that I am a female ghost. She spoke leisurely, and Xiaomeng and Zir finally let out a horrified scream. At the same time, I was so scared that I shrank my neck. At this moment, the female ghost put her head on her neck, and suddenly Qin Feng leaned over and whispered in the female ghost's ear. To be honest, I might be a zombie. The female ghost turned her head and looked at Qin Feng with her pale eyes, angrily saying, I am a ghost, not a fool. What does that mean? Am I not a zombie? Then the female ghost said again, The first time I come out to scare people, I encounter a lunatic. It's really unlucky. Do you think I won't drain your vitality? As she spoke, the female ghost suddenly opened her mouth and sucked towards me. Zir and Xiaoming were so scared that they quickly pushed open the car door and ran away. Just ran a few steps. Xiaoming stopped and said, Zir, it's not right for us to leave him behind. After all, he's the only man who has seen me down there. Xiaoming still felt a pang of sympathy. But he's a ghost. Even if he's a ghost, we should still save him. They were still talking when the female ghost in the car opened her mouth and tried to suck me in. But she couldn't draw any life force from me. She tried a few more times, but still couldn't get any life force. At this point, I was a little scared and spoke up. Do I have bad breath? The female ghost looked confused and said, No, then why can't you suck out my young energy? I thought for a moment and said, Is it because you're not doing it right? In horror movies, don't they do mouth to mouth? The female ghost froze. She had never sucked life force from someone before. So how would she know? She asked. So, according to what you're saying, how do female ghosts suck in energy? Damn it, I'm not a ghost. Why are you asking me? I rolled my eyes. At this moment, Xiaomeng and Zir sneaked over and stood outside the car window. Xiaomeng said, What are you guys doing? This ghost must be a fool. She doesn't know how to absorb energy from people. The female ghost became angry upon hearing this and said, Shut up. If you say that, how am I supposed to continue surviving in the future? At the same time, the female ghost flew out of the car window, grabbed Xiaomeng by the neck, and opened her mouth to suck. I quickly got off the car and saw a faint white breath being sucked out of Xiaoming's mouth by the female ghost. Damn it. Stop it. Let go of that girl. What creepy things are you doing? Come at me. As I said this, I took a step forward and kicked the female ghost hard from behind. With a loud bang, the female ghost was kicked and flew out. Then let out a miserable scream as she fell to the ground. Xiaoming's body trembled, and she weakly leaned against the car, glancing at me. At the same time, the female ghost on the ground got up and said in surprise, You can hit me? Damn, how refreshing. Hitting a ghost is not illegal. Saying that, she rushed forward and punched the female ghost twice. Oh my, you can really hit me. 
The female ghost was stunned, she was a ghost, and attacks from ordinary people had no effect on her, but not only could I hit her, but I also sent her flying, what's going on, why is everything different from what she imagined, I don't know why, suddenly a feeling of grievance surged up in my heart, and the female ghost suddenly squatted down and started crying, why am I so pitiful, I was stunned, what's wrong, it's not that serious, why are you crying even after I punched you twice, I said nervously, the female ghost cried even harder when she heard the words, it's bad enough that I died miserably, but now they won't let me into the ghost gate, I came back, and because I'm a new ghost, I was bullied by a few old ghosts, I thought about absorbing some human energy to enhance my strength, but I couldn't even absorb it from men, I tried to absorb it from women, but I ended up getting beaten up, can you believe it, a ghost like me actually got beaten up, why am I so unlucky, is there no justice in this world? The female ghost cried so sadly that Xiaoming and Zier felt sorry for her. Can't you just find a place to stay peacefully? I said speechlessly. Upon hearing this, the female ghost cried and said, I died tragically and I'm a lonely and wild ghost. I have nowhere to go. But that's not our problem. I spread my hands and motioned for the two women to get in the car. I also got in the car and prepared to leave. At this moment, the female ghost flew in and glanced at me. I wanted to follow. I stared at her, then thought for a moment. It was highly possible that I was a zombie, so it would be convenient for me to have this female ghost with me to learn more about these things. So I agreed. The female ghost looked at me and wondered if I would harm her as well. When we arrived in the city, after Zir dropped me and the female ghost off at home, she stepped on the gas and drove away. I was speechless, then opened the door and entered the house. Do you know what a zombie is? The female ghost asked in confusion. The kind that hops and jumps? I haven't seen one. Take a closer look. Am I a zombie? I asked. The female ghost looked puzzled, shook her head, and said, I don't know if you're a zombie, but you're definitely not human. Damn it, why are you cursing? I frowned. The female ghost said, I said you're not alive. You look like a person, but I can't sense any life energy from you. Her words made me silent. It's possible that I am a zombie. I don't know. I haven't even figured out what kind of ghost I am. The female ghost said disappointedly. I sighed and said, by the way, can you tell me your tragic story? The female ghost pouted and said, I won't tell ghost stories at night. I'm scared. I was taken aback and thought, damn it, it's good to refuse. It makes sense. The female ghost was unwilling to talk about her tragic death, so Qin Feng didn't mention it. Then Qin Feng went to take a shower and then came out naked. He was usually the only one in the house, so he was very casual, but he had forgotten that there was now a female in the house, albeit a ghost. So when the female ghost staring at his own part of the dumbfounded gaze, hurried to find clothes to put on, lying on the bed, Xin Feng did not sleep for a long time. He doesn't know if he's turned into a zombie, but it's absolutely unbelievable that he's back from the dead without a wound on his body. These don't want to think about it for the moment, but the scene from school during the day came back to his mind. The beautiful girlfriend that he had been talking about for a semester was looked at by a domineering rich second generation in school. That rich second generation coerced Qin Feng to leave his girlfriend, and in the end, he didn't hesitate to hire someone to beat up Qin Feng after he and his girlfriend left the school. In order to help his girlfriend leave, he blocked the punks, but was himself severely stabbed twice by the cornered rich second generation. So the rich second generation let the punks pull the dying Qin Feng to the middle of nowhere and throw him away, which led to the scene where Qin Feng met that middle-aged man before he died. Thinking of this, Qin Feng took a deep breath. He didn't die, I wonder if that rich second generation Wan Yunfei, will be surprised? Unconsciously, a trace of an icy look appeared on Qin Feng's face. At the same time, a faint black aura surfaced on his body, and the whites of his eyes turned black. It was just that he himself didn't know about all these changes. There were no words for the night. The next morning, Qin Feng got up and didn't see the female ghost, thinking that she should be hiding during the day. After washing up, he went to school. Nanjong Middle School, the largest middle school in Nanjong City, tens of thousands of students, mixed with fish and dragons. At this moment, in the classroom, a rather pretty looking young girl sat in her seat and looked at an empty seat in the back row, with a somewhat complicated expression on her face. After a long time, she sighed slightly, completely removing that trace of worry from her eyes and withdrew her eyes. At the same time, a man with a center parted head walked over. This man was covered in designer labels that added up to tens of thousands of dollars, barely eye catching in length. With a condescending smile on his face, he lowered his head and said to the young girl, Shan Shan, still looking? This kid can't possibly show up. The young girl called Shan Shan froze, then asked in a low voice, Wang Yunfei, Qin Feng, he. Wang Yunfei's eyes were stern as he whispered, dead. The young girl frowned and did not speak. In the future, you'll be with me, 
How can a loser like Qin Feng qualify for the company of a beautiful woman? Don't you think so? Wang Yunfei sneered. Shan Shan glanced at Wang Yunfei and didn't speak under the tangle. Just ask, what woman doesn't yearn for money after she passes the age of innocence? Although Shan Shan was torn in her heart, the facts now had proven that money could do whatever it wanted. What could she do if she followed Qin Feng? If the rich Wang Yunfei wanted to get Qin Feng, it wouldn't be a matter of spending some money? Love and money, fantasy and reality, she should choose the latter. So, gradually, she convinced herself inwardly. Well, have you figured it out? Want to follow me? Wang Yunfei asked. Shan Shan wanted to nod, but in the end, she couldn't do it. At night, my family's Shu Wei Yun restaurant, accompany me for a meal. Shu Wei Yun restaurant, that was one of Ben's top upscale restaurants, go to eat once, don't even think about it without 10 or 20 thousand dollars. Facing such temptation, she finally nodded. However, right at this moment, a figure walked over, while a voice said in a salty manner. Yo, student Wang Yunfei is inviting for dinner? How about inviting me as well? Wang Yunfei and Shan Shan were both stunned, and when they immediately looked, both of them immediately froze. Qin Feng? Shan Shan shouted and immediately stood up, a little heartbroken. Qin Feng looked at Shan Shan, smiled and said, after yesterday, you don't seem to be worried about me at all. Shan Shan sheepishly avoided Qin Feng's eyes, Qin Feng sneered, then said to Wang Yunfei. What? You're in the same class, don't you recognize it? Wang Yunfei was shocked in his heart, he accidentally stabbed Qin Feng twice, and at that time, several punks said that Qin Feng would surely die. In order to block the mouth, he purposely gave a few punks an extra $100,000 a person to let them deal with Qin Feng's body. But now, Qin Feng was actually standing in front of him intact, which really made him not believe it. You, are fine? Many students in the surrounding class looked at them suspiciously, and then he saw Qin Feng walk to Wang Yunfei's side, moved closer and said with cold eyes, I'm not dead, you, should have trouble sleeping and eating. After saying that, Qin Feng didn't even look at Shan Shan and returned to his position. Shan Shan wanted to say something, looked at Wang Yunfei, but in the end did not say anything. Wang Yunfei also looked at Qin Feng in the back row, and after a long time, a hint of ferocity flashed in his eyes. And after Qin Feng sat down, his heart was a bit lost. He loved Shan Shan, and Shan Shan loved him. That's why he protected her like that yesterday, at the expense of being stabbed twice himself. But today disappointed him, his own girlfriend, not at all worried about her death, but instead chatting with Wang Yunfei. Although he knew that Shan Shan hadn't done anything out of the ordinary yet, it had already made Qin Feng's heart cold. After class at noon, Shan Shan saw Wang Yunfei go away, and only then walked to Qin Feng's side with a crying voice and said, I'm sorry Qin Feng, I... I'm afraid, I'm afraid that Wang Yunfei will find me in trouble I just agreed to have dinner with him, but I definitely won't go at night. Qin Feng drew a piece of paper and gave it to her, then faintly said, I know, go, eat lunch. In the past, both of them used to go to lunch together happily, but now, no one is talking, just walking side by side, the distance is invisible, starting to alienate. After class in the afternoon, Shan Shan came over and whispered, I will go to my relative's house for dinner with my parents in the evening, so I won't accompany you. Qin Feng nodded expressionlessly, he could see that Shan Shan was distancing herself, and he himself was tempted to open his mouth and say break up. But he held back, he wanted to wait for her to open her mouth to say break up on her own, after all, she hadn't done anything to wrong herself yet, since she hadn't touched the bottom line, then let time fade the relationship. After Shan Shan left, Wang Yunfei also came over, Qin Feng, your life is really big, but it doesn't matter, sooner or later I will play dead you, sooner or later Shan Shan is mine. Qin Feng sneered and said, feel free to come and play dead with me anytime, if you can't play dead with me, count yourself as incapable. Qin Feng then left the school alone. Only just out of the school gate, a luxury car suddenly stopped in front of him. After the car door opened, inside was actually Zier from last night. Qin Feng, get in the car, Xiaoming can't make it. Qin Feng, ah, uh, wasn't she fine yesterday? Zier, I don't know, she didn't come to class during the day today. I also just received a call from her mom saying that she can't make it, she's in the hospital at the moment, asking me to go over and take a look. Qin Feng said, then why did you ask me to go? I don't know you well. Zier said, I suspect it's because we hit a ghost yesterday, anyway, get in the car and go take a look together. Chapter 4, Rescuing Xiaoming Qin Feng didn't expect Zier to be in this school and run into him. Hearing her talk about it being so serious, Qin Feng is also worried about Xiao Meng. After all, the sister is quite cute and kind. So he got into Zier's limousine and headed towards the best hospital in the city. After taking Qin Feng into a high-class ward in a windy manner, he saw that there were quite a few people in the ward at the moment. Among them were several doctors and nurses, as well as several young men and women and a middle-aged couple. The middle-aged couple both had sad faces, and the woman's face was still tear-stained. Zier came and said to the middle-aged couple, Uncle Su, and Lu, how is Meng Meng doing? 
As she asked, both she and Qin Feng also saw Xiao Meng on the hospital bed, at the moment, her eyes were tightly closed, her face was pale, and her lips were white, as if she was already dead. As soon as the woman grabbed Zier's hand she cried and said, Xiao Zi, Meng Meng Shi. Doctor said she can't. Zier's face changed and her eyes had teardrops in them. Then she turned her head and looked at Qin Feng and said, You quickly look at Meng Meng. Qin Feng was dumbfounded, what was he looking at? He wasn't a doctor. Don't say, he took a look and really saw the problem. He found that on Meng Ming's face, there was a faint gray breath. This kind of breath is exactly the same as on the female ghost. Qin Feng immediately thought that last night, Meng Meng was sucked a little bit of Yang Qi by the female ghost. At the same time, it was also definitely tainted with Yin Qi. But how was he supposed to talk about it? In front of so many doctors, he said that Meng Meng was infected with Yin Qi after having her Yang Qi sucked in? It was at this time that a man around 20 years old looked at Qin Feng and spoke with disdain. Zier, who is this man? What did you bring him here for? The people around them also looked at Qin Feng in confusion, and they heard Zier say, He's a new friend that Meng Meng and I have made, Zhou Zhi, you care if we make friends? Upon hearing this, Zhou Zhi's eyes turned even more hostile towards Qin Feng, but he was relieved to see that Qin Feng was dressed in ordinary clothes. At this time, an attending physician spoke, She's no longer able to, sorry, there's nothing we can do. The heart rate displayed on the nearby instrument was getting lower and lower, and was already almost non-existent. Upon hearing this, the woman directly burst into tears, and the middle-aged man also fell into tears. Seeing this, Qin Feng took a deep breath and said, Don't worry, she's not dead yet, I can save her. With these words, the crowd once again looked at Qin Feng. At the same time, Dr. Lu, who had spoken at the beginning, frowned. The patient has basically lost her vital features now, she won't last more than 5 minutes. Qin Feng stepped forward and said, Although I don't know anything about medicine, I know that she's still alive, and there's a way to bring her back to life. Hearing Qin Feng say this, the doctors and nurses present felt that he was arrogant, and one nurse even opened her mouth to say, Are you questioning the doctors in our hospital? Please get out. Meanwhile, Zhou Zhi sneered, Meng Meng is like this, and you're still here to joke about his life and death? Qin Feng frowned, then looked at the middle-aged couple and said, Uncle and auntie, they said that Meng Meng wouldn't last more than a few minutes anyway, so why don't you let me try? Could it be that you guys can't bear to watch her die? Upon hearing this, the middle-aged couple both looked at their daughter on the bed, and then the middle-aged man spoke. Young man, if you have any methods, feel free to try, if you save my daughter, I am willing to give you all of my family's assets. Everyone was shocked when these words came out. Su family is a business tycoon in South Central City, the family property is tens of billions of ah, actually for the daughter can give up, visible to the daughter's favor. Qin Feng didn't talk, walked up and looked down at Xiao Meng, and realized that the great chi on her face was the yin chi from the female ghost. Although he didn't know how to get rid of this stuff, still Qin Feng took the attitude of trying and fanned his hand on Xiao Meng's face. Unexpectedly, the Yin Qi was like green smoke, slowly dissipating as Qin Feng's palm fluttered. Qin Feng himself did not think it was possible, but he did not know that his current zombie body could drive the Yin Qi itself. After the Yin Qi was fanned out by Qin Feng, Xiao Meng's pale face slightly recovered a little, but her heartbeat was still so weak that it was almost non-existent. Qin Feng looked at Xiao Meng and thought, the female ghost was sucking away a little bit of her yang qi at that time, so could he give her a little bit of yang qi over his mouth to mouth? Thinking of this, he swallowed a mouthful of saliva, and then lowered his head right under the crowd's dumbfounded eyes, mouth to mouth kissed on Meng Ming's delicate lips. At the same time, he blew into Meng Ming's mouth like artificial respiration. After blowing a few mouthfuls, Zhou Xi suddenly took a step forward and ripped Qin Feng away, saying angrily, What are you doing? Where is this saving someone's life? You're taking advantage of the opportunity, aren't you? Joji was very angry, his family was also very rich, he had always been friends with the Su family, and even more so, he had always taken Meng Meng as his future wife. Although now Meng Meng is going to die, but also can't let this kid take advantage of it, right? You have to know, you have not even held Meng Meng's hand ah. At this time, a few nurses also reacted and hurriedly said, darn smelly rascal, hurry up and call security. A room full of people thought that Qin Feng was deliberately taking advantage of the situation, where would he save people? So they all looked at Qin Feng angrily. Especially the men, such a beautiful girl being taken advantage of by Qin Feng, they were also very upset. Call the police, this kid is too hateful. Zhou Xi said and pulled out his cell phone. However, just at this moment, Xiao Meng on the bed opened her eyes and looked at the crowd somewhat weakly and said, What happened? Everyone froze, then looked at the hospital bed, then one by one, they were dumbfounded. Dr. Lu looked at the instrument, and his heart rate returned to normal. How is this? This possible? Daughter? You woke up? Do you feel uncomfortable anywhere? The woman rushed over to ask. Xiao Meng, no ah, just feel a little tired. Saying this, she licked her lips and said with some embarrassment, did I drool in my sleep? 
Xin Feng sniffs and speaks, Oh, sorry, maybe I just drooled. Xiao Meng? The surrounding people are stunned, fanning the air to the face and then kissing it, a dying person comes to life? A few doctors felt that their profession had been insulted and struck down. At this time, Zhou Zhi stepped forward with a false face of worry and said, Little dream you finally woke up, you scared me to death, luckily you're fine. It's not in vain that I took all the trouble to help you look for doctors everywhere. This bastard is too shameless, not mentioning a word about Qin Feng saving Xiaomeng, but reflecting his own worry and looking for a doctor. Zier couldn't even look at it anymore and said, Meng Meng, don't listen to him, just now the doctor said you can't make it, I saw him standing far away, not worried at all. Qin Feng wanted to save you and he even stopped it. If it wasn't for Qin Feng kissing you, you would have been in real danger. Joji's face instantly became embarrassed while Meng Meng looked at Qin Feng with wide eyes and said, You kissed me? Qin Feng bristles, isn't this to save you, I've already said that all the saliva you just licked is mine. Hearing this Meng Meng actually didn't have any rejection mentality and even licked her lips again. Chapter 5 Changed It seems that Little Dream is not repulsed by the fact that she was kissed by Qin Feng. Only Joju will be difficult, see Xiaomeng do not even look at their own glance, the heart more resentment Qin Feng. At this time, Dr. Lu went forward and politely said to Qin Feng, This little brother, how did you just save her? Her heart rate was about to stop. Qin Feng suddenly had a headache, how to explain this? After thinking about it, he said, it wasn't to see that she couldn't make it and do artificial respiration, I guess it worked. For him this answer doctor is speechless, said as if the hospital does not have oxygen cylinders, want you artificial respiration? But it seems to be the only explanation, so the doctor did not say anything else. At this time Xiao Meng looked at the people in the room and said to her father, Dad, can you get everyone out, I'm fine? Yes, yes, let everyone go out, let little dream rest. The woman also spoke up. So everyone was ready to go out, only then little dream said again. Qin Feng, Sister Zier, you guys stay and keep me company. Joji froze and said, why don't I stay and take care of you too? No need, you go about your business by yourself. Obviously little dream didn't have a good feeling about Joji. Frowning, Joji glared fiercely at Qin Feng and left. As soon as he went out, he called, hey, there's a guy named Qin Feng, give me a good investigation. In the hospital room, Xiao Meng saw that everyone had left. So she asked Qin Feng, I'm like this, it's not because of the ghost thing last night, is it? It's because of that, you were tainted with Yin Qi and had some Yang Qi sucked by that female ghost, so you almost died. Qin Feng said here and had an additional doubt in his own heart. Xiao Meng just liked Yang Qi, so he himself blew a few breaths to her, but didn't the female ghost say that she didn't have Yang Qi? Could it be that? Himself is not a zombie? It really made Qin Feng a bit confused. Anyway, thank you Qin Feng, I didn't expect that just after meeting, you saved my life. Xiao Meng face slightly red. Qin Feng smiled and said, a show of hands, besides, didn't I also take advantage of you, no loss. Hearing this Xiao Meng schemes her mouth. At this time Zier said, come on, you two flirt, I have to go beforehand. Saying that, Zier gave Xiao Meng a wink, then left with a smile. Xiao Meng's face turned even redder, got up and put on her shoes and said, my body is sore, why don't you walk with me? It's already dark, at Xiao Meng's request, Qin Feng accompanies her as she walks through the remote streets wandering around. Before this, I didn't think there were really ghosts in the world. Xiao Meng now felt that the ghost encounter last night was like a dream. Qin Feng even sighed and said, there are more things I didn't expect. For example, is he a zombie? How could he come back from the dead? Just thinking, suddenly Qin Feng felt a little hungry, his nose inhaled and said, how come there is a smell of blood? There is? Xiao Meng was puzzled. Qin Feng stops and sniffs carefully, then moves his body to look for the source of the blood odor, and finally he squats in front of Xiao Meng. Little dream. Qin Feng sniffed and looked at Xiao Meng's skirt and said, There's really a smell of blood, it's in your skirt. Oh, I'm sorry. Xiao Meng's face was already red to dripping blood and said, Hate it, I haven't even noticed it yet, you actually smelled it. Qin Feng, I don't know how I'm so sensitive to the smell of blood. Smacking his lips, Qin Feng actually wanted to say that not only was he sensitive to blood at the moment, inexplicably when he thought of blood, he was also very hungry. Crap, old me won't really turn into a zombie, right? Qin Feng was a bit scared in his heart. And as soon as he smells blood, he seems to be a bit attracted to it, and always can't help but sniff a few times harder. At the same time he can't help but twist his head to look at Xiao Meng's neck, that white as jade neck, it's really tempting. Qin Feng swallowed his saliva, so want to eat. Blood ah. As if a person who has been hungry for a few days wants to eat. And smacked his lips, suddenly felt wrong, tongue against the top tiger teeth, found that the tiger teeth seemed to top out, in a slow super long. At that moment, Qin Feng's body shook, finished, this is right, he really turned into a zombie. Qin Feng, what's wrong with you? Xiao Meng turned around and looked at Qin Feng and asked suspiciously. Qin Feng shook his head and said, I have something, I'll go back first. 
He was just about to turn around when he saw a car suddenly stop not far away. Then three figures came down from the car, all three figures were two men and one woman, all in their twenties. As soon as they got out of the car, they saw the man in the lead shouting. In front is the zombie, everyone set up a formation to trap and execute him. Xin Feng's eyes glared, what the hell? He was still a bit confused when he was surrounded by three people, all of them were holding some weird looking talismans in their hands, and each of them pinched their hands and threw the talismans at Qin Feng. Qin Feng only felt his body shaken, invisibly bound by a force that prevented him from moving. At the same time, those three people all took out long and thin sticks and threw them at Qin Feng's body. Those sticks seemed to possess a special power, hitting Qin Feng's body made him very uncomfortable. At this time, Xiao Meng came back to her senses and shouted, Who are you people? Let go of him, why are you hitting people? The man in the lead pushed Xiao Meng away and shouted angrily, Get out of the way, dare to block our exorcist family to kill zombies, believe it or not, even you will be destroyed together? Xiao Meng was thrown to the ground, making Qin Feng furious. At this moment, Qin Feng, whose eyes had turned all black, looked at the three men and shouted angrily, What the hell do you want? The man in the lead sneered, I am Wei Dong, a two-star exorcist in the younger generation of the exorcist Wei family, you black-eyed zombie are unlucky to meet me, I will kill you today, said the man waving his hand voodoo stick fiercely whip over. Qin Feng froze, and he, turned out to be really a zombie. Then he came back to his senses and hurriedly dodged, at this moment, he also realized that his speed is very fast, several times faster than usual, a retreat is three or four meters away. Then he grabbed the voodoo stick that was drawn over again, and threw the man away with a hard throw. However, the next moment, the other two men's vorpal rods clipped over and stuck Qin Feng's body alive. At this time, Wei Dong pinched his hand and touched a talisman piece and pasted it on the voodoo stick shouting, Kill you black-eyed zombie, I'm number one in the younger generation of the family. With that, he leapt up and swung the voodoo stick fiercely against Qin Feng's forehead. Qin Feng struggled hard but couldn't break his bonds, to see the voodoo stick draw down, he thought of that middle-aged man last night with some despair. Wasn't it the promised immortality? What about the promised various abilities? Sure enough, it is a lie, I did not expect to just be a zombie, and then to die. Just thought of this, suddenly his eyes glared. Because just when the voodoo stick was about to whip on Qin Feng's head, Xiao Meng suddenly pounced on Qin Feng. Bang! The vorpal rod viciously smacked Xiao Meng's back. Don't! Qin Feng yelled madly, and in an instant, the corpse Qi in his body instantly erupted, shocking the man and woman who were stuck on his body to fly out backwards, while at the same time hugging Xiao Meng's body. Chapter 6 I fucking thank you. In that dangerous situation just now, Xin Feng had never expected, no matter what, that Xiao Meng, a girl who had only known him for a day, would actually defy the odds and block for himself. For a moment, an unspeakable feeling surged through his heart. He thought of his girlfriend Shan Shan, just yesterday, he was stabbed twice by Wang Yunfei in order for his girlfriend not to be implicated in harm. But that girl he liked, just ran away by herself. Even today, she didn't seem to be worried about Xin Feng, and even seemed to have chosen the latter under love and money. But now, this cute and still a bit simple girl Xiao Meng, actually in this situation with her own petite body for only known for a day Qin Feng blocked the voodoo stick. This made Qin Feng a little hard to understand and a little heartbroken. Why? Looking at the girl in his arms, Qin Feng's voice trembled. There's no four. What? I. Myself don't even know. Four. What? Xiao Meng's voice was weak, that baton hit her back, making her feel severe pain at the same time, as if her spirit followed her into a trance. Oh no, brother Dong, when you hit someone with a mana enhanced voodoo stick, it will break their soul. The girl and the three exorcists said in panic. The other male gulped and said, let's go, it's a big taboo in the circle for an exorcism family to beat someone to death. Wei Dong's eyes stared deathly at Qin Feng and said with some reluctance, count on your zombie's life, humph, said they quickly drove away, incredibly indifferent to a life. Qin Feng didn't care about them, he looked at Xiao Meng in his arms and said, how do you feel? I'll send you to the hospital right away. He said that he was about to pick up Xiao Meng, but Xiao Meng frowned and said, Don't. I don't feel well anymore. Thinking of the conversation of the few people just now, Qin Feng also knew that sending to the hospital was probably useless, but now he was really somewhat helpless. Could it be, just watch her die? Qin. Feng, I feel. I am dying, can you? Just. Just accompany me like this? Hearing this Qin Feng nodded and said, Good, I will accompany you like this. The original. Male. Boys. Embrace is so. Warm. Xiao Meng had a hint of a smile on her face. Qin Feng gritted his teeth and didn't know what to say, so he slowly, tightly hugged the girl in his arms. Time passed minute by minute, half an hour later, Xiao Meng was still talking there. In fact, I've always wondered, myself, what kind of boyfriend will I find? In this society, many boys are not good people. However, I feel that you should be the good guy. At least after only knowing you for two days, I somehow feel that you are someone I can rely on. 
I wish it could always be like this, you give me a feeling of, well, a boyfriend. How nice if I won't die, then would you be willing to be my boyfriend? Qin Feng silent for a moment said, maybe. Hey not right ah, so long you are not dead? How also more and more spiritual are you? Indeed, the beginning is quite weak little dream, at the moment lying comfortably in Qin Feng's arms bottom up smile looking at Qin Feng's cheeks, mouth chattering endless, we're like dying people? Xiao Meng also reacted, said, huh? Yeah, I also feel like there's nothing uncomfortable on my body anymore. Then why don't you hurry up? Qin Feng said without any good humor. How is this scene a bit like his own yesterday? After being dead for half a day, he was fine instead. You damn scared me to death, I thought you were really going to die. Qin Feng was relieved to see that Xiao Meng stood up and was fine. Xiao Meng says with a confused look on her face, I don't know what's going on ah, it's good that you're fine. Qin Feng rolled his eyes. Just as he finished speaking, he heard a voice behind him say, who said she's fine. Qin Feng froze and looked back, a middle-aged man in a trench coat was standing behind him. Crap. Qin Feng couldn't help but curse, because this middle-aged man was the guy who had turned Qin Feng into a zombie yesterday by dropping drops of blood. You you you. Shogun right? Explain to me what's going on. I really became a zombie? Qin Feng was very anxious. The middle-aged man laughed and said, believe me now? You have to work hard, I'm training you to be my successor. Qin Feng, I fucking thank you. But there's nothing to say, after all, people are also equal to saving themselves. Let's not dwell on the zombie thing. What do you mean by what you said before? Is there anything wrong with Xiao Meng? Qin Feng asked. The middle-aged man looks at Xiao Meng and says, her soul was almost dissipated by the voodoo stick, but fortunately there was a mouthful of zombie chi that you gave her before that pressed on her and didn't allow the soul to dissipate immediately. Ah, so what I gave her before wasn't yang chi, it was zombie chi ah, then how did she wake up? Qin Feng was puzzled. She was just possessed, you gave her a mouthful of zombie chi to dispel the in evil chi in her body, so she naturally woke up. The middle-aged man added. Also, she has a mouthful of zombie gas will dissipate in a week, you must give her another mouthful of zombie gas to press on the soul, otherwise without the zombie gas to press on, the soul immediately dissipated. Sounds serious ah, uh, Xin Feng asks, although I don't mind kissing her every week, but in order to have a guarantee, is there any thorough way? There is, look for the soul fixing pearl to completely stabilize her soul, the middle-aged man said. Xin Feng skimmed his lips, look at the novels where the protagonist is having a hell of a lot of trouble finding something or something, it's difficult, is there a better way? There is, turn her into a zombie. The middle-aged man smiled. Xin Feng froze, then it's better to find the soul fixing pearl. Xiao Meng was anxious, what do you mean? What if I'm not worthy of being a zombie? Xin Feng, I don't mean that, who knows what happens when you're a zombie? And can't you see that there are exorcist families that specialize in killing zombies? You can be a human being. Just try not to be a zombie, how dangerous. Hearing it that way also made sense, Xiao Meng nodded. This girl's nerves are also big enough, last night she was scared to death of ghosts, today she knows that Qin Feng is a zombie, but instead she gladly accepts it. Perhaps, because in her heart she did not think Qin Feng was scary, so that even if Qin Feng was a zombie, she was not afraid. At this time, the middle-aged man said to Qin Feng, Su Young, all kinds of zombies in the world countless, only my blood-sucking zombie belongs to your lineage. So remember, do not easily bite people, but occasionally still need to drink blood. In case of malnutrition, it's not good. In addition, you are now the lowest level black-eyed zombie. Above that, there are white eyes, gray eyes, yellow eyes, blue eyes and green eyes. I'm the red-eyed king, when you're on the same level as me, you'll be a godlike existence, go for it. After saying that the middle-aged man disappeared all of a sudden. Qin Feng, on the other hand, froze, he was now the lowest level zombie? Then play the hell out of it. Chapter 7 what do you take me for? Although it is the lowest level, but also better than dead, or a jumping kind of zombie, right? At least it's not afraid of sunlight, can eat, and is more or less like a normal person. After the middle-aged man left, Qin Feng looked at Xiao Meng and said, You now, sure you feel fine? I feel fine now, but do I really have to kiss me every week like the middle-aged man said? Xiao Meng looks at Qin Feng, on the surface she seems a bit embarrassed, but inwardly there is no resistance. Qin Feng said, Don't worry, you're like this because of me. I'll definitely give you corpse chi on time to suppress the dissipation of your soul. In addition, I will definitely search for the soul fixing pearl for you. Xiao Meng smiled and nodded, although all this has shocked her a bit today, but the female ghost had seen it last night, so what's not to believe? At this time, Qin Feng's eyes suddenly turn cold, exorcist way family, this revenge, I, Qin Feng, have memorized it, and sooner or later, I'll look for you to get it back. On his body, a faint black chi surrounded, at the same time, his eyes blackened a few more points, somewhat scary. Xiao Meng who was beside him hurriedly said, Qin Feng, wait until you're strong before going after them. Qin Feng also understood that going to the exorcist and defender family when he wasn't strong enough was tantamount to looking for death. 
Don't worry, I'll definitely be strong, and when the time comes, I'll avenge you as well as me. Qin Feng said fiercely. After chatting for a while longer, Qin Feng sent Xiao Meng back and returned home himself. As soon as he entered the rented house, a sinister aura struck him. Qin Feng looked over and the female ghost was currently sitting on his bed. Back, the female ghost greeted. Qin Feng hooned and went up and said, I didn't expect you to have this feature. The female ghost sitting on the bed froze, function? What function? Suddenly remembering something, it stood up from the bed and floated far away, saying with a worried face, What do you mean? Nothing, why are you so far away from me? Come here, let me get comfortable. Qin Feng sat on the bed and beckoned. The female ghost completely panicked, You, you even ghosts? Qin Feng hemmed and hawed, If you can use it, you don't have to use it for nothing. Damn, I didn't expect you to be this kind of person, I was wrong about you. The female ghost was angry. Qin Feng frowned in confusion, So petty? You're like this anyway, can't you make me comfortable? The female ghost was furious, Qin Feng, what do you take me for? Qin Feng, as an air conditioner, it's a hot day, how comfortable it is to have the Yin Qi from your body cooling you down. Ha! Huh? The female ghost was dumbfounded, after half a day of pulling the wool over her own eyes, was she thinking too much? The atmosphere was awkward. Qin Feng asked suspiciously, what's wrong? What do you think I take you for? Eh? Nothing. The female ghost sheepishly lowered her head and didn't speak. There were no words in the night, and after going to school early the next morning, Qin Feng didn't even greet Shan Shan when he saw her. Once the human heart has waves, it will quickly change. Since that's the case, let's completely dilute that not-so-good love affair in this kind of silence. Seeing that Qin Feng didn't greet her, Shan Shan sighed. On the one hand, she liked Qin Feng, but on the other hand, she was considering very realistic issues. After lunch, Shan Shan came over and asked, Qin Feng, what's wrong? Are you in a bad mood? Qin Feng froze, but replied, nothing, you can just say what you have to say. He was waiting for Shan Shan to say break up, but she didn't. Can you hang out with me? Qin Feng nodded and walked casually with an expressionless face. At this moment, Wang Yunfei, who had finished his meal in the distance, saw this scene and frowned. He then said to one of the boys following him around, Bo Zai, didn't you practice Taekwondo? Go and embarrass that Qin Feng for me. The short-haired guy called Bo Zai heatedly smiled and said, Don't worry brother Fei, I'll make him look bad in public. With that, the bastard walked towards Qin Feng, and when he got close, he intentionally bumped into him, and then said, You don't have eyes, do you? He fucking dared to hit me. With that, Bozai kicked Qin Feng in the chest. After all, he had practiced, if someone else was kicked like this, he would have been thrown out. However, Qin Feng was not kicked at all, instead, he quickly kicked Bo Chai's foot first, instantly sending Bo Chai falling to the ground with a heel. Then Qin Feng said in a cold voice, watch where you're walking, or you'll fall badly. With that, he leaves faintly. Bozai rubbed his waist and slowly stood up, limping towards Wang Yunfei with a pained face. What's going on? Didn't I tell you to make a fool out of him? Wang Yunfei walked over and angrily rebuked. Bo said helplessly, this kid has practiced. Wang Yunfei's eyes went cold, then he had a plan and walked towards Qin Feng. Qin Feng, you injured someone and you just want to walk away? Qin Feng turned around and then frowned, then what do you want? What about it? Humph, my brother was at least fractured by you, tens of thousands of dollars in medical bills, you have to shell out, right? At this moment, many of the surrounding students walked over, some of them immediately opened their mouths. Yes, I just saw this kid hit people, hit people have to compensate for the medical expenses, right? I also saw, I guess the fall is not light, tens of thousands of dollars almost it. Like this poor loser actually still caused trouble, now see what he does. The people around you spoke one word and I spoke another, all helping Wang Yunfei. After all, Wang Yunfei was a famous rich second generation in the school, no one wanted to mess with him. Wang Yunfei said smugly, see, everyone is reasonable, Qin Feng, what do you say? Shan Shan frowned and looked at Qin Feng, that feeling of not being able to move an inch without money, and being able to do whatever you want with money, getting stronger and stronger. What? No money to pay for it? Kid, don't go wild if you don't have money. Wang Yunfei smiled and added. How about this, you call me brother Fei in front of everyone, bow to my brother and apologize, you don't have to pay for the money, after all, a poor loser like you, is also strange and pitiful. Brother Fei is really generous, Qin Feng hurry up and call ah? Some people around patted their asses. A loser like Qin Fei, brother Fei is also helpless. Ha ha ha. Everyone laughed, Shan Shan's face became more and more ugly, not moving, slightly moving her body to distance herself from Qin Feng. However, everything Qin Feng saw in his eyes. He looked up at Wang Yunfei and was about to speak, but at that moment a melodious voice rang out. Qin Feng, so you're here. The crowd looked and saw two stunningly beautiful women walking over, one with short hair and one with long hair. The short-haired one was as pretty and cute as a little fairy, and the long-haired one was absolutely beautiful and charming, like a little demon. It was precisely little dream and zeer. 
The moment these two women appeared, everyone instantly boiled over. Isn't this Su Mang and Shang Wan's ear? These two school beauties appearing together is truly stunning. So beautiful, they really deserve to be at the school flower level. At the same time, Wang Yunfei's eyes also lit up. However, although he was a rich second generation, his family was still much worse than these two school beauties, so he hadn't dared to hit their attention. But at this moment, he still opened his mouth, Big school flower Su, how are you? Then Su Meng ignored Wang Yunfei and walked directly to Qin Feng and said, Why couldn't I get through to you on the phone before? Qin Feng, ah, uh, turned off the phone. Wang Yunfei's face sank, Qin Feng and Su Meng are so close? Chapter 8, The Six Million Dollar Stone Wang Yunfei didn't expect that the school's big schoolgirls who actually knew Qin Feng. This is even if, there is Qin Feng phone? It should be known that Su Meng's family, but a few of the largest business families in South Central City, not Wang Yunfei's family dining can be compared. Su Meng didn't pay attention to Wang Yunfei, but opened her mouth and said to Qin Feng, By the way, this is what my dad asked me to give you, it's not much, it's only 20 million dollars, my dad wanted to thank you face to face, but I rejected it for you, ha ha. Su Meng smiled cutely and touched out a purple gold card and handed it to Qin Feng. Everyone around, including Wang Yunfei, froze. Su Meng's father, the business tycoon of South Central City actually wanted to thank Qin Feng and even gave 20 million dollars at once. Wang Yunfei only felt that it was a bit unbelievable, but when he saw that purple gold card, he did not have the slightest doubt. This kind of purple gold card, it's impossible to do it without storing 10 or 20 million dollars inside. He couldn't help but look at Qin Feng one more time. What kind of luck did this kid have? Why did the Su family give him so much money? While he was wondering, Su Meng suddenly spoke again. Who all just said Qin Feng is a poor loser? Come out and let me see how rich you are? When these words came out, Wang Yunfei was speechless. His family had money, but he couldn't possibly come up with 20 million dollars himself. However, Qin Feng has 20 million dollars now, not to mention Su Meng is here, who dares to say they are rich. Only at this time, Qin Feng opened his mouth and said to Su Meng, Money is not necessary, it's not like I saved you for money. That won't do, my dad has said that 20 million dollars is a bit low to give you, recently the group is strapped for cash, or else my dad would have given you 100 million directly. Hearing this Wan Yunfei was completely confused, what exactly did this Qin Feng do? What did this Qin Feng do to make the Su family willing to give a hundred million dollars? Seeing that he couldn't resist, Qin Feng could only accept the purple gold card. Su Meng then smiled and said, Right, are you free after school? There's a jade exhibition at my house, go and have some fun, and by the way, go to my house for dinner at night. Qin Feng hadn't said anything yet, Shan Shan suddenly spoke up, He's not free, he's going to dinner with me tonight. Qin Feng originally also did not want to go, but hearing Shan Shan say so, inexplicably revolted. So he opened his mouth and said, that's fine, go see the world anyway. Shan Shan froze, and seemed to understand that Qin Feng might be quite upset about his change, so she said, I'll go too. Qin Feng didn't say anything, when Wang Yunfei laughed. Jade exhibition and sales conference, just in time, my father didn't have time and asked me to help him go at night. Wang Yunfei was suddenly a bit complacent at the moment, because his father had always played with Jade as well, and his family was also expanding the jewelry and Jade industry. Wang Yunfei, who had always followed his father to gain insights, would often gamble on stones at various jade meetings as well, and had a pretty good eye. So if Qin Feng and Shan Shan and Su Meng all go tonight, then he can properly play hard to get. At the same time in his heart he sneered, even if you have money, you're still a bumpkin, this kind of high profile exhibition, wait to make a fool of yourself. Thinking of this he turned to leave. Qin Feng also said to Xiao Meng at this time, see you after class. And so he turns to leave, Shan Shan hurriedly follows. Seeing this, Shang Wan's ear spoke, is that why Qin Feng was stabbed twice for this woman? Xiao Meng said, it should be, but this female is a bit of a snob. Before, Qin Feng was despised by everyone and she secretly pulled away. When she heard that the card I gave her had 20 million dollars in it, she leaned in close to Qin Feng again. In his words, there was a whiff of jealousy. Returning to the classroom, Qin Feng becomes more and more disappointed in Shan Shan, this woman has really changed. Time is fast, in the afternoon after class Su Meng drove, personally picked up Qin Feng and Shan Shan went to Su's jewelry and Jade Exhibition Conference site. This kind of place is where all the high-end people come, and there are almost no people like Qin Feng who dress casually and ordinary. So as soon as they entered the venue, there were quite a few people casting strange gazes, seemingly curious as to how Qin Feng had gotten in. After finding a seat, Xiao Ming told Qin Feng about the Jade Exhibition and sale. Today is mainly to auction some very good material stone, I heard that these stones are from foreign very good jade mine mining open out the chances of good material is very high, so a few pieces of stone starting price is a few million. When Xiao Meng was introducing, Wang Yunfei also came, dressed properly, after looking at Qin Feng and the others, he sat not far away, with a cold smile on his face. 
Soon, the jade meeting started, the host said some words, and then started to enter the auction. The first stone starting auction is 3 million, present many connoisseurs began to raise the price, finally raised to 8 million sold. Qin Feng stayed, looked carefully at the stone, so valuable? The sight of Xiaoming said, these stones they have just seen, although you cannot see exactly how much green inside, but look at the skin can also be roughly concluded. However, gambling on stones, almost still rely on luck, the surface looks good, may also be less green or no green. Some look bad, there may be full green it. Qin Feng probably understood, so he took a closer look at the new piece of stone brought up for auction. On the surface Qin Feng couldn't understand it either, but after looking hard, he found that he seemed to be able to see it very clearly, even though it was separated by 6 or 7 meters, he was able to see the texture on the stone. Even looking more closely, it seemed like he could vaguely see that the stone was a green color. Of course, it was only vaguely, Qin Feng wasn't seeing through the stone, it just vaguely looked as if the stone was green inside. This stone has a starting bid of 2 million. After the host said that, there were only 2 or 3 people who raised the price, and when it reached 5 million, no one raised it. Qin Feng asked Xiao Meng, if this stone is full of jade, how much is it worth? Don't say it's full of green, it's half of it, it's worth 20 million dollars. What? Little Dream asked. Qin Feng swallowed his saliva, then raised his hand, 6 million dollars. Everyone froze and looked at Qin Feng, including Xiao Meng froze. This guy actually offers 6 million dollars, brains have bags off? This stone at a glance no not much green, open can be worth 5 million or good. Look at this kid so young, probably do not know the line, and also does not look like a rich man ah? The surrounding people are talking, Wang Yunfei cannot help but laugh, shook his head and said. Qin Feng, you just had 20 million dollars and you can't wait to lose your money ah? It's true that a loser is a loser. Shan Shan also said, Qin Feng, why don't you stop buying this? Qin Feng didn't respond, and at that moment, the hammer was set and the deal had been made. Congratulations to this gentleman, may I ask to open it now? The host asked. Wang Yunfei said, Xin Feng, open it? Let everyone see what you can open out of this six million dollar stone of yours, ha ha. Everyone around them mocked mercilessly, all thinking that Qin Feng was a fool. That's right, open it, even if it's not green, it's just like buying a lesson for everyone in class, ha ha. Facing the crowd's mockery, Qin Feng said with a hint of a smile at the corner of his mouth. Since everyone is interested, let's cut it open and take a look. Chapter 9, Face Slamming Qin Feng didn't realize that after he turned into a zombie, his eyes were not only incomparably clear in seeing things, but he was also vaguely able to see through some things. Gambling on these stones, some of today's instruments couldn't detect if there was any jade inside. But on the contrary, his pair of zombie eyes can vaguely see some. It seems that the middle-aged man was right, zombies really do have some special abilities, and these abilities become more and more obvious as the level rises. Now it's just a vague ability to see through some things, so won't it be possible to have perspective eyes in the future? Thinking about this, Qin Feng was still a little excited. At this point, the stone had already been taken to be cut, and the cutting screen was broadcast live on the big screen at the scene. The professionals asked Qin Feng what he meant and prepared to rub the edge and cut a little. Everyone saw Qin Feng asked to rub the edge to cut also laughed, someone said. Just this broken stone, is there a need to rub the edge? Directly in the center of the cut half can be a little green even good, do not waste everyone's time. Hearing Wang Yunfei said, this big brother has a point, but this kid is a loser, spend 6 million if a waste, it is difficult to accept. Just let him rub it in and take his time to accept the defeat. Everyone laughed mockingly, Wang Yunfei was even waiting to see Qin Feng cry. Even Xiao Meng was worried, after all, that stone was indeed not good by the looks of it. At this time, the stone was fixed and the cutter started to rub the edges. The first time the edge was rubbed, a little bit of the stone was rubbed off, and no green was seen. Aya, what a pity, I thought that rubbing some skin would produce jade. Wan Yunfei laughed out loud, how it sounded was ridicule. Xin Feng also laughed and said, don't be hasty, this is just rubbing the edge. Wan Yunfei snickered disdainfully, thinking that this kid's 20 million dollars, it is best to fold here tonight. At this time the cutter cut a little more stone, cut down again. At first or white ash flying, Wan Yunfei sneered, it seems that there is still no. But the next moment, the blade passed, changed to reveal the green jade behind. At that moment, Wang Yunfei's face changed, everyone present sat up straight violently. The blade moved away, and the part that was exposed by the rubbing edge was all green jade, and it looked to be of good quality. This, so much green? And it seems to be imperial green. An old man was shocked. Xin Feng's face reveals a hint of a smile, it seems that his eyes weren't wrong, the vague green color in the stone is really jade. Wan Yunfei was dumbfounded, rubbing the edge twice was so much jade, even if it wasn't full of green inside, it was definitely a large portion of it. This value, more than 6 million? It has doubled several times ah. At this time, some people have already begun to speak to Qin Feng, young man, this piece of stone I offer 20 million. 
Little brother, I'll offer $23 million. I'll offer $30 million. A fat boss said, and suddenly the whole room was quiet. At this time, Wang Yunfei said, Uncle Zhou, 30 million won't be worth it? This stone is also only one side out of the green. Why don't you let him cut the other side again, or you in case of loss ah? He just finished, Qin Feng spoke, change one side, continue to rub the edge. Everyone was stunned, if the other side of the rubbing edge did not have green, then this stone at most 20 million dollars. Wang Yunfei laughed coldly, thinking that this kid is really a white, do not know to see the good. By the time there is no green, you will know to cry. After the host said with the intercom, the stone changed direction, continue to rub the edge. Many people think it's impossible to be full green, but the fact once again hit the face, the other side is also green. Full green. Wow. At once the whole audience was shocked, actually is full green, then the value of this stone is not 30 million, but at least are more than 40 million or even 50 million. Before the fat man surnamed Zhou also froze, and then fiercely glared at Wang Yunfei. If it wasn't for Wang Yunfei, maybe he would have bought it for 30 million dollars and made a lot of money. Wang Yunfei is also confused, this Nima. He also did not expect ah? This is finished, Qin Feng earned at least 20 million more. At this time, someone else opened the price, and soon someone opened the price to 60 million, Qin Feng this deal. Spent 6 million, earned 60 million, this is still very cost effective. So there was a smile on his face, while Wang Yunfei's face was pale. However, in his heart, he attributed this to Qin Feng's good luck, at the same time, he also thought that all the stones in this auction must be good stones, otherwise, how could Qin Feng casually buy a broken stone and make a profit? Thinking of this, he made up his mind to get one or two good stones today as well. At this time, continue to auction the third stone, Qin Feng with eyes to see, this time the stone still has a lot of green inside, and the stone than the previous one is a little bigger, green should be more. So he decisively opened his mouth to raise the price. Xiaoming hurriedly said, Qin Feng, gambling on the stone by plugging, earn don't continue, in case you lose again. Qin Feng smiled and said, trust me. This time, someone also continued to raise the price, not long after it had reached 12 million dollars. Qin Feng's heart crossed this time and raised the price to 15 million dollars. At once, the whole room was quiet. Everyone looked over once again, and there was another whisper. This kid lucky once drifted, this stone how to see also about 1000 ceiling, he still increase. Hey, amateurs rely on luck, this time he knows when he loses, every year there are not such people? Wang Yunfei also said, Xin Feng, 15 million, don't cry later. Just made 60 million dollars with no place to spend it, what's wrong with 15 million dollars to buy a stone for fun? What a fuss. Wang Yunfei's face went white for a moment and he stopped saying anything. This time Qin Feng won, continue to open cut, this Wang Yunfei is not dejected? Today, let him completely fall head over heels. Everyone knows that this stone can produce green, however, in the end, it is still unexpected, basically most of the green, and the stone is bigger, worth at least more than 50 million dollars. Wang Yunfei's face trembled fiercely, completely confused. At this point, everyone also realized that it couldn't just be a matter of luck. Could it be, this kid is a high level person? I didn't expect it, pretending to be a pig to eat a tiger. That's right, what a hero, young people nowadays, not simple. The surrounding people had a high opinion of Qin Feng, after all, two consecutive strikes had made a big profit, this was not something that could be explained by luck. At this time the fourth stone out, the starting auction is 10 million, this is the whole scene everyone thinks the best stone, the price of this 10 million is very normal. So there are people open to raise the price, soon to 20 million, and even began to break through 30 million. This is already the auction of the sky price, gradually no one again start auction. Wang Yunfei also opened the auction twice, the price is too high, did not follow. At this time, Qin Feng suddenly opened his mouth, 35 million. Everyone froze, all looked at Qin Feng, after all, he has attracted everyone's attention here, he opened his mouth, indicating that there may be a profit. So Wang Yunfei hesitated and opened his mouth, 40 million dollars. After saying that, he also looked at Qin Feng provocatively, as if asking Qin Feng again if he dared to follow. Who knows, Qin Feng smiled and said with a look of determination, 50 million dollars. Wang Yunfei frowned, he did not expect Qin Feng to be so ruthless, but in his heart, he was also more certain that this stone had something to offer, so he opened his mouth. 6. 60 million dollars. He had just finished shouting when he saw Qin Feng looking at Wang Yunfei with a smile on his face and applauded and said, Congratulations, this piece of broken stone is yours. Chapter 10 Come early at night to hack me to death. Originally, Wang Yunfei should have been very happy after winning this piece of raw stone. However, he always felt that something was wrong, would Qin Feng be so kind to congratulate himself? He looked at Qin Feng and felt that Qin Feng's smile had a hint of conspiracy. Pa! Congratulations to young Master Wang for auctioning off the no. 12 raw stone for 60 million dollars, may I ask young Master Wang, do you want to open the stone live? The host asked. 
Someone said, such a good raw stone, if it's not full green it's still mostly green, and with such a big stone, it's estimated to be worth 70 to 80 million dollars. That's right, but I'm guessing it's full green, maybe it's worth a hundred million dollars, netting 40 million dollars ah. After all, it's the best raw stone in the whole field, it should almost be like this. Listening to everyone's comments, Wang Yunfei was also a lot more confident, such a good raw stone, can definitely make a profit, and said. Open. Live broadcast, rubbing edge cutting stone. The first rubbing, there is no green, but it is normal. The second rubbing edge, still no. The third time the fourth time, a stone has been cut off a corner, still did not see green. Now Wang Yunfei's face darkened, sitting on his but on the chair, his heart is cold. Cut a corner and still no green, it is already impossible to have a large part of the green, then 6,000 words absolutely lost. At this time everyone also scoffed, someone said, I didn't expect, this stone is not useful. That's right, this Wang Xiao's eyesight is really bad, it can't be compared to that little friend called Qin Feng just now. Qin Feng's luck was right on the money, and Wang's luck was so good that he followed the trend, but he lost money to his grandma's house. Listening to the surrounding discussion, Wang Yunfei's face trembled. At this time Qin Feng opened his mouth, Wang Yun luck cannot ah, a piece of stone without green, spend 60 million dollars, tsk tsk. Wang Yunfei gasped and clenched his fists, shouting, give me a cut from the center, I don't believe there is no green. After a burst of water mist, the cutter opened, the master took out the two stones, the cut position has no green at all, it's just a stone. At that moment, Wang Yunfei sat on his butt on the chair, his back was full of cold sweat. 60 million dollars, blood loss. This led him how to go back to explain? His father called him to come, but also just gave more than 10 million, but he just decided that the stone will earn, so he dared to shout out 60 million. But now not a penny to earn, 60 million so how can he dare to ask his old man to ask for? Thinking of this, he fiercely got up and walked towards Qin Feng, bastard, are you fucking punking me? Qin Feng calmly sat on his chair and said, so you know I'm punking you? I thought Young Wang didn't know. These words fell on Wang Yunfei's ears and were simply humiliating, making him unable to refute them. The surrounding people, on the other hand, laughed loudly, all feeling that Qin Feng was too shady. There were also a few people who had almost shouted the price before, and they all celebrated. At this time, the auction of the stone continued, Qin Feng looked at Wang Yunfei and said, what? Still dare to continue? Wang Yunfei stared at Qin Feng and said, Why don't you dare? I'm not a rich man like you, I still have money. Qin Feng smiled and didn't say anything, while Wang Yunfei also wanted to try again, the best to earn once, to fill the hole of 6,000 words. Continuing on with the stones, while Qin Feng kept watching. This time, as long as it's a good stone, Wang Yunfei dares to open his mouth, Qin Feng raises the price, and he shuts up when it's almost over the price of the stone. In this way, some people with, that basically lose a few million, no one with, Qin Feng earn a few million. He can see the green inside, the price is estimated to be just right, basically a steady profit. And bad stone, he raised a little, Wang Yunfei as long as the value beyond the shouting price, Qin Feng did not shout, so let Wang Yunfei steady loss, although each time is a few million. But after two or three times, it also made him lose another 10 million dollars. Wang Yunfei was on the verge of crying, today was too miserable. And while Qin Feng was continuing to pit Wang Yunfei while raising the price, suddenly Shan Shan opened her mouth. Qin Feng, otherwise forget about it. Qin Feng frowned and looked at Shan Shan. She, actually speaking in favor of Wang Yunfei? Sure enough, this woman was no longer that simple girl. Thinking of the days when she used to eat at barbecue stalls, milk tea stores, and small restaurants, Qin Feng took a deep breath. Perhaps, she no longer liked the cheap life and preferred to go to Wang Yunfei's high-class restaurant to eat the not-so-delicious so-called high-class food. Qin Feng didn't say anything, he was completely disappointed in Shan Shan. So he got up and said to Xiao Meng, let's go, we're almost done having fun today. Going to the trading office, after Qin Feng transferred money with a few jewelers who bought his stones, Qin Feng left with Xiao Meng without bringing Shan Shan. Although Qin Feng had made a hundred million dollars today, he knew that in Shan Shan's eyes, he was still not as good as Wang Yunfei, the second generation rich man. After all, Wang Yunfei's family was a big restaurant boss, a truly rich man, what was Qin Feng? Just a lucky thug. So from the moment she spoke for Wang Yunfei, Qin Feng knew that this woman still liked rich people. So just let her be. In the car, Xiao Meng said, Qin Feng, you don't have to be sad. Ha? Huh? Qin Feng laughed and said, I'm sad? When a person's heart changes, then it's no longer worth someone being sad for her. So not only am I not sad, I'm also relieved. At least I don't have a materialistic and snobby girlfriend. Dream smiled back and said, So do you mind having a cute and kind new girlfriend again? Who? Qin Feng froze. Xiao Meng was instantly speechless. Qin Feng wasn't going to go to Xiao Meng's house for dinner, so Xiao Meng could only send Qin Feng home. Outside the door, Xiao Meng said, not going to invite me in for a sit? No no, if you're not afraid of ghosts. Qin Feng smiled. 
Xiao Meng was a bit afraid, but Qin Feng was still a zombie, what was there to be afraid of with him? So Xiao Meng walked in and saw the female ghost sitting on the bed. Frozen, Xiao Meng looked at the female ghost. What are you looking at? Have not seen the air conditioning ah? Huh? The female ghost didn't have the good sense to say. The fact that Qin Feng had used it as an air conditioner was still making it angry. Xiao Meng was speechless, then whispered to Qin Feng, you won't treat it. What are you thinking? She's a ghost, what can I do to it? Qin Feng rolled his eyes. Xiao Meng sighed in relief, played for a while, and left. The next day, in the school, Qin Feng was spinning around in boredom when he saw a woman walking towards him. Seeing this woman, Qin Feng's face sank. Wang Yundan, Wang Yunfei's elder sister, it was said that her boyfriend was a big brother who was a social mixer. Also because of this, Wang Yunfei's siblings are not only rich, but also have people in the society to cover them, that's why they are so rampant in the school, and the average rich second generation is not good at messing with their siblings. Last time, Wang Yunfei is to let her sister to find her boyfriend's man, to help Wang Yunfei fool around to beat Qin Feng. Even stabbed Qin Feng two knives dared to casually throw. Therefore, Qin Feng did not have the slightest good feelings towards these two siblings. After Wang Yundan walked over, he said with a cold face, Qin Feng, you really want to find death, you dare to pit my brother? Be a good boy and compensate my brother with the money you earned yesterday, otherwise tonight, cut you to death. Then you remember to come early tonight to hack me to death. Qin Feng said in turn to leave, leaving Wang Yundan gritting his teeth. Chapter 11 The Beat Resistant Qin Feng Wang Yundan knew that Qin Feng was a tough guy, otherwise it was impossible for him to remain indifferent in the face of his brother's threats. From this, it was clear that although Qin Feng was poor, he was definitely not afraid of anything. Therefore, Wang Yundan had already thought of letting her own person personally lead people to block Qin Feng at night, when Qin Feng compensated her for the money he had earned yesterday, he would be beaten up. If you don't compensate, it's not impossible to break your arms and legs or even kill you. Thinking of this, Wang Yundan's eyes flashed ferociously. However, what she didn't know was that Qin Feng also wanted to properly clean up her and Wang Yunfei at night. It had already been three days since he came back from the dead, Qin Feng had been keeping the accounts of this pair of siblings in mind and wanted to find a chance to properly clean them up. Although he had pitted Wang Yunfei for tens of millions of dollars yesterday, this was not enough to eliminate Qin Feng's anger. What he wanted was to leave a few slashes on this pair of siblings. Thinking of this, Qin Feng's eyes vaguely pulsed with a terrifying black chi. The current Qin Feng, all his physical qualities had doubled, good eyesight, good ear, fast reaction, fast speed, and his strength was even relatively strong. He was certain that it would not be too difficult for him to deal with dozens of punks all by himself. Back in the classroom, Shan Shan looked at Qin Feng with an apologetic face and walked over and said, Sorry Qin Feng, yesterday. I was thinking that we are all classmates, and it's not good for you to pit Wang Yunfei for tens of millions of dollars. Qin Feng frowned, classmate? A few days ago when you found someone to block you to beat me, why don't you think about being classmates? Shan Shan's face went white and she was speechless. Qin Feng no longer said anything and no longer ignored Shan Shan. Qin Feng. Me. Us. She seemed to want to say something, but in the end, she seemed unable to give up and left. Qin Feng knew that she wanted to say breakup, seeing her give up, he sneered in his heart, on the one hand, he wanted to find a rich man, on the other hand, he couldn't let go of him, a long and okay boyfriend. Ha, woman. Qin Feng did not expect that he actually met such a scum woman. If you don't say break up, then at night, I'll say it. Qin Feng thought as such in his heart. In the afternoon after school, Qin Feng went up to Shan Shan and said, let's go out of school together. Shan Shan nodded and followed Qin Feng. Just as they left, Xiao Meng and Zier came to the classroom door to look for Qin Feng. Some of the students in the class were stunned when they heard that these two school flower level beauties actually both came to look for Qin Feng. Didn't Qin Feng have a girlfriend? Why was the school beauty still looking for him? This made many boys envious and jealous. And at this time, Qin Feng left the school with Shan Shan, heading towards the direction he went home, which was a remote path on the side of the school. The last time he also went home and passed by there, he was stabbed twice by Wang Yunfei with his men. And this time, when he walked here, he saw two vans and a BMW on the roadside in front of him. The BMW came down with a man around 30 years old, he was all muscular and strong, with a bullet head, and tattooed with tattoos that he thought were dangling on his body. After he got off, the two vans also came down with 12 people, some with dyed flowery hair, some with animal world-like tattoos, all of them hanging one by one. A few of them were the same guys who helped Wang Yunfei beat up Qin Feng last time and ended up throwing him in the wild. Heh, kid has a big life, actually didn't die. However, I see that you don't want to live either, my woman's brother, you even dare to pit. The man with the bullet head said with a cold smile, at the same time, not far behind Qin Feng, Wang Yunfei and Wang Yundan had both arrived. Wang Yundan smiled as he walked over to the bullet head and said, Brother Leopard, teach this kid a good lesson today. Brother Panther, whatever you say. 
he said and pinched Wang Yundan's upturned butt. At this time, Wang Yunfei looked at Qin Feng with a sneer and said, Kid, if I can block you once, I can block you a second time, you still dare to go wild with me, what the fuck are you? Qin Feng coldly grimaced and kept quiet. There are some things that should be done all today, but there's no rush, waiting for them to speak first. What? Too scared to speak? Wang Yunfei said with a cold smile. I'm giving you two requests now, if you can't fulfill them, I'll send you to the king of Hades. Qin Feng sneered, would king of hell dare to accept him? He heard Wang Yunfei continue, 1, take what you earned yesterday and compensate me. 2, break up with Shan Shan in front of her. Qin Feng froze, he hesitated for a moment and finally spoke. Honestly, I can't figure out why you like her. Shan Shan is at the class flower level, not the school flower, a powerful and wealthy second generation man who has been paying so much attention to a class flower, just, just liking it? No, he clearly could have had more and better choices. Wang Yunfei sneers, you don't have to care about that, in short, I just want to get her, and I want the kind that convinces you. Qin Feng didn't understand, but Shan Shan felt flattered. She even vaguely felt that perhaps Wang Yunfei was truly in love with her. Of course, this was a self-righteousness shared by all women who were with rich second generation men, all thinking that they were truly loved. But is it really so? It still needed time to be verified. Well, do you agree with my request? If you don't agree, figure out which hand to break. Wang Yunfei said. Qin Feng smiled and said, then do it. Wang Yunfei's face sank, he knew that Qin Feng, a hardcore person, wouldn't agree. At this time, Brother Panther sneered and waved his hand at his men, beat him up first to loosen his muscles. As the words fell, a dozen of his men swarmed up. Around the distance, there are some passing students, see the scene here, either detour, far away far away to watch, are watching the mindset, no one dares to do anything to provoke Wang Yunfei. See those punks close to Qin Feng after all punches and kicks over. Qin Feng stood still and did not resist. Because in his opinion, these people's movements are too slow, punches are too feeble, there is nothing to hide, just let them hit on the body. These people's punches and kicks were constantly landing on Qin Feng's body, looking at Wang Yunfei's siblings couldn't help but sneer. However, Qin Feng loomed unmoving, his face calm. Ha! This brat seems to be very resistant to beatings. Brother Panther frowned. Since he's so resistant, you guys shouldn't use your fists. Those punks immediately took out steel clubs from their cars and then smacked Qin Feng's body one by one. A thumping sound rang out, and many students in the distance were stunned. However, Shan Shan only frowned, wanting to say something, but held back. Right now, she was faced with a choice, if she exited to help Qin Feng, then she was going against Wang Yunfei. Wouldn't that be a dead end? Besides, Wang Yunfei liked her. Then if she doesn't care about Qin Feng, in the end Wang Yunfei will be with her, and maybe. It's not a bad outcome. However, at this time, Qin Feng was also indifferent in the face of the sticks ruthlessly smashing on him. The zombie body was truly terrifying, he had almost no feeling of pain, and these sticks didn't hurt him at all. So he was very calm, his face even showed a smile together, the. Uh. At this time everyone felt that something was wrong, how was this person so resistant to fighting? Chapter 12 Revenge Qin Feng only felt that these sticks fell on his body, just like scratching an itch. At this time everyone also feel wrong, Iron Man are so resistant to beating? Brother Panther is even more surprised, what's wrong with you guys? No strength? Qin Feng sneered, that's right, make some strength ah, otherwise how to give me loose sinews? At this moment, those punks who were beating Qin Feng with their sticks, their hands were sore, but Qin Feng actually had no problem at all, which made them doubt life. It was also at this moment that Qin Feng felt it was time to have some fun. You're all so useless at beating people, how dare you come out to mix? All go home and farm. As the words fell, Qin Feng moved his body and smashed his fist on a steel rod, with a bang, the rod flew out of his hand. Then Qin Feng reversed a few feet, kicked a few punks, and then clenched his fist and casually bombarded a few punks, directly hitting them flying out 3 or 4 meters away. Qin Feng's senses are sharp and his reaction is quick and powerful, and between his hands, he easily flipped over a dozen punks to the ground, each screaming miserably and unable to climb up. Wang Yunfei's siblings and brother Bao and Shan Shan were stunned, and the students in the distance were also stunned. Qin Feng, so fierce? Qin Feng clapped his hands, then looked at Wang Yunfei and Brother Panther and they said, Just these few stinky fish and shrimps have the nerve to bring them out to act like assholes? Don't you mind losing face? The horizontal meat on Brother Panther's face trembled. Where did he expect Qin Feng to be so fierce? Wang Yunfei and Wang Yundan couldn't even think of it ah, even as Qin Feng's former girlfriend, Shan Shan couldn't believe that Qin Feng was so capable of fighting. Kid, you. Brother Leopard was actually a bit speechless. Qin Feng slowly stepped forward and said indifferently, Brother Leopard, right? Come here. Brother Panther saw Qin Feng so able to fight, and walked over to himself, suddenly his heart lifted up. The next moment Qin Feng suddenly slapped out a slap, snapping at Brother Panther's face. Instantly, several teeth came out of his mouth with blood. 
He covered half of his face and stared angrily at Qin Feng, who knew that Qin Feng backhanded another slap, and a mouthful of teeth flew out of the other side of his mouth. At once, his entire face was swollen like a pig's head half, and he couldn't even speak. Qin Feng coldly looked at Brother Panther, kicked him in the stomach, bang Brother Panther's body flew out and landed on the ground, a few bones broken in his body, directly fainted. Looking at Wang Yunfei's siblings again, they stared with wide eyes and a look of fear. Didn't you want to break one of my hands? Come on? Qin Feng sneered. Wang Yunfei gulped his saliva and said, How did you? You get to be so capable of fighting? There's more that you didn't expect. Qin Feng's words fell as he viciously slapped Wang Yunfei's face. With a snap, Wang Yunfei's entire body fell to the ground in one fell swoop, half of his face rapidly swelling up as his mouth continued to spit out blood and teeth. Seeing the Shan Shan was once again shocked, she hurriedly said, Qin Feng, don't hit it, it's going to jail. Shut up. Qin Feng violently turned his head to angrily look at Shan Shan and shouted. From now on, Laozi and Yuli Shan Shan are no longer boyfriend and girlfriend and have no relationship. I won't care about your affairs anymore, and you shouldn't talk about my affairs. Shan Shan was violently stunned, she looked at Qin Feng in a daze and said, break. Up. Qin Feng said in a cold voice, same place, a few days ago they were blocking me and you here, and I was the one who spared being stabbed twice to let you leave. Now, you're actually telling me to stop fighting? It seems that not only are you not repulsed by Wang Yunfei's entanglement, but now you're even turning towards him? In that case, let's break up and I'll let you follow Wang Yunfei as you wish. Shan Shan's body trembled slightly, but not a single word could be said. She was an ordinary woman, so ordinary that she had a great interest in money as well. She admitted to herself that she was shaken in the face of Wang Yunfei's pursuit, which was speechless. I'm sorry. Xin Feng shook his head, you didn't apologize to me, anyone has their own choices, your choices didn't hurt me, you only apologize to yourself. You chose money, he Wang Yunfei fancy your youth, he has no money what do you do? Your youth he is tired of looking at what you do. Shan Shan didn't say anything, while at this time Wang Yundan angrily opened his mouth. All shut up, Qin Feng, how dare you hit my brother and brother Bao, you're dead. Slap. The words just fell, suddenly a slap fell on Wang Yundan's face under her horrified gaze, then he also turned into a pig's head. You. Qin Feng you. On the ground, Wang Yundan one side of the face swollen eyes cannot open, the mouth teeth fall off the light to speak are laborious. Qin Feng wants this effect, they do not want face? Do not love to pretend? Then give them a swollen face, so that they have no face. What's wrong with me? Qin Feng sneered. What? It's only just begun and you guys can't take it anymore? With that, he pulled out a dagger from the waist of a punk and looked at Wang Yunfei. What? Are you? Going to do? Wang Yunfei was afraid at this time, his mouth slurred. Qin Feng looked at Wang Yunfei as if he were a devil and said, Stab you twice ah, what else can I do? Don't be nervous, I have a measure, you can't die. The stabbing of two knives and asked him not to be nervous? Wang Yunfei looked at Qin Feng squatting down, scared face is white, do not. Feng brother I beg you, do not. Don't you quite like to find me trouble? Why don't you want it now? Qin Feng slowly approached with the dagger, torturing Wang Yunfei. Wang Yunfei are crying, said, I'm wrong Feng brother, I. I'm not interested in Li Shan Shan, I just want to play with her, I did not think that at that time will be in a fit of anger to move the knife to you, I did not expect things to be so big. Hearing his words, Li Shan Shan's body shook. Just playing with herself? Could it really be just playing with herself? Qin Feng was also puzzled, just playing around? Then you're so persistent? I am a rich second generation, I usually want to play with women, basically there is no can't get. I have to get it no matter what, even if it's to satisfy my strong possessive desire. Wang Yunfei was really afraid of Qin Feng, so he directly said so. After hearing this, Li Shan Shan was completely disheartened, she thought that Wang Yunfei, a rich second generation, really liked her, but now it seems that people are just playing around. Qin Feng already knew this result, coldly laughed, the knife is still against Wang Yunfei's stomach. Everything is self-inflicted by you, and you should, for that, pay the price. As the words fell, the knife entered the flesh. Ah! Wang Yunfei screamed in pain. Qin Feng was decisive, there was nothing to be afraid of. Three days ago here, wasn't he stabbed himself? Letting go of the dagger, Qin Feng slowly got up and saw Xiao Meng and Zier, who were walking over not far away, with a hint of a smile on his face. And just then, Li Shan Shan walked over and said to Qin Feng with a face of regret. Qin Feng, I was wrong, will you forgive me? Don't break up with me. There's nothing more to say. Qin Feng spoke indifferently and walked towards Xiao Meng. Li Shan Shan cried, suddenly kneeling down in front of Qin Feng all of a sudden. Chapter 13, Too Able to Pretend. Qin Feng didn't expect Li Shan Shan to actually kneel down to herself and was a bit surprised. Just heard kneeling down Li Shan Shan cried, Qin Feng I'm really wrong, I shouldn't be obsessed, I'm wrong, please don't break up with me, I haven't gotten close to Wang Yunfei. 
Xin Feng slowly sighed, then spoke, I'm disappointed in you, long ago. After saying that, Xin Feng still left. It was useless no matter how much Li Shan Shan cried. Many students in the distance froze, it was really rare for a girl to kneel down for a boy. Qin Feng walked out not far away, Xiao Meng and Zier followed. Wang Yundan, on the other hand, hurriedly said to a few punks who stood up, quickly drive us to the hospital ah. Qin Feng was not worried that they would call the police. Just kidding, what kind of person is Brother Panther? He's a social mixer, dare to call the police? Besides the scene of a dozen punks beating Qin Feng, they go to the police, who would the police believe? Wang Yunfei wouldn't dare, because he had stabbed Qin Feng twice before. On the way home, Qin Feng looked at Xiao Meng and said, Do you think I'm mean? No, you're only a man when you're like this, that's what you should do. Xiao Meng said. Qin Feng took a long breath, some of the knots in his heart were completely put down and a smile appeared on his face. Back home, Qin Feng asked Xiao Meng and Zier to sit down, at this point of time the sky is not dark, the female ghost did not appear. After sitting down, Xiao Meng looked at Qin Feng and said, Tomorrow weekend, what are the arrangements? Xin Feng shook his head and said, stay at home, what else can I do? Hao Xiaomeng said, Zier's birthday is tomorrow, there's a birthday party, want to go together? Xin Feng nodded, it's okay, it's fine anyway. After chatting for a while more, Xiaomeng and Zier leave. The next day, Little Dream came over to pick up Xin Feng, and together they went to the place where Zier was having her birthday party, at Zier's family's big villa. When they arrived, there were already two dozen young men and women in the villa, some classmates, but also cousins and cousins of Zier's family and some friends. As for Zier's parents, they smiled and chatted with everyone before going upstairs, leaving the following to their youngsters. When Qin Feng and Xiao Meng arrived, they immediately caught everyone's attention, especially the boys, whose eyes lit up at the sight of Xiao Meng. Taking another look at Qin Feng, they all revealed hostility. At this time, a guy seems to recognize Xiao Meng, walks over with red wine and says, Meng Meng, you're here. Little Dream nodded and hummed, then said to Qin Feng, Come on, let's go sit over there. At once, the man's face was ugly. After looking at Qin Feng and seeing that he was dressed very plainly, a hint of contempt appeared in the man's eyes and he also followed Xiao Meng. Little Dream and Qin Feng had just sat down when the man spoke to Little Dream again. Meng Meng, your birthday is coming up in a few days, right? Do you like gemstones? I'm going to ask someone to order a crystal gemstone necklace worth $990,000 for you. Saying this, the man also glanced at Qin Feng with some bragging rights. Who knew that Xiao Meng spoke? Thanks, I don't like these things. With that, she looked at Qin Feng and said, My birthday is next month, you must accompany me then, I don't plan to throw a party. Qin Feng smiled and nodded his head saying, Yes, go to my house then, I'll cook for you. Xiao Meng is instantly excited and says, Really? That's great, I can cook too, I'll help you then. I want to eat. Sweet and sour pork. The ignored man's face sank, and his heart was incomparably agonized. His $990,000 worth of stuff couldn't be worth this poor kid cooking a meal by himself? So he spoke again, Meng Meng, why don't I take you to the best restaurant in the city for your birthday to have a French steak? Or hire a Michelin senior chef to cook for you at my home? Dream frowned and said, no, I've already made arrangements, and I don't want to eat with you. The man frowned, gritted his teeth and added, my father has a business partnership with your father, we should also socialize more, right? Really? Then I'll go back and tell my father to stop working with your father, who asked him to have such an annoying son. Xiao Ming's speech was so detrimental. Hearing that the man immediately said, don't don't, I won't bother you. If it was because of himself that his father didn't have the opportunity to cooperate with the Su family, he would be killed if he went back, so he could only leave unwillingly. As soon as this guy left, a few more guys came to hit on him, all wanting to get to know Little Dream. Unfortunately, Xiao Meng simply ignored them, and in the end, Xiao Meng simply took Qin Feng's arm with her hand. Qin Feng was speechless, so everyone thought Qin Feng was her girlfriend and wouldn't bother her. But Qin Feng became a shield, there were always guys coming over to chat with Qin Feng. It looked like chatting, but in reality, they all wanted to come and press Qin Feng, so as to gain the favor of Xiao Meng beside him. For example, one of Zier's cousins came over and said to Qin Feng, Hello, haven't seen you before, are you Ming Ming's friend? Um, Qin Feng hummed incompetently. Ayo, Ming Ming's friend must be extraordinary, I wonder brother which big son you are? Cousin Zier asked. Qin Feng took a deep breath, I'm not a male son, nor am I a rich second generation. Then you, started your own business? Cousin Zier clearly saw that Qin Feng was dressed in ordinary clothes, and deliberately asked this question just to make Qin Feng make a fool of himself. Qin Feng said, no entrepreneurship, in school, but occasionally also part-time to earn some money. Zier's cousin said, part-time job? It should be a pretty good income every month, right? Qin Feng sighed and said, it's not bad, the day before yesterday I only made a billion dollars in one day. Put. Zier's cousin just took a sip of wine and immediately spit it out, then his face shook and said, do a little part-time work. 
a day. Only earned a billion? Brother, not bragging we will not die right? At this time the people around the attention here also laughed, they all feel that Chin Fong this bull blowing big. And little dream was skimming her mouth, it would have made a hundred million dollars, look at you guys who haven't seen the world. Meng Meng, don't help him out, a hundred million dollars a day for a part-time job? Whoever believes that is a fool. Zier cousin said. At this time, Zier walked over and said, Cousin, Chin Fong did earn 100 million a day the day before yesterday. SH. What? Cousin Zier and everyone present were dumbfounded. If Xiao Meng and Zier both said so, then no one would doubt the authenticity. At that moment, a bunch of rich second generation rich people all snapped and stopped talking. Jokingly, they didn't say that they earned a hundred million dollars a day, that is, not many of their family assets had a hundred million dollars ah, how could they dare to continue fooling around? Chin Fong, on the other hand, laughed coldly and continued, 100 million only, it's nothing, no need to make a fuss. Zier cousin face skin pumped, said, brother, we do not talk about money, too vulgar, talk about something else. In his heart, he was thinking, this Chin Fong, too damn good at pretending, can't pretend to be him. Chin Fong, on the other hand, drank a cup of juice and sneered in his heart, on pretending, haven't been afraid of anyone. Chapter 14, Joking Around among the people present, no one's private property could exceed Qin Feng's, after all, he had a hundred million dollars. So naturally, no one dwelled much on the topic of money, and each ate, drank and played. Qin Feng also continued to chat with Xiao Mang. However, at this time, suddenly upstairs Zier's mother came downstairs anxiously and said, It's not good Zier, your sister is sick again. What? Zier said with a tense face. What should we do? Doctors cannot check out what, send the hospital is useless ah. Then see upstairs, Zier's father holding a 14 or 15 year old girl downstairs, face anxious said. If you really can't, find an old Chinese doctor to take a look. He had just finished speaking when a young man present suddenly came up and said. Uncle Shang Wan, put her on the sofa, my father is the director of the South Central Second Hospital, I am also studying medicine, I can take a look. Upon hearing this, the middle aged man hurriedly placed his daughter on the sofa and said to the man, then I'll trouble you. Zhang Yu, hurry up and take a look. Zier also urged. The man called Zhang Yu smiled condescendingly, as if he had become the protagonist all of a sudden. Only to see him proudly go up and look at the girl before taking her pulse with his hand. This pulse is so messy, how? Is it fast and slow at the same time? The girl on the sofa kept struggling, sometimes opening her mouth wide, sometimes making a whimpering sound, looking just as crazy and a bit scary. If it wasn't for her father pressing hard, this girl probably jumped up and flailed. Zhang Yu, how the hell is it? Zier asked the boy. Zhang Yu said confidently, with such a disturbed pulse and her seizures, she should be suffering from nerve stimulation. This situation to play sedative, and then prescribe some tranquilizing medicine and tempering the spirit of the medicine, cannot let her be subjected to any shock. At this Zier's mother said, it's useless, the doctor said the same thing, but it's useless to play the sedative, and the medicine is still the same. Zhang Yu was a little nervous, how long has this situation lasted? This is the third time in a week that she has gotten sick, the first time was when I took her out at noon, she got sick as soon as she left the house, and I couldn't find out anything when I brought her to the hospital. The second time was the morning before last when I went to her room and opened the curtains to get some air, and she immediately had a seizure as well. The third time was just now. Zier's mother said. Hearing this, Zhang Yu said, that's right then, it must be that she suffers from mental illness, the first time she went out everything outside may have stimulated her. The second time she opened the curtains the sunlight may have stimulated her, as for tonight, it may be that we are too noisy with so many people and it stimulated her. It doesn't matter, just wait for her to gradually quiet down, try not to disturb her, and then bring her to the hospital when you have time, it's best to do a full checkup. Listening to what Zhang Yu said, it seemed to make sense, many people nodded, some girls even looked at Zhang Yu adoringly. Zhang Yu was also very dejected, intentionally or unintentionally glanced at Xiao Meng, but realized that Xiao Meng did not look at him at all. He was a bit lost. That's not all, he realized that Xiao Meng was talking to Qin Feng about something, and listening carefully, he heard Qin Feng say to Xiao Meng, it's not a mental problem. This time Zhang Yu seized the opportunity to make a fool out of Qin Feng and opened his mouth. What did you say? Not a mental problem? Are you questioning the specialty I studied? He said this because he wanted to press Qin Feng in front of everyone in Xiao Meng, preferably to make Xiao Meng understand that he, Zhang Yu, was superior to Qin Feng. Once these words came out, everyone looked at Qin Feng. At once, a male opened his mouth, his father Zhang Yu is the director of the second hospital, his family is a medical family, he himself is a genius in studying medicine, how could he say it wrong? Qin Feng, don't pretend to understand here. Another man with glasses sneered, that's right, don't think you're so arrogant just because you're lucky to make some money, this piece of medicine is not something that anyone understands, and not something that anyone can brag about for a bit. 
I see that this guy is addicted to pretending today, don't say that you are also a doctor in order to pretend later, that would be dramatic. Someone directly mocked. In the face of everyone's sarcasm, Xiao Meng was about to open her mouth, but she saw Qin Feng smile and say, I'm telling the truth, this little sister wasn't originally a mental type of problem. If it was, how could it normally be fine? All of a sudden it's so serious again? Qin Feng said as he walked up and added, to put it bluntly, have you guys seen that mental illness as scary as her? And which mental illness is usually normal, but only exaggerated when stimulated? At this, Zhang Yu froze, although it makes sense, but this is not a mental illness, what else could it be? So he sneered, then what do you think this is? And you have a way to keep her quiet? Of course I do. Qin Feng laughed. Che, bragging you just, people have said that tranquilizers don't work, what's your solution? The man who started talking to Xiao Meng mocked. A girl also spoke up, anyone can brag, it's embarrassing if you can't round it up. In the face of everyone mocking and questioning, Qin Feng didn't say anything. At this time, Zir's sister opened her mouth and hooted and whimpered noisily, like she was going crazy. Qin Feng looked at her, then angrily rebuked, shut the hell up. Invisibly, an aura vaguely erupted from Qin Feng's body, not only did it cause everyone in the hall to freeze, but the girl who had gone crazy with her noisy clamor and refused to be quiet anyhow, also instantly quieted down. And, she glanced at Qin Feng with some fear. The hall was quiet for a moment, and many people were stunned. Even some girls stared at Qin Feng with beautiful eyes, not expecting him to be so domineering. At this moment, Zhang Yu came back to his senses and looked at Qin Feng and shouted angrily. What are you yelling for? It's been said that a girl's spirit can't be stimulated, you're still yelling, are you not going to do it on purpose? Ah? Everyone looked at Zhang Yu with odd eyes, as if saying again, you seem to be louder now. Zhang Yu also realized that he had lost his temper and instantly stopped talking. At this time, Qin Feng spoke, it seems that not only did I not irritate her, but instead, it seems that she was quiet, right? An angry rebuke from me is more effective than your tranquilizers. Zhang Yu said with a sullen face, a blind cat bumping into a dead rat, you have the ability to cure her? He he, exactly. Qin Feng said. Zhang Yu sneered, you're going to die if you don't pretend? That's right, this person is so annoying, he's not a doctor, showing off here, is it interesting? Someone said. At this time, Zier said with a cold face, all shut up. Then she looked at Qin Feng, Qin Feng, do you really have a solution? Present, it was only Zier and Xiao Meng who believed Qin Feng a bit, so they saw Qin Feng nod and go up to look at the girl lying on the sofa. In Qin Feng's eyes, there was a faint gray chi on the girl's body, and upon closer inspection, it seemed that there was a possessed faint ghost within her body. With a cold smile, Qin Feng glared fiercely at the girl. This glance, invisibly his zombie pressure on the girl's body possessed ghost pressure. The girl stood up at once, hid behind her mother and said, Mom, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm going back to my room to sleep. Saying that, she was about to go upstairs, everyone was surprised, being glared at by Qin Feng made you better? So magical? And just then, Qin Feng angrily shouted, Stop, it's fine when you say it's fine? Are you fooling around? Come here. The girl was so scared that she hurried back and walked to Qin Feng with a scared face. Now everyone was confused, what's going on here? Chapter 15, Careful Eyes the girl who was crazy at the beginning actually quieted down after Qin Feng glared at her. And with Qin Feng's roar, she came back to stand properly. This was really a bit unbelievable. At this moment, the little girl was standing in a disciplined manner, where was the slightest bit of a sickly appearance. Zhang Yu looked at Qin Feng, although he didn't understand what was going on, he was still unconvinced in his heart and said, Qin Feng, she's already well, why are you yelling at her? So fierce, who are you scaring? Qin Feng looked at Zhang Yu and then spoke. If you don't have the ability to do anything, you can shut up. Zhang Yu's face turned ugly for a moment and said, Don't be complacent, you think I can't tell? It was just a coincidence just now, you looked at her and she just happened to wake up from her seizure just now, now she should be allowed to rest properly instead of being ferociously called to stand in front of you. At the words of the surrounding several male also nodded, one of them said, It's just a blind cat bumping into a dead rat, Xin Feng, you'd better listen to Zhang Yu, after all, he's a doctor. That's right, I don't believe that one look can still cure a disease, so don't pretend. At this moment, Zier and her parents were confused, not knowing what was going on. As for Qin Feng, he looked at the few people who opposed him and Zhang Yu, then sneered. Coincidence? Then keep watching. Saying this, Qin Feng looked at the little girl and said in a cold voice again, Why are you pestering her? This is heard everyone is puzzled, Zhang Yu was about to continue to taunt Qin Feng, but saw the little girl open her mouth a little afraid to answer. I, I take revenge. Once this word came out, the surrounding people froze. Zhang Yu, on the other hand, opened his mouth again, it's over, it's over, Qin Feng you scared people out of their minds, originally she had a mental breakdown, you're good, directly into a neuropathy. Really help, not a doctor is still here to show off and pretend to be a bully, now in trouble, right? 
a good girl, now babbling. Zier's cousin was even more furious, Jean Fong right, if my little cousin really becomes a psychopath, I will definitely not let you off the hook. Alas, pretending harms people ah, young man, pretending must be cautious, don't just focus on being cool. A man said in an old-fashioned manner. Everyone felt that not only did Jean Fong fail to cure the little girl, he instead made the little girl mentally ill. However, Jean Fong looked at the disgusting faces of these people and continued to ask the girl, What revenge are you taking? The girl replied, A week ago at night, I was eating the incense inserted by others on the roadside. It was rare to have just sticks by the side of the road to eat, but this girl kicked them down and stepped on them when she passed by, leaving me with nothing to eat, and I made it difficult for her. Why else would you say that ghosts are catty things? Often people offend ghosts and gods without meaning to. An incense burner can make this ghost possess the girl for a week, really don't know what to say. At this point the people present, basically sure that the girl is psychotic. How else would she say such a thing? Zir was also all anxious and said, Jean Fong, what's going on? Zhang Yu hurriedly said, can't you see, your sister has been made crazy by this guy. It's better to rush to the hospital, in case it gets more serious. Alas, this guy called Qin Feng is really harming people. A male who liked Xiao Meng said. But even though they said that, Xiao Meng and Zir were both looking at Qin Feng, they believed him. Qin Feng smiled and ignored the others, instead looking at Zir's parents. At this time, Zir's father said, it seems. Like a week ago on the first night when the girl got this disease, I picked her up from the cram school and she did accidentally step on an incense flame that was lit on the roadside on the way. Qin Feng nodded and said to the girl, it's just an incense burner, as much as that? I'm not going to play hardball with you either, now I'll give you a handful of incense, let you have enough, leave immediately after you've had enough, and never pester her again, do you hear me? The girl nodded her head hurriedly and said, okay, I know. Then Qin Feng said to Zir's father, Uncle Shang Wan, is there incense in the house? Yes, there. The middle-aged man hurriedly went to find the incense and incense burner, and lit a handful of incense up and inserted it into the burner. Right under everyone's dumbfounded gaze, the girl quickly ran over and directly lay down on the incense, trying hard to smell the smoke coming out of the incense. Seeing this Zhang Yu looked at Qin Feng, what the hell are you up to? You'll mess up like this. Qin Feng frowns and looks at Zhang Yu, if you don't speak, no one will take you as mute. This Zhang Yu was too annoying, going to great lengths to try and strike Qin Feng. Zhang Yu was instantly furious when he was spoken to like this, if you can cure her like this, I'll be a mute wherever you are in the future. Qin Feng sneered, and at this time the girl looked up beautifully and said, wow, eating is so comfortable. Then she looked at Qin Feng and said, I'm full. Then why don't you hurry up and leave? Want me to send you? Qin Feng frowned. Upon hearing this, the faint female ghost figure in the girl's body flickered and came out of the girl's body, glancing at Qin Feng before quickly flying away. The girl, on the other hand, fainted on the sofa all of a sudden, startling everyone. Look, something happened, Qin Feng you're finished, pretending to be a ghost here to make people like this, you're completely finished. Zhang Yu was very happy, now the more serious the girl's situation was, the happier he was, and the more miserable Qin Feng's consequences would be. At this time, Zir's parents were also anxious and hurriedly prepared to call an ambulance. At the same time, someone else said, call the police, there might be a fatality, this kid must go to jail. Seeing everyone taunting themselves so much, Qin Feng was directly squatting down, signaling Zir's parents not to call an ambulance, then he gently shouted, Girl? At the same time shook the girl, then the girl slowly woke up as if she had just woken up from a nap. Seeing this her parents were relieved, at the same time the girl sat up from the sofa, looked around and said, Ha, huh? how come there are so many people? Girl, how are you feeling? Is there anywhere uncomfortable? The woman asked hurriedly. The girl shook her head, then Qin Feng put his hand on the girl's forehead, and no one saw that a faint gray breath came out of the girl's body and went into Qin Feng's hand. Then Qin Feng added, isn't it feeling a bit tired? The girl nods, then Qin Feng says to the middle-aged man and the woman, she might not be too comfortable in her current state, but there's no need to go to the hospital, she'll be fine in the sun tomorrow morning. Upon hearing this, the middle-aged couple breathes a sigh of relief, and seeing that their daughter is indeed fine as well, they all immediately look at Qin Feng with gratitude. Now everyone has nothing to say, after all, now the little girl does seem to be nothing at all ah? Only Zhang Yu was still unconvinced and said, why don't you go to the hospital? It's always good to have a checkup. I went there twice in a row before and couldn't find out the reason, so it's useful to go now? Qin Feng frowned. At once Zhang Yu was speechless, all this, has subverted the medicine he has learned, really do not understand what the situation. Is it really? Messing with something unclean? Just thought of here, suddenly the whole hall, the lights a flicker, the temperature has dropped a lot. Chapter 16 Is this fucking still human? Ha! Huh? What's wrong with this light? In the living room, the lights flickered a few times. Then he heard the middle-aged man say, it's probably a bad contact in the circuit. Everyone didn't think much about it, 
Then Zhang Yi looked at Qin Feng and said in an unrelenting manner, I think you were just pretending before, even I have reason to suspect that everything was a trick by you. Qin Feng frowned and said, What exactly are you trying to say? What exactly he wanted to say, Zhang Yi didn't know, anyway, he just wasn't convinced, he just wanted to find Qin Feng in trouble. But for a moment he didn't know how to say it, which made him a bit stifled, he thought before saying, Anyway, what you just did is superstition, I won't believe you, besides, who knows if it will hurt the girl, who knows if she'll get worse. Xin Feng sneered, what do you care about me if you don't believe me, in this world, there's a lot you don't know, ha ha ha, Zhang Yu said with a loud laugh, do you really want to fool us with the ghost set, could ah, if it is really a ghost haunting the girl, you let the ghost come out for us to see, another man also laughed, that's right, long so big, I have not seen a ghost, hurry to call out we recognize recognize ah, a girl couldn't help but say excitedly, I want to see what a ghost looks like. Zhang Yu added, Qin Feng, if there really is a ghost, just let it haunt me. Ha ha ha. The surrounding people laughed as everyone teasingly looked at Qin Feng to see how he was going to explain. However, in fact, Qin Feng didn't need to explain at all. Because at this time, the lights flickered again, and then everyone felt an eerie aura filling the surroundings. Many people couldn't help but shiver, inexplicably having a feeling of fear. Qin Feng laughed coldly. His eyes that were different from normal people clearly saw some more gray auras in the room. These, were Yin Qi. It seemed that the female ghost was still a bit unwilling after being gotten rid of by Qin Feng just now. But such Yin Qi was definitely not emanated by that weak female ghost, it must have gone and found help. And it was at this time, in the room, a ghostly laughter rang out. That's right, it was the voice of the female ghost that possessed the maid. The faces of all the people present went pale, and with the lights dimming down, everyone hurriedly leaned in close, each and every one of them terrified. At this time, Qin Feng laughed, wasn't every one of them not afraid of ghosts just now? This ghost hasn't come out yet, why are they all wimpy? This hit the face, everyone's face turned ugly, but at this time they were really scared. Facts prove that 9 out of 10 people who said they weren't afraid of ghosts didn't dare to walk at night, but they still justifiably said they weren't afraid of ghosts. Just like Zhang Yu, it was clear that he was scared to death, but he still had a stiff upper lip. Qin Feng, put away your little tricks, don't think that by making some sounds to match the lights you have a ghost. Qin Feng laughed and said, then go open the door and see if there's a ghost? Zhang Yu instantly wimped out, jokingly, he belongs to the network spammer, randomly say anything, in fact, wimpy then. It was at this time that two figures suddenly floated in from outside the hall door. One of them was the female ghost from the beginning, and the other was a male ghost with short hair. At this moment, the room was filled with Yin Qi, and everyone was tainted with it, so they could also see the ghosts. Therefore seeing the two ghosts floating in, they all went weak in the knees from fear. Some of the girls couldn't help but scream, and the atmosphere was tense for a while. He 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 he. Kid, you just dared to be mean to me, do you really think I'm weak and easy to bully? Now that I've invited help, there's something for you to see. Hearing this creepy voice of the female ghost, Qin Feng, however, didn't put it in his eyes, but said to Zhang Yu, Don't you want ghosts to haunt you? How about these two? Zhang Yu was about to cry, who the hell knows there are ghosts? If he knew there were ghosts, he wouldn't have dared to say those words. So at the moment, his legs were trembling and he didn't dare to say a word. Other people are also the same, especially a few taunted Qin Feng, now afraid that Qin Feng let them attract the attention of the ghost. At this time that female ghost was also enraged, Qin Feng actually ignored it? So it said angrily, damn it, kid, you'll pay for this. Then it said to the male ghost beside it, help me torture that male properly, and I'll stay with you. The male ghost, who had obviously been dead for some time and was a bit more powerful than the female ghost, smiled a sinister smile and said, good, a promise is a promise. Saying this it stared at Qin Feng with a pair of all black eyes and floated over towards him. Through this ghost's all black eyes one could tell that it was just an ordinary ghost, but because it had been dead for a few years now, it was just a bit heavier in Yin Qi. But as a black-eyed zombie, Qin Feng wasn't afraid. Seeing that male ghost floating over, everyone, despite their weak legs, were so scared that they hurriedly got out of the way. Xiaomeng and Zier both look at Qin Feng worriedly before they hear Qin Feng speak, you guys back off. The two women hesitated were both stepped back, and then they saw Qin Feng step forward and look at the male ghost with a cold smile. The male ghost rushed forward and back, directly a ghost clawed at Qin Feng's chest to grab, only to see Qin Feng palms raised to block away the ghost claw after the other hand quickly a slap in the face of the male ghost. Snapping sound, this slap with a trace of corpse gas, no one can see, but the male ghost directly pumped a planted on the ground. The whole place was shocked, everyone froze. What was this guy doing? He actually hit a ghost? He even slapped the ghost and huffed it to the ground? That wasn't all, Qin Feng took a step forward and ruthlessly stepped on the male ghost's chest, making it impossible for the male ghost to get up. This also angered the male ghost, saw the male ghost's pair of ghost claws fiercely probed out to become longer, fiercely pinched on Qin Feng's neck. 
This scene made Zhang Yu and some other boys happy, they suddenly wanted the ghost to strangle Qin Feng. Seeing that Qin Feng didn't try to break the ghost's claws and let the ghost's claws pinch his neck, a few of the boys were even happier, they wanted Qin Feng to die just like that. However, some things always go against their wishes. No matter how the pair of ghost claws pinched Qin Feng's neck, Qin Feng did not change his color and was quite calm. He even teasingly looked at the male ghost on the ground, as if to say again, you feel free to pinch, pinch the old man to death counts me as a loser. The male ghost on the ground was also confused, the ghost claws to pinch the neck is the usual trick of all ghosts, but also a very lethal move, once the ghost pinched the neck, basically do not want to live. But now, it tried to pinch Qin Feng's neck, but found that no matter what, there was no way to break his neck. Moreover, after so long, how come Qin Feng hadn't suffocated to death yet? The male ghost thought to itself, this is damn unscientific, isn't it? Qin Feng slowly spoke at this time, had enough of choking? Then next, it's my turn. Saying that, he didn't care about the ghost claws on his neck, he directly squatted down, pressed one hand on the male ghost's body, and thumped his other fist down on the male ghost's body. Every time he smashed his fist on the male ghost's body, Qin Feng carried a little bit of necrotic chi with him, which did a lot of damage to the male ghost's soul. After a few punches, the male ghost's soul had already weakened, and at the same time, it had been beaten to the point of suspecting ghost life. Is there such a thing as hitting a ghost like this? Is this still a human being? Chapter 17 is not crazy. The male ghost had been a ghost for a few years, and usually it was the one who had to deal with people, but it had never encountered a situation where it had been beaten by someone. At the moment was Qin Feng pressed on the ground a burst of punches and kicks to beat is no power to fight back, the soul is faded ah. The female ghost on the side was stunned, it was afraid of Qin Feng, so it found a powerful ghost, who knew that this ghost was also beaten. As for the others, they were even more stunned. Watching Qin Feng beat up the male ghost, they couldn't believe it, is this how ghosts fight? The male ghost itself is even more speechless, it is now completely convinced, opened its mouth and said, Don't. Don't fight. Again, I'm going to. Die again. This male ghost's soul was dim at the moment, and if he was hit a few more times by Qin Feng, it was estimated that his soul would really fly away. So Qin Feng stopped his fist and said coldly, isn't it quite crazy? No. Not crazy. Anymore. The male ghost is really afraid, it now want to cry, there is no heavenly reason? It's a ghost at least, what's the point of being pressed to the ground? Qin Feng does not care about it so much, swung his fist and a few more times, heard the male ghost screamed, suddenly the soul into a cloud of gray gas, dissipated. Yeah. Qin Feng said with a confused face, how could I have accidentally killed it? So unbeatable? Everyone was stunned, the female ghost was even so weak that she almost knelt down, at this moment, it only had fear and dread for Qin Feng in its heart. What kind of person is this? Accidentally beat the ghosts to death? Is this what a human being would do? The female ghost really regretted coming back for revenge. Now it's over, isn't it? After Qin Feng dispersed the male ghost, he clapped his hands and looked at the female ghost with disinterest, saying, if you dare to harm anyone again, this is what you'll get, do you hear me? The female ghost's body trembled and hurriedly said, here, here. On the side, Xiaomeng and Zier couldn't help but laugh, they had seen Qin Feng beat up ghosts before, so it wasn't much of a surprise now. But everyone else was shocked in disbelief. In the tense atmosphere, the female ghost carefully said to Qin Feng, then can I go? Qin Feng thought about it and pointed to Zhang Yu and said to the female ghost, how about this, what about this friend who said before that he wanted to be haunted by a ghost? What an ambitious wish, so you can fulfill him and follow him for a while. Hearing this, Zhang Yu without saying a word fiercely knelt down to Qin Feng, showing a pitiful expression and said, Brother, Brother Feng, you're an adult, let me go. I have a cheap mouth, I owe it to myself, I beat myself up. Don't listen to what this stinky mouth of mine said before. Don't let it follow me. I'm afraid. This more and more quick to cry, damn he now truly feel his mouth how so owe it. Qin Feng sneered, this kind of bitch, you have to treat him like this, otherwise he'll be even more bitchy. At the same time, Qin Feng looked at the other few men who liked to coax and taunt Qin Feng before. When those few men saw Qin Feng looking over, they backed away, afraid that Qin Feng would let the female ghost follow them, which would be too scary. Qin Feng sneered and said to the female ghost, alright, you go out. The female ghost was relieved and hurriedly flew out. Tonight was too scary for it as well. Zhang Yu and the others were also relieved to see the female ghost leave, Zhang Yu hurriedly got up from the ground with an ugly face, tonight was too humiliating, humiliating all the way to the grandmother's house, he wanted to leave immediately, but the female ghost just went out, he did not dare to go out now, the lights in the house were restored, and everyone slowed down, Zier's parents also thanked Qin Feng continuously and believed that their little daughter was definitely fine, up to this point, no one dared to doubt Qin Feng anymore, and no one was good enough to raise a fight with him, they were afraid, a man who had even killed a ghost, was he something they could mess with? 
At the same time, many of the girls present were giving Qin Feng colorful glances as he walked towards them. There were even girls who wanted to go up and hit on him, but when they saw Xiao Meng beside Qin Feng, they lost their confidence. Zier's birthday party continued, her sister's health got better and she had more fun. When they went back, it was long dark. Qin Feng and Xiao Meng walked on the road, chatting. Qin Feng took the issue of Xiao Meng's soul easily dissipating very seriously. However, he had absolutely no idea where to look for the soul-fixing pearl, not a clue. Fortunately, Xiao Meng's family is a local rich merchant. She gave her father a word and asked him to definitely help her to find out about the soul-fixing pearl. Although it might not be useful, it was always one more channel. What are your arrangements for tomorrow? Xiao Meng asked suddenly as she walked. Qin Feng thinks for a moment and says, I'll go back to the town for a bit tomorrow. My mom called to say that the family is having a treat, asking me to bring my girlfriend back for a meal, but alas, no girlfriend. At this Xiao Meng's eyes lit up, a treat? Is there any share for me? Xin Feng smiled, if you want to go, of course you can, I'm just afraid that you won't be used to our family's coarse tea and rice. Xiao Meng's family was a super rich man in South Central City, while Qin Feng's family was just an ordinary family in the town, which couldn't be compared at all. But fortunately, Xiao Meng wasn't the kind of snobbish woman that Li Shanshan was, so there was no case of her looking down on Qin Feng because his family was average. On the contrary, she especially wanted to go to Qin Feng's family. The next day, Xiao Meng couldn't wait to come to Qin Feng's rented house early in the morning. Qin Feng was still sleeping, and when he got up to open the door, he was still rubbing his eyes and said, You're here so early ah. Xiao Meng smiled, then her eyes glanced and found that in the morning, Qin Feng only wore a pair of boxers, and a tent was still high. At once, her pretty face blushed. Qin Feng was still unconscious, turned around with his tent on top and went to wash up. After cleaning up, Qin Feng took Xiao Meng for a half-hour ride to Qingxue Town in South Central City. It didn't take long to walk after getting off the bus to an old neighborhood. Going home again, Qin Feng was a bit emotional, if he hadn't turned into a zombie, I'm afraid that he would have died and never come back. Sighing, Qin Feng says to Xiao Meng, let's go. Xiao Meng is nervous, similar to meeting her parents. And she's wearing a very pretty dress today, but it's not revealing in the slightest, and there's no special makeup, so she looks like a clean and pure natural beauty. Walking into the neighborhood, Qin Feng saw his own mother and five or six women chatting in the neighborhood park. At this time a woman smiled at Qin Feng's mom and said, how come your son didn't come back on the weekend? Qin Feng's mom smiled and said, he's coming back to bring his girlfriend home for dinner today. Another curly-haired woman said, girlfriend? I heard my son say, he heard at school that Qin Feng was dumped by his girlfriend, how can he still bring his girlfriend back? At that moment around a few women are watching the same look to Qin Feng mom, after all, between the women is also climbing a little bit of female. Qin Feng's mother frowned and said, it's impossible, my Qin Feng quite good a child. Another short-haired woman mocked. What's the use of being good? These days, women look at money, like my son is a supervisor in the company, there are a lot of girls chasing after him. If you don't let Qin Feng stop studying and let my son arrange a job for him in the company, he'll still have some success in the future, so at least he'll be able to find a girlfriend. Listening to the women's conversation, Qin Feng's mom's face didn't look too good, these people were clearly belittling her son. Chapter 18, Digging Up Qin Feng's Corner Faced with these women's jabs, Qin Feng's mom couldn't say a word. She could only sigh in her heart and feel sorry for her son's breakup. At this time, the curly-haired woman spoke again, Qin Feng's mom, don't feel bad, nowadays women are all snobbish. Without that condition, it's better not to talk about the girlfriend first. The short-haired woman said, right, turn around and I'll ask my son, if his company wants someone, you should persuade your little phone that it's better to hurry up and come out to work, it's better to be in a company than to go out and move bricks in the future. Several other women have also mentioned their own children, all are their own children to the sky but also the sight of the Qin Feng stepped on the ground. This makes Qin Feng's mom's heart even more blocked, that is called a difficult awe. Just at this time, a BMW X1 drove into the neighborhood parked in a few women around. Then a pair of young men and women out, the man called the short-haired woman a mom, the woman also followed the sound of ants. The short-haired woman is more dejected, said, son, today the company is not busy ah? Mom, our company is on vacation on weekends you forget, this is not to bring his girlfriend back for dinner. The young man's face was complacent. The short-haired woman immediately said, Big companies are different, holidays are closed. By the way, you first go to park the car, the car 300,000 it. This guy can put her loaded, that is called to be shoulder to shoulder with the son ah. The point is that several women are still envious, one of them said. Aya, your family Lu Jiang really powerful, 20-something years old to drive a BMW, really outstanding. That's right, but my son is also ready to buy a car, didn't cost us a penny. The other woman didn't forget to put on a show herself. At this time, the curly-haired woman looked at Qin Feng's mom and said, 
You have to give your family Qin Feng said, let him work hard ah, either learn my son study first in the class, or learn others Lu Jiang in the company as a supervisor. Can not be bad grades a day in school still mixing old age, but also lost his girlfriend, what is this called ah? Later he came back, we all have to help you say him a little. Qin Feng's mom thought, you guys will be so kind? It's just a stinky deception. Meanwhile the young man, Lu Jiang, also said, what? Has Qin Feng been dumped? That girlfriend of his is quite pretty, but how can she truly be with him? Saying that, he also wrapped his arms around his average looking but heavily made up girlfriend, very smug. Just then, suddenly two figures walked over while a female voice said, Who said Qin Feng was dumped? It's clearly him who dumped someone else, and I'm his girlfriend now. Saying that, Xiao Mang walked over on Qin Feng's arm. Everyone looked and froze. This girl was too pretty, right? It was simply a heavenly maiden coming down to earth. For a moment those women including Lu Jiang and his girlfriend froze, they had never seen such a beautiful girl before. Wait, what did she just say? She was Qin Feng's girlfriend? And then looked at Qin Feng on the side, could it be true? Several women were speechless, especially the curly-haired woman, her son, and Qin Feng a school, in the past Qin Feng girlfriend is the class flower, she also blamed her son useless to find a beautiful girlfriend. That's why she was so happy when she heard her son say that Qin Feng had been dumped, but now, actually brought back a girl who was countless times more beautiful than the class flower, which made her envious and jealous. Of course the hardest person present was the short-haired woman's son, Lu Jiang. He thinks he is young and talented, has a car, a house and a girlfriend, and has always been very dejected. Now he was not convinced, why Qin Feng, a guy who was still in school and didn't have a penny, had a girlfriend who was like a fairy? Looked at Qin Feng's girlfriend, and then look at his own girlfriend, damn himself feel his girlfriend long disgusting. This is the gap ah. No, how can such a beautiful woman be cheap for Qin Feng? It should be the woman of a successful man like him. So Lu Jian went up and smiled to Qin Feng and said, Qin Feng, this is your girlfriend? Qin Feng froze and said, is there a problem? No. Lu Jian wanted to show himself as much as possible and said, just now I heard a few ants chatting about you, said your grades are not good in the future there is no way out, after all, it is a neighbor, so I make the decision, you come to my company to work, under my officers, to ensure that you have a monthly salary of 5,000, how about it? When saying this Lu Jian looked at Xiao Meng, obviously to reflect his bullish status. However, Xiao Meng was indifferent and even didn't give a damn. Qin Feng, on the other hand, spoke up and said, thanks for the kind words, but no need, I'm not lacking money. Qin Feng, gnawing on your old age is shameful, you always spend your parents' money, it will make people look down on you. Lu Jiang continued, variously belittling Qin Feng to elevate himself. Besides, you have such a beautiful girlfriend, at least five or six thousand a month for cosmetics, clothing, food, housing, transportation and other various expenses, right? Where do you get the money to support your girlfriend if you don't go to work? But even if you go to work, you have to earn 30,000 a month like I do now. Otherwise how can you support your girlfriend? Well, this guy had invariably pretended again. Xin Feng couldn't help but admire him. Unfortunately, Xiao Meng still didn't look at Lu Jiang, which made Lu Jiang a bit anxious. He thought for a moment, fished out a box from his body and opened it. Inside was the delicate bracelet. Honestly speaking falling in love is very costly. This is not it. The diamond bracelet that I just prepared for my girlfriend is only $20,000. So that's why Qin Feng, you have to gas up and make money so that your girlfriend can live well. He said this, or to reflect that he was rich and capable, wanting to dig Qin Feng's corner. However, Qin Feng's corner couldn't be dug at all, and Xiao Meng still didn't move. Qin Feng was also a bit annoyed and said indifferently, thank you for reminding me, but I don't need you to worry about my affairs. Saying that, he and Xiao Meng bypassed Lu Jiang and walked in front of Qin Feng's old mom. Lu Zhang's face immediately embarrassed, heart envy jealousy unconvinced, all kinds of flavors mixed together too hard to bear. At this time, Qin Feng's mom happily looked at Xiao Meng and said, Aya, this girl is really beautiful, I haven't seen such a beautiful girl, I didn't think it was my son's girlfriend. Xiao Meng smiled shyly at her words and said, Auntie good, first time meeting, I don't have anything to send you, here is a global limited edition of the Ocean Tears Blue Gemstone, it's for you. Said Xiao Ming opened a very delicate box, inside there is a very beautiful high-grade gemstone necklace, at a glance you know the value is not expensive, attracted the surrounding women's eyes are bright. Xiao Ming took out the necklace to Qin Feng's mom to put on, Qin Feng's mom was a little embarrassed to say, this kind of limited edition is very expensive, right? Xiao Ming said, not expensive, only 88 million only, my family has a jewelry company, next time I specifically go to carefully pick a good gift to you. When these words came out, everyone froze, 88 million dollars? Still not expensive? A few women, not to mention how sour, at the moment envious eyes are going to stare out. Lu Jiang is the body such as a thunderclap, 
Their own here to take a less than 20,000 bracelet fool, other girls out of their own 88 million global limited edition necklace to send Chin Feng's mom, how is this then? Moreover, this woman's family open jewelry company? Lu Jiang that point of confidence completely gone. Chapter 19 Su Family Gold Lu Jiang would like to pretend to get Xiao Meng's favor, so beautiful woman, he is not willing to Xiao Meng is Qin Feng's girlfriend. But this pretending to find out, people Xiao Meng family open jewelry company, to give the boyfriend's mother of a jewelry are 88 million limited edition, which makes Lu Jiang very hit. But after the shock he suddenly thought of a problem, and then looked at Qin Feng with contempt and said, I didn't see it, you're actually a soft eater? These words let the people present were stunned, Qin Feng's mom also froze. His family's condition is average, his son Qin Feng is still studying, but his girlfriend is a rich second generation, this does cause gossip awe. At that moment, several women laughed, and the short-haired woman mocked. Aya, ah, young people these days, even if they are incapable, they actually eat soft rice, is this still a man? The curly-haired woman also said, that's right, my son must find the right family in the future, even if he wants to find a big lady, then he must have his own relative strength. Unlike some people, penniless, eating soft rice yo. Qin Feng's mom's face went white again. These days, the woman with the tycoon, that is called discerning. Loser with a thousand gold, that is called a white boy eating soft rice. Lu Jiang smiled smugly, then looked at Xiao Meng and said, Beautiful woman, although Qin Feng is handsome, but after all, he is a loser, a thousand gold lady like you can't match him, so in order not to hurt each other, I suggest you break up. Xiao Meng's face has gone cold, Qin Feng is a playful smile did not say anything, then heard Xiao Meng nonchalantly said to Lu Jiang, whether he is worthy of me or not is not up to you. Moreover, people like you don't even have the qualifications to compare with him. The short-haired woman instantly became angry and said, How do you talk like this girl? My son is the head of GMA company, this kid is a loser, how is my son not qualified to compare with him? GMA company? Xiao Meng froze. The short-haired woman saw this and said smugly, How about it? You've heard of this company, right? This is a company under the Su Group. My son is working as a supervisor in it, he has a bright future, is Qin Feng comparable? Lu Jiang tidied up his suit and was very arrogant, in his opinion, Xiao Meng also knew about GMA company, she must have been shocked. As a matter of fact Xiao Meng was indeed shocked, because GMA company was a company of Su Group, and she, was the daughter of the chairman of Su Group. Thus, a smile appeared on her face and she touched her cell phone. Lu Jiang was even more pleased to see this, in his opinion, Xiao Meng showing a smile was a change in attitude towards him, and taking out her cell phone, she must have wanted to ask Lu Jiang to leave a WeChat. The heart cannot help but be happy, secretly thinking that such a beautiful woman, there is a chance to pick up the hand, really happy ah. However, Xiao Meng did not ask him to add WeChat, but pressed a number, and then passed and said, Hello? Fourth uncle, is there a man named Lu Jiang in your company? Don't know? Then ask the HR department to check it out and fire him if there is one, on the grounds that his character is not up to par. After Xiao Meng hung up the phone, Lu Jiang was dumbfounded, what did it mean? Qin Feng on the side couldn't help but almost laugh out loud, this Lu Jiang, really make his own death. Lu Jiang has not reacted to it, this time his cell phone rang, picked up a look, GMA personnel department. After answering it, he heard the personnel manager on the other end of the phone said nonchalantly, Lu Jiang? You because of bad character, moral behavior is not correct, now by the GMA company dismissed, at any time to the company to collect wages to leave, do do do. Lu Jiang was struck by lightning and his whole body froze. What is the situation? Just now he was also proud of the company in a flash to open himself? All of a sudden from a big company supervisor, turned into a hobo? And once he was fired by such a large company for character issues, then his resume would be smeared with this, and it would be very difficult to find a job in the future, okay? His body couldn't help but tremble a few times, and his face turned a few shades of white. At this time, the short-haired woman came forward and said, Son, what's wrong? Is not a big customer looking for you to talk about business, my son every day phone a lot, too busy, but hard or good, soon estimated to be the manager. Lu Jiang face embarrassed, did not pay attention to their own mom, looked at Xiao Meng said, You, you in the end, are, who? Xiao Meng faintly said, My name is Su Meng, the only daughter of Su Long of Su Group. With a soft leg, Lu Jiang almost sat on his butt on the ground. The few women were also dumbfounded, this is actually the daughter of the famous Su Group chairman Su Long? Lu Jiang said with a cry-like expression on his face. Missy, I'm wrong, please give me a chance, you don't let GMA fire me. I, I haven't even paid off my car loan, without a work how to do ah. Xiao Meng sneered and said, you are such a capable talent, and GMA is too much for you, where can not shine ah? Lu Jiang's heart suffocated to death, he did not know how much he had paid for that supervisor's position, with the ability to have a fart relationship ah. Missy, please, I can't live without this job ah, I apologize, I apologize for just being cheap. 
Lu Jiang really afraid, this job is gone, he basically only moving bricks. His mom, the short-haired woman also froze, her face was pale, she knew that this time she was fooling around too much, and floated too high, and fell down. Xiao Meng was too lazy to tangle with Lu Jiang again, and under the gaze of several women, she opened her mouth to Qin Feng's mom and said, Auntie, don't take what they just said to heart, in fact, Qin Feng is very good, a few days ago our group had a jade conference, Qin Feng went and emerged. He bought a few stones and cut out superb jades, worth nearly 200 million dollars, bringing great benefits to our group, and he himself, casually made 100 million dollars that day. The moment these words came out, several women's eyes went wide. One day casually earned a hundred million dollars? Is this so damn impressive? However, they knew that it was impossible for Su's daughter to lie, so they all looked at Qin Feng in shock. Qin Feng's mom was also dumbfounded, 100 million? His own son earned a hundred million dollars in one day, and also brought Su's daughter back as his girlfriend. She was dizzy and thought, this is not a dream, is it? Lu Jiang was also dumbfounded. Lu Jiang is also dumbfounded, Qin Feng a day a hundred million? He himself just had the nerve to fool around with the fact that he was earning twenty to thirty thousand dollars a month? At once, his face reddened. At this time, Qin Feng's mom happily said, Son, Xiao Meng, go, go home, today mom will give you a big table of delicious food. Qin Feng's mom pulled Xiao Meng and went home, leaving behind a group of women who were envious and jealous. Qin Feng's mom is very happy, her son has not yet been out of society to earn a hundred million, but also Su's group gold brought home, this is simply led her to float to the sky, and thought to hurry to tell the good news to Qin Feng his father. On the way, Qin Feng's mom said, Today's weekend, your dad got promoted in his organization, so he's going to invite his friends and family to have a meal, and by the way, your cousin is also back. Qin Feng froze, the impression, this cousin, since childhood is very good, but also in the circle of these relatives and children in the most ejected. This time, if he also comes, it is estimated that the best pretender in the room will be none other than him. Chapter 20, Relatives Surrounded Back home, Qin Feng's mom hurriedly said to Qin Feng's dad what happened before, Qin Feng's dad excitedly said to Qin Feng, Good boy, didn't give your mom and dad any shame. It seems that today shouldn't be a celebration of my promotion, it should be a celebration of little Feng making money. Everyone laughed, and then Qin Feng's mom put all the snacks and fruits on the table for fear of slowing down Xiao Meng. After all, people are so beautiful, but also a thousand dollars. Xiao Meng was a bit flattered and looked very embarrassed. Then Qin Feng's mom went to cook, and Xiao Meng immediately followed. Although she and Qin Feng didn't officially say that they were boyfriend and girlfriend, she had already taken Qin Feng as her boyfriend, so she naturally wanted to show off in front of her future mother-in-law. While they were cooking, the time was close to noon. The guests of the family had also come one after another, and soon, a dozen people were sitting in the living room of the house. They were Qin Feng's eldest uncle and third uncle, as well as their wives and children, and aunts and cousins. The house was bustling with people, all of them chatting. The topic went from the studies of several cousins to the careers of their cousins. So it was that Qin Feng, this 24-year-old cousin Qin Liang, started to pretend. Among the younger generation present, he was the one who had the most successful career right now, and he was also the role model that parents in the circle of relatives let their children learn from. Qin Liang, I heard that you're getting promoted in the company too? You have a promising future at such a young age. Third Aunt Qin Feng said. Qin Liang said, Third Aunt, Shaolin is studying so well, she will definitely not be inferior to me when she comes out to work in the future. Hearing this, the third aunt was also happy, and then Qin Liang's mother, Qin Feng's eldest aunt said, Little Feng, how are your studies going these days? Everyone looked at Qin Feng, and then they heard Qin Feng smile and say, Not bad. At this moment, Qin Liang suddenly spoke, Little Feng, where's your pretty girlfriend? Why didn't you bring her back this time? In fact, Qin Liang was a bit jealous of Qin Feng, who had a class flower girlfriend in school, while he didn't have a girlfriend yet even though his career was going well now. Everyone was also looking at Qin Feng at the moment, because the only thing Qin Feng had in his circle of relatives was a pretty girlfriend. On hearing this, Qin Feng said, split up. Split up? The crowd froze, and then they all seemed to take it for granted. So Qin Liang smiled and said, it's fine, when you find a good job in the future, you won't have to worry about not having a girlfriend. Cousin Shaolin also said, brother Feng, why don't the girls in our class introduce you to one? Qin Lin was in the same school as Qin Feng and was one grade lower than Qin Feng. Qin Feng was about to open his mouth, when Xiao Meng and Qin Feng's mom came out with dishes in the kitchen. At the same time, Qin Feng's mom smiled and said, No need Xiaolin, your brother Feng has a new girlfriend. This is, her name is Little Dream. Then the crowd looked at Little Dream and were all dumbfounded. Xiao Meng's fairy-like appearance shocked everyone. At the same time, Qin Lin was surprised and said, Su University School Flower? When did you, become my cousin as boyfriend? After all, a school, Su Meng, the number one school flower, no one in the school knew. Su Meng guffawed and said, I was just with Qin Feng. 
Qin Liang and a few cousins looked at Qin Feng in disbelief. This Nima just split with the class flower and is now with the school flower? Does this still let people live? What's so great about this kid? The key seems to be that Qin Feng doesn't care, but Xiao Meng is very nervous. It was obvious that Xiao Meng liked Qin Feng. After a short period of silence, suddenly Qin Feng's eldest uncle opened his mouth. Xiao Feng, you can't just focus on love and school, studying is also a big deal. If you don't study well, how can you support your family in the future? Upon hearing this the relatives all nodded their heads in agreement, at the same time Qin Liang spoke. Xiao Feng, I'm about to be promoted to project manager in the company. If you get into a major university, I'll be able to give you a hand when you come out, so you have to work hard at your studies. It sounded like he wanted to help Qin Feng, but in fact, he invisibly pretended to be a bully, and instantly pulled everyone's topic to his career again. Yes little Feng, after your brother Liang has fought his way down the company, although you younger siblings can rely on his connections to get in and work, you at least have to work hard on your own to be qualified to enter this threshold, right? The one who said this is the older woman, she is dressed in some high grade, has always positioned herself at the level of the broad wife, more or less looked down on these relatives. At this moment, she continued to preach, you have to learn more from your bright brother, this is not, he is making money to go to the city to buy a house. Qin Liang straightened his back, and everyone looked at him adoringly. However, right at this moment, Xiao Meng suddenly spoke up. Speaking of houses, Qin Feng, didn't you have money prepared in your car to let your parents buy a house in the city? Don't forget about this matter. Little Dream's divine assist helped Qin Feng to pretend, so Qin Feng said, yes, I almost forgot. Just as he finished speaking, the older woman spoke again, Xiao Feng, you have money to buy a house too? Well, I made a small profit from my part-time job. Qin Feng nodded his head. The aunt said, how much can you earn on a part-time job? Is the down payment enough to buy a house? Your brother Liang looked at a house, the full payment is one million dollars. Everyone is surprised at what she says, but she hears Qin Feng say, it's not much, it's only 100 million, the down payment shouldn't be too stressful. Jing. Then the relatives all laughed and the third aunt said, little Feng is getting more and more humorous now. Qin Feng also laughed, touched out the purple gold card and handed it to his dad who was aside and said, there's a little more than 100 million in here, dad, go buy a villa in the city when you have time. Qin Feng's dad smiled and took the card, while those relatives were all talking about Qin Feng's love of jokes. However, right at this moment, Qin Feng's cousin spoke in surprise, purple gold card? And Qin Feng said, son, what's wrong with the purple gold card? Everyone looked at cousin Qin Feng because he worked in a bank, so he was curious about what happened to the purple gold card. Just then, they heard cousin Qin Feng say with a shocked expression on his face, this kind of purple gold card is impossible for the average person to have, only the bank's valued customers who have at least tens of millions of dollars deposited in it are qualified to hold it. In other words, those who have this kind of card are either rich or noble, with at least tens of millions of liquidity. Little phone, I didn't expect you to hide so deeply, huh? After he finished saying this, everyone in the room really froze, each and every one of them looked at Qin Feng with surprise, they really couldn't figure out how he could be so rich. It was at this time that Qin Feng's sister-in-law who worked at the jewelry store opened her mouth. Sis, this blue necklace on your neck is the tears of the ocean, right? Our store manager has applied to the higher-up several times to sell it in our store without success. I heard that this ocean tear worth $880,000 was taken by the Su Group's daughter and given away, why is it here with you? And Qin Feng spoke up, fake, right, imitations are normal. The others also nodded their heads, believing it to be a fake. Older Aunt Qin Feng said, this was given to me by Little Dream, by the way little sister, the Su's jewelry store where you work, should be Little Dream's family store. Little Aunt froze, looked at Xiao Meng and said, you. Are Su's group's thousand gold Miss Su Meng? Xiao Meng smiled and nodded her head and said, It turns out that my sister-in-law works in my family's jewelry store, I'll turn around and order, how about you work as a store manager in that store of yours? Little aunt was instantly excited and said, Thank you, Miss Su. You don't have to be polite to me, sister-in-law, we are all family. Xiao Meng said. Chapter 21, Really Flying. The atmosphere at the table was depressing. The relatives of Qin Feng's family all had odd faces. They didn't expect that Qin Feng could actually make so much money. What was even more unacceptable to them was that this guy actually had a big miss of the Su group as his girlfriend. This Nima is too sour for people. From this moment on, no one at the dinner was fooling around. In the past when they were together, it was definitely praising Qin Liang to the heavens, and now that Qin Feng was so bullish, for a moment it left them a bit dumbfounded. After the meal, Xiao Meng took the initiative to clean up the dishes, which made people even more jealous, actually being able to find such a good girl as a girlfriend. These relatives were very depressing, and were directly suppressed by Qin Feng's family, so they each chatted for a few moments after the meal and left in a hurry. After the relatives left, Qin Feng's parents laughed, 
today their son can be said to have given them a hard face, in the future, these relatives probably no one will have the nerve to fool around in front of them. Because of tomorrow's classes, so Qin Feng and Xiaomeng in the afternoon to take the car back to the city, accompanied Xiaomeng shopping, after eating dinner together, accompanied Xiaomeng on the road shopping. Almost to the rental house, Qin Feng suddenly frowned, he vaguely felt a Yin Qi. Then he looked around and realized that an old mansion not far away was quite heavy with Yin Qi. The house rented by Qin Feng was in an old city area, where many old mansions, most of which were rented by students going to school, were very close to the school. Of course, there were quite a few old mansions like this one, but many of them were also rented out. These are not the point, the point is that Qin Feng is curious, why is there such a heavy Yin Qi inside? After all, having turned into a zombie, he was curious about the spiritual piece of things. So he took Xiao Ming close to the mansion, then walked to the door to look inside through the doorway. This does not look just, I'll look directly Qin Feng startled. See that the mansion in the hall room at the moment is placed in a coffin, and in the coffin, at this time, a scary old man's body is slowly sitting up. And outside the hall, there were seven or eight figures, who seemed to be arguing about something, completely oblivious to the corpse inside sitting up. Seeing this scene, Xin Feng's back was a burst of cool air. Damn inside these hearts can be really big ah, the body you're sitting up did not see it? Still quarrel ah. At this time, Xiaomeng also came up and said, what are you looking at? I also look. Xin Feng busy said, you don't look. Ah, why? Xiaomeng was puzzled, the more she wasn't allowed to look the more curious she became and said. Is there a pretty young lady? Why else would you be too vain to let me look? Saying that, he pushed Qin Feng away, wanting to take a look no matter what. Qin Feng couldn't help but smile, so fine, let her look. Who knew that Xiao Meng saw the corpse in the inner hall at a glance? That corpse's pair of empty eyes seemed to be staring at Xiao Meng as well, and suddenly opened its mouth as if revealing a bizarre smile. This was indeed too frightening, so frightened that Xiao Meng immediately couldn't help but let out a cry of alarm. It was her cry of alarm that drew the attention of those people in the mansion, and with that, they quickly came over to open the door, and saw Qin Feng and Xiao Meng standing at the door. Who are you people? What are you doing in front of my house? A middle-aged man asked with a frown. Xiao Meng's face turned pale, and Qin Feng hurriedly said, I was just passing by, and I accidentally saw the corpse sitting up through the doorway. The crowd froze and looked back, where was the body sitting in the coffin in the hall? A young man was furious, my grandfather lying properly inside, or sitting? Are you crazy? Qin Feng was also puzzled, wasn't he sitting just now? Why is it gone? Could it be that his eyes were blurred? Knowing that he was being unreasonable, Qin Feng apologized and said, I'm sorry, maybe my eyes were blurred. So Qin Feng took Xiao Meng ready to leave, however, just at this time, another middle-aged man is walking into the hall to check, this look, suddenly surprised. No good, where's dad's corpse? Ye's body is indeed not sitting, but it's gone? Everyone froze, rushed over to take a look, the coffin was empty, the body was not. The face is all a change. Then they looked around the hall, no. Now everyone panicked, a corpse, how could it be missing? There is no one else in this house, it's hard to. Meet a ghost. Outside the door, Xin Feng looked at the scene inside, a bad feeling also surged to the heart. Out of kindness, he opened his mouth and said, don't stay inside, it's dangerous. Inside the hall, the young man said in a cold voice, who the hell are you? Why did my grandfather's body disappear as soon as you guys arrived? Upon hearing this two middle-aged men and two women, as well as several young men and women also looked at Qin Feng and Xiao Meng. Qin Feng thought about it and simply walked into the mansion, looked around and said, The corpse is in this mansion, the Yin Qi is getting heavier and heavier. Everyone was a bit scared by him saying this, and they all unconsciously rushed out of the hall. Kid, is it you who messed up? The bald middle-aged man who looked the oldest opened his mouth. Qin Feng said, I just came in, what ghosting? Only that I did see the corpse sitting up from the coffin earlier. Nonsense, could the corpse still move on its own? The bald middle-aged man said in a cold voice. That young man also said, that's right, grandpa is already dead, how could he possibly move? At this time, suddenly Xiao Meng looked inside the hall and said, it just jumped over. The crowd looked, where is there anything? They all looked at Xiao Meng doubtfully. Xiao Meng said, I just saw that body, in the hall room off and quickly jumped to the other side. Everyone was nervous, toward the hall room carefully looked again, did not see anything. That young man frowned, but seeing that Xiao Meng is so beautiful, he smiled and said, teasing me beautiful? If my grandfather can still jump from one jump to another, then wouldn't I be able to fly? Ah, before the words were finished, he really flew. Everyone was stunned ah, because just now, they saw a figure in the hall suddenly jumped out, and his arm swung at the young man standing in the doorway, directly sending him flying. Immediately afterward, everyone shocked cried out as they kept retreating. At the doorway of the hall, the corpse of an old man in a birthday suit stood. 
Its pair of dark, empty eyes stared at everyone, the skin on its face was dried out, its eye sockets collapsed, and its mouth was slightly open, slowly spewing out a trace of gray breath. Ah! Fraudulent corpse! Several middle-aged couples and young men and women were so frightened that they hurriedly ran outside the courtyard. But then they saw the stiff body of the corpse jump, actually jumped up three meters high and four or five meters away, directly jumped over the heads of several people and landed at the gate. Then it swung both claws, and the gate slammed shut with a deadly bang. At the same time it turned around and made a ho-ho sound in its throat, then said in a hoarse voice, All. People. Die. Chapter 22 Give me face. The mansion was gloomy. Everyone backed up in fear, looking at the corpses at the door in great fear. Xiao Meng was also scared and hid behind Xin Feng. Xin Feng was not afraid and said to Xiao Meng, Don't worry, don't forget I'm not an ordinary person. At the same time, he is curious in his heart, if this corpse is now a zombie, then will it be the same kind as him? At the moment it doesn't seem to look like it, this zombie has stiff arms and legs, more like the traditional kind of zombie in a zombie movie. And Qin Feng was different, he was the descendant zombie of the zombie king, General Chen, who had existed since ancient times, and there was a big gap between the types. Although his level was still very low now, he thought that he would have little problem dealing with this stiff zombie. The zombie slowly jumped forward, stretching his arms flat, his nails were very long and looked a bit scary. Qin Feng took a deep breath, then also walked forward, then whispered to the zombie. In fact, I am also a zombie, we are barely similar, give me face today, do not make trouble here. Just finished speaking, the zombie violently swung his arms, and hit Qin Feng. Qin Feng hastily dodged, then eyes glared angrily said, damn so many people watching it, a little face does not give me a, ah. said Qin Feng stepped forward, then a foot hard kick in the zombie's stomach. Touch of sound, the zombie directly flew out, then fell to the ground after a pop and stood up. The crowd was stunned, did not expect Qin Feng actually dared to beat the zombie, two young girl's eyes are bright, some worship look at Qin Feng. Then look at the young man who had fallen and flown before, at this moment he stood up and rubbed his butt, then he saw Qin Feng beating the zombie. At the same time, he realized that his two cousins and the great beauty Xiao Mang were all looking at Qin Feng adoringly, and his heart was not comfortable anymore. He also practiced Taekwondo, and immediately rushed up in a few steps and shouted at Qin Feng. Get out of the way, I'll deal with it. Saying that, he slashed his foot out and ruthlessly kicked at the zombie's shoulder. Bang, the zombie did not move a bit, on the contrary, the man's face reddened, fiercely screamed miserably and sat on his but on the ground holding his feet. Just now, he felt as if he kicked in the iron bar, where is this arm ah? This goods pretending not to be able to be hit in the face, lost to the maternal grandmother's home. The key to that zombie also angrily jumped forward, a foot on the man stepped down. If he stepped on it, this guy will be ruined. At the critical moment, Qin Feng jumped up and kicked the zombie again. At the same time, he quickly stepped forward, not waiting for the zombie to jump up again, directly stepped on the zombie's body and ruthlessly pressed. The zombie on the ground constantly struggling, but it just can't get up. But for a moment Qin Feng did not know how to solve this zombie, after all, he is not a Taoist priest. When he was puzzled, suddenly the zombie struggling on the ground all of a sudden did not move. Qin Feng froze, what is the situation? So he was ready to squat down and take a closer look but suddenly realized that in the corpse, a spirit flew out and choked Qin Feng's neck. Damn it is this trick again? Ghosts love to pinch the neck? Good thing Qin Feng is a zombie, otherwise this time again finished. Only to see the old man go strangling Qin Feng neck how hard to Qin Feng can not die, but instead of Qin Feng hands a force, directly to the old ghost of a pair of ghost claws break open, and then grab the ghost claws forcefully flung, the old ghost thrown out. Crap! The young man's face turned pale, so scared that he climbed up from the ground and hurriedly retreated. The old ghost flew out and roared angrily and looked at Qin Feng, seemingly a bit scornful of him. The next moment, its dark eyes looked towards the two middle-aged couples and it flew over. They were both scared and shouted for help, while Qin Feng quickly rushed up to block the old ghost. The old ghost stopped its soul, looked at Qin Feng angrily, and actually made a sound that said, Get out of the way. You're not a member of my family. I won't kill you. This made Qin Feng dumbfounded. How many meanings? Turning into zombies and ghosts do not kill outsiders, specializing in picking their own descendants scourge? They are your sons and grandsons, why are you killing them? Qin Feng was puzzled. Who knows that the old ghost became even angrier and said, I don't have them as descendants, get out of the way, I'm going to kill them. Qin Feng was really a bit confused, people say that a tiger's venom doesn't eat its children, how come people still have to kill their descendants when they die? At this time, the two middle-aged men and their wives all hurriedly opened their mouths. Dad, we are wrong, just let us go. That's right dad, we, got carried away for a moment, we're sorry, we're wrong, just don't scare us. Grandpa, mom and dad and second uncle and second aunt they know they are wrong, just forgive them. At this time a girl also said. At those words Qin Feng knew for sure that this old man's son had done something wrong to the old man. That old ghost said angrily, you animals ah. Now that I'm dead, 
Are you happy? Satisfied? Both couples stopped talking and lowered their heads in silence. That old ghost floated in the air, suddenly sighed quietly and said, in order to fight for the family property, in order to this ancestral house land, how many years have you quarreled? A few years ago, I was so angry that your mom hanged herself, and now I am angry with you. I did not expect me to die you guys in front of my coffin waker still fighting, I, I really want to take you guys together. Xin Feng smiled and thought no wonder I saw them arguing before, together in front of the old man's body to fight for the family property? No wonder the old man angry directly swindles it up, but also to take them together it, visible they are indeed too much. I heard the old ghost speak again, I am also dead now, so I will make it clear here today. This ancestral house can be sold, but the money will be divided equally between you two brothers, and no one is allowed to ask for one more point. Otherwise, I'll take you all with me to the netherworld. The two middle-aged men were scared and both nodded their heads in a hurry, who would dare to compete in this Nima? Don't want to live? The old ghost then nodded with satisfaction, although it was fierce at first, it was also infuriated. Now see the sun are obedient, this is to eliminate anger. It was at this time, in the distance, two ghostly figures in suits floated. They floated towards the old ghost and said, Ghost man hooker, come with us. You have the right to remain silent now, but every word you say will become trial testimony. With that, they chained the old ghost and led it to prepare to go to hell. The old ghost didn't resist during the whole process, and the others were all watching nervously not daring to speak. It was just that the two ghostly messengers had just drifted out not long before they suddenly stopped, and one of them twisted his head to look at Xiao Meng with an expressionless face for a moment. Ha! Huh? Aren't you supposed to be dead? The soul was actually forcefully sealed inside. Saying that, that ghostly messenger floated towards Xiao Meng with an iron chain while saying, how bold, dead is dead and you're still forcefully sealing your soul, this messenger will take you away today. Saying this it flung the chain in its hand and wrapped it around it little dream. And just as the chain was about to wrap around little dream, Xin Feng suddenly stepped in front of her and grabbed the chain. Chapter 23, So Fast? The reason why Xiao Meng almost died was because she had blocked the terrifying blow of that Wei Dong guy from the exorcist clan for Qin Feng in the first place. Thus, causing Xiao Meng's soul to be unstable and needing Qin Feng's corpse chi to suppress it. This was what Qin Feng owed her. He couldn't let Xiao Meng die, that is, even if he went to search for the soul-fixing pearl that he didn't even know what the hell it was. So now, how could he watch Xiao Meng's soul, being taken away by this ghost messenger? Wouldn't that mean that little dream was going to die? So without even thinking about it, Xin Feng grabbed the chain that hooked the soul and stared at the ghost man with a pair of dead eyes. Asshole, you dare to stop the ghost messenger from hooking the soul, don't you want to live? Xin Feng said in an icy tone, anyone can die, only she can't. This was said in a very domineering manner, for a moment, the ghost messenger was also stunned. But then it got angry, it was a ghost messenger, a ghost messenger who hooked people's souls, an existence that people and ghosts were in awe and fear of, it wanted to hook souls and catch ghosts, who dared to stop it. Bold, this messenger sees that you don't want to live, in that case, this messenger will take your soul away together. After that ghost messenger finished speaking, he violently pulled the chain, but it didn't pull back from Qin Feng's hand, the chain was still held in Qin Feng's death grip. This caused the ghostly messenger's face to change, knowing that Qin Feng was somewhat capable, so he shouted, waved his hand, and a wave of ghostly qi instantly flew out, hitting Qin Feng. Qin Feng frowned, then his fists clenched, ruthlessly smashing out, directly smashing the ghost qi into dissipation. What? Fighting ghost qi with your bare hands? That ghost messenger was stunned. In its impression, even a powerful Taoist priest would have to use Taoist techniques to resist ghost qi, how could he do it with his bare hands? Kid, who the hell are you? The ghost messenger angrily rebuked. Qin Feng snorted coldly and didn't answer, instead, he said in a cold voice, it's impossible for you to hook her soul, get lost. These words made that ghostly messenger furious and said angrily, even if you're very powerful, so what? Let me tell you, all I have to do is to go back and report to the higher-ups and say that there's a damned person who forcibly sealed his soul inside his body to make himself immortal, and as usual, the hell will come to clean up after you guys. Hearing these words, Qin Feng's eyes went completely cold. On his body, he also brought up a terrifying killing aura. Since this is the case, then, you guys won't be able to leave either. As the words fell, Xin Feng gave a forceful tug on his hand, violently pulling the ghostly messenger who was grasping the other end of the chain to fly backwards. Then Xin Feng stepped out, his palm condensed corpse chi, quickly made a fist, and then ruthlessly slammed his fist at the ghostly messenger. That ghost was hastily torn over, by Xin Feng's angry fist smashed, only to hear a bang, followed by a miserable scream. That ghost immediately as a plate of scattered sand quickly dispersed. Then it turned into stars and dissipated into nothingness. Everyone at the scene's face changed, the two middle-aged couples were so scared that they directly sat on the ground, and the several young men and women also backed up with weak legs. How frightening was this scene? This Qin Feng had actually dispersed a ghost messenger with a single punch. 
At the same time, the other ghostly messenger who was grabbing the old ghost's soul also had a huge change in his face. A ghostly messenger dispersed with a single punch, this was no joke. Without even thinking about it, that ghost sentry hurriedly turned around and disappeared with the old ghost. It was afraid that if it was one step late, Xin Feng would destroy it as well. As a matter of fact, Xin Feng did prepare to exterminate it as well, but before he could, he saw another ghostly messenger leaving. More or less frowning, he whispered. Not good, if this guy goes back, he'll be in trouble later. Little Dream also worriedly said, What then? I'm now the equivalent of illegally staying in the Yang world for the Hellmouth, right? Qin Feng takes a deep breath and says, Don't be afraid, with me here, even if the King of Hell comes, he won't be able to take you away. Hearing this Xiao Mang looked at Qin Feng, an unspeakable feeling surging through her heart. Turning his head to look at the other people in the courtyard, Qin Feng didn't care about them and turned around to leave with Little Dream. Now he regrets, why did he come to watch the fun? Now it's over, isn't it? After returning to the rental house, Qin Feng was apprehensive in his heart and said after a long time, That. Why don't you don't go home, just stay at my house. Xiao Meng was stunned and said with a red face, Is it, so fast? Ah? Uh, Qin Feng scratched his head before saying, I mean I'm not too sure about you going home, what if the Ghostbusters are looking for you? It's more or less safer for you to follow me around. Xiao Meng then reacted, nodded with a smile and said, It's okay. So she followed Qin Feng into the house he rented, and as soon as she entered, the house was cool. The female ghost was staying bored, and in this house, it really became an air conditioner. After contact, Qin Feng knew that this female ghost was called Xiaoyu, also a student in the school, a sophomore. Asked how it died, it did not know. It only knows that it is a tragic death, the kind that the hell will not accept. It doesn't know exactly how it died and how tragic it was. This is also the reason why it is a tragic death, but is not a malicious ghost. After all, do not know how they died, confused and died, do not know the reason, where to come from the grievances? But this is also suffocating enough, death do not know how to die, you say angry not. The female ghost at night is in the house to find a random place to stay, Xin Feng is his own hit the ground, let Xiao Meng sleep on the bed. One night, no story happened. The next day, Monday, the two went to school together. This surprised a lot of people, when did the school flower Su Meng get so close to boys? At once Qin Feng attracted the envious and jealous gazes of many boys, to know that Su Meng is the school flower, she has never seen her get close to any boy. This time, she actually went to school with a guy? Qin Feng didn't care about everyone's gazes, only when he walked under the school building, he frowned. Ahead, Li Shan Shan stood there looking at Qin Feng. Li Shan Shan looked haggard and her eyes were red and swollen, obviously having cried for a long time. However, at this, Qin Feng did not sympathize at all. He had never harmed this woman, and had even been very loving to her at one point, going so far as to get her out of danger even if he was beaten and stabbed himself. But what? In exchange, it was this woman's snobbery towards reality. Also, consciously or unconsciously, her Qin Feng. She, long ago, was no longer in Qin Feng's heart. Qin Feng. Li Shan Shan walked up and shouted Qin Feng with a trembling voice. Qin Feng averted his gaze and spoke faintly, what else do you have to say? Li Shan Shan bit her lip and said, I was confused for a moment, I've long since come to my senses, it's me who didn't know better before, I was wrong, can you give me another chance? Sorry. Qin Feng said indifferently, then walked around Li Shan Shan and headed towards the teaching building. However, just at this moment, suddenly the Li Shan Shan clenched her teeth, clenched her fists, and said in a somewhat frantic manner, Qin Feng, you, don't force me, I really like you, don't force me, otherwise you will regret it. Qin Feng's eyes narrowed and he continued to leave without looking back. Li Shan Shan's eyes flashed with a ferocious light, and suddenly her body straightened violently and collapsed stiffly on the ground. Ah, dead. Chapter 24 himself is not a good person. The commotion here attracted the attention of the surrounding students, and soon everyone gathered around. Li Shan Shan had fallen to the ground at the moment, motionless. Qin Feng and Xiao Meng were stunned when they came over. What's going on here? What's going on here? A person, just died? After looking at the ice Qin Feng found that things are really not so simple, because Li Shan Shan just died, but her skin is still rapidly turning black, in the blink of an eye just alive, now not only dead, the body is black, with poisoning or moldy like. This made the surrounding students were shocked, but also the people from the medical office quickly came over, after seeing the corpse they all froze. Although they were doctors, they had never seen this kind of situation. Immediately, a young doctor squatted down to check the body. At this time, Qin Feng frowned and said, don't touch the corpse. The young trainee doctor froze, looked at Qin Feng, and then saw Xiao Meng next to him, his eyes lit up, so he said to Qin Feng, Are you a doctor or am I a doctor? I'm an officer and I need you to teach me? This guy was obviously pretending on purpose because there was a schoolgirl next to him. Qin Feng spoke, Where's old DR? Qian from the infirmary? If he was there, he definitely wouldn't have touched the corpse. Old DR. 
Qian of the infirmary is a very famous presence in the school because he is highly skilled in both Chinese and Western medicine. Basically, if anyone in the school had a disease, DR, Qian would basically take care of it unless he had to operate. Qin Feng also knew something about DR. Qian, especially admiring his Chinese medicine, so Qin Feng was sure that DR, Qian would definitely not touch the corpse when he came. Because at the moment, under the skin of Li Shan Shan's corpse, there is a faint layer of black qi. Chinese medicine can look at qi, and a powerful Chinese medicine practitioner can not only know a person's physical condition through looking and sniffing, can also know the person's body some of the wrong places or faults, and can even see good luck or bad luck. This is more or less in face a little relationship, face color can reflect a person's physical condition. At the moment, this Li Shan Chan died in a strange way, the body is dark, there is black gas under the skin, not ordinary people can find. That's why Qin Feng stopped this intern doctor from touching the body, worrying that something might happen. The intern male doctor frowned and got up and said, You're still on it, huh? If you're capable, come and check it out? Some of the surrounding boys followed suit. That's right, who is this guy? He's a doctor examining a corpse, but he's also pretending to be a pussy, is that interesting? Don't you see Sue School Flower beside him? This guy must want to pretend to show himself, that's why he came out to fool around. The whole thing seems as if he's more professional than other doctors. Some boys sneered. Listening to the surrounding discussion, Qin Feng frowns slightly, then reaches out and pulls Su Meng's hand, saying, Since he's going to touch the corpse to his death, let's just stand far away and watch. If what he said surprised some people, then him holding Su Meng's hand shocked everyone. The fact that Su Meng didn't resist stunned everyone even more. What is this situation? When did Su Meng get so close to a guy? Everyone couldn't believe their eyes, and at the same time, many of the male's hearts were so jealous and envious. Especially that intern doctor, he had pretended to be in front of the goddess for half a day, and your girl is directly holding the goddess's hand? After glaring at Qin Feng, that intern doctor favored to touch the corpse because he was not convinced in his heart. Only he still wore gloves. Some of the people around also backed up some distance because they were worried. There were only a dozen men and women and two female doctors in training who were deathly close to watch. After seeing that male doctor's hand touch Li Shan Shan's body, he was relieved to see that there was no reaction. Then he turned his head to Qin Feng and said, Kid, I touched the body and it's fine, so do you still want to keep up the pretentious nonsense? A female intern doctor also said, That's right, if the corpse can't be touched, what's the point of studying medicine? A few boys who were close by spoke up, This kid is just showing his presence, don't pay any attention to him. That's right, school flower Sue, don't get too close to this kind of person, this kind of person's brain isn't very good. Another male also opened his mouth. The surrounding people all looked at Qin Feng mockingly, originally many boys were not happy with Qin Feng because he was pulling this on their goddess, now that they had a chance to hit him, naturally they were all nonchalant. However, Qin Feng had a weird smile on his face, because he saw that the skin location where the intern male doctor touched the corpse was leaking the black breath inside. All along, Qin Feng felt that he wasn't a bad person, but his own damn self was definitely not that kind of rotten good guy either. Having had a reminder, not taking it seriously, and even mocking himself, then now, Qin Feng was waiting for a good show. Just after seeing the black chi leaking out from Li Shan Shan's skin, it began to spread, quickly wrapping up the dozen or so guys who leaned closest and didn't listen to Qin Feng's advice. The black chi was so faint that it was hard to even notice. Although he didn't know why Li Shan Shan had suddenly died and had black chi on her body, Qin Feng knew that this thing should never be tainted. The intern male doctor looked at Xiao Meng at the moment and said, Big schoolgirl Su, this kind of guy who looks like a fool really needs to stay away, otherwise. Suddenly, his face changed slightly. Xin Feng smiled, otherwise what? The intern male doctor couldn't speak his face gradually turned black, and then he fell headfirst to the ground. At the same time, the dozen or so men and women who were closest to him also turned black and fell to the ground together. This scene scared everyone around, how could a piece of people fall down? Many people were secretly glad that they had cowardly backed off, otherwise they would have been the ones to fall. At the same time they all looked at Qin Feng, this time, no one dared to taunt him anymore. Xiao Meng was also surprised, what's going on? It seems like they were surrounded by black color and then they all fainted? Xiao Meng almost died once, relying on Qin Feng's mouthful of zombie air to keep her soul from dispersing, so she was also able to see things that normal people couldn't see. In response to her doubts, Qin Feng shook his head. Forget it, it's none of our business, let's go. Qin Feng leaves with Xiao Meng, while what happened here quickly attracts the school leaders, for a while, the ambulance police quickly arrive. At the same time the school old Dr. Qin also came, there he is, the hospital came to the doctors or first listened to what he said. Who knows that the old Dr. Qin took a look at the scene and was shocked. This. These kids are being charged by the bogia, everyone don't touch them, it's useless to send them to the hospital, all put on protective clothing, carry them to the infirmary. About an hour later, old Dr. Qian came to the class to find Qin Feng through the students at the scene. Classmate, 
You reminded them before that they weren't allowed to touch the corpse, but what did you see? Qin Feng said, I know a little bit about Chinese medicine Qi looking, I can see a little bit of the way, and I unintentionally reminded them. He was a zombie, or the lowest level zombie at the moment, and had to keep a low profile. Old DR. Chen nodded at his words, and that was when a few men in black suits and sunglasses also walked up to Qin Feng. At the same time a woman in a white shirt coolly stepped forward and said, You are Qin Feng? Please come with us. Qin Feng frowned, Who are you people? You don't have the right to know, but you must cooperate with us fully or suffer the consequences. Chapter 25, Qin Feng Dislikes the Strange Man's Mansion. Qin Feng didn't know who these few sunglasses men and this cool woman who suddenly appeared were, but apparently they did seem to have the privilege of taking people away. So after hesitating for a while, Qin Feng felt that it would be better to cooperate on this kind of occasion so as not to cause unnecessary trouble and repercussions. So he followed them out. After following a few sunglasses men into the car, the car arrived in front of a small independent five-story building. After leading Qin Feng into a closed room of the small building, the woman signaled him to sit down. Qin Feng looked around and said with a frown, What do you mean? Interrogating me like an interrogation room? But first you have to prove your identity, right? The woman said coldly as she sat down, We are an officially licensed being, it's not convenient to disclose it to you. I can only tell you that you have now entered the most mysterious place in the city, where you will have no secrets, so answer honestly whatever I ask you. Xin Feng skimmed his lips and said, You ask. Okay, first question, what are you? The woman looked at Qin Feng. Qin Feng froze, should I tell you that I'm not a human but a zombie? So he thought about it and said, ordinary person. Heh, ordinary people get stabbed twice for a few days? Ordinary people can be surrounded by more than a dozen iron bars and hit without reaction? An ordinary person can take one look at a gambling stone? The woman stared at Qin Feng dead on as she continued, you say you're an ordinary person, so may I ask, how would an ordinary person know that the body of the suddenly deadly Shan Shan can't be touched? All these questions slammed over, causing Qin Feng to freeze and tense up in his heart. Damn these things the other party is so clear? Then the secret of being a zombie. No, Qin Feng thought about it, the woman said all these things although they were all on Qin Feng, but not all. For example, Qin Feng bringing back a ghost, fighting with the exorcist Wei family, dealing with ghosts at Zier's house. Even last night, dealing with the old ghost and fighting the ghostbusters and all these things, she didn't mention them, she should have been unaware of them, otherwise it would have been impossible for her not to mention them. In other words, they had only discovered Qin Feng's unusualness but were basically unaware of the paranormal things Qin Feng had experienced. Thinking of this Qin Feng sighed in relief and said, Don't you guys know everything? Why are you still asking me? Who knows that the woman slapped the table and said angrily, I'm not chatting with you, I'm asking you, you must answer. Qin Feng's eyes narrowed, answer? Saying he's a zombie? Stop it, is it possible? So Qin Feng also got angry, I'm not chatting with you either, and you don't look so superior to me. There are some things that I don't want to say, no one can make me say them. This place, if I want to leave, no one can stop me. These words were said in a domineering manner, but it made that woman angry, frowning and scolding. Xin Feng, it seems like you really don't know what exists here, I'll tell you, this is the South Central City Odd Man's House, it doesn't belong to the official but officially licensed to exist. Those who can work here are all extraordinary existences, everyone is not an ordinary person, the investigations are not normal people or things, so you'd better cooperate a bit or you'll never want to go out. Xin Feng sneered, so? Odd Man's Mansion, is it very powerful? These words left the woman speechless, she had just said herself that none of the people in the house of strange people were normal, surely they were all very powerful? But then she heard Qin Feng added, unfortunately, in my opinion, you, including the few sunglasses men from before, are at most a little more powerful than ordinary people, and are not enough to look at in front of me. So I'm going to go, not to mention your bullshit Chirinfu, is the netherworld, cannot be trapped lousy. As the words fell, Qin Feng stood up in a flash and walked towards the door. The door was closed, he didn't care at all, he slapped his palm on the door, the special door snapped down, then Qin Feng calmly walked out. At this time outside the door a few sunglasses men quickly came up to stop Qin Feng, one by one, punches and kicks, attack power is indeed good, but there is no use. Only to see Qin Feng casually resisted two times, then easily knocked down a few men. They are different from normal people, but after all, they are human beings, not ghosts, monsters, zombies or Taoist exorcists, in front of Qin Feng has no power to fight back. The woman came out and saw this scene and froze, this is a strange man's mansion, over the past few years, who has haunted the strange man's mansion. Qin Feng not only made a mess, but also like into no man's land, all the way out calmly. On the way, he met some capable fighters, none of whom could stop him. Finally at the gate, an old man quickly appeared, pinch hand decision to play a light seal flying out, but the next moment was Qin Feng a palm shot dissipated. Then he looked at the old man and said, it seems that this so-called odd man's house isn't all a bunch of self-centered trash, 
there's still a real odd man who can hold his own. These words caused the faces of the crowd of people from the House of Wonders to blush in embarrassment, especially the girl who came out. She didn't expect Qin Feng to be so powerful. At that moment, he heard that old man laugh and say, little friend is joking, compared to little friend's strength, old man me is nothing. The people of the Qirin mansion were dumbfounded at these words, this old man was one of the more powerful existences in the Qirin mansion, he actually said that he was not as powerful as Qin Feng, how powerful would Qin Feng have to be? In that case get out of my way, Qin Feng said. The old man was helpless, but little friend, the existence of the odd man's mansion is to investigate some strange people or, did I break the law? On what grounds is it investigating me? Qin Feng said in a cold voice. At this time the woman spoke, this is our duty, have you broken the law through your special power that requires us to investigate? Shut up! Qin Feng suddenly shouted and looked at the woman and said, investigate? You people present dare to investigate others with such little ability? If you meet someone who is more powerful, people would have no trouble exterminating your odd man's mansion. The people from the strange man's mansion were deeply struck, especially that woman, at this moment, she no longer had her condescension, all she had was a confused look on her face. Qin Feng didn't bother to say anymore, slowly walking out of the door of the odd man's mansion, and as he exited the doorway, he finally said faintly, Odd Man Mansion, is a joke composed of a bunch of self-righteous people. After saying that he left, no one stopped him and no one could stop him. Qin Feng returned to the school after leaving the strange man's mansion. At this time, Xiao Meng was looking for him and after seeing Qin Feng hurriedly asked, I heard that you were taken away, are you alright? Qin Feng smiled and said, it's fine, a stupid special force just wanted to investigate me, I was scolded and came back. Xiao Meng, eh, well, the two were chatting, when suddenly old Dr. Qian came over and said to Qin Feng, this student, you were able to tell earlier that corpses can't be touched, do you know if there's any way to save children who have touched corpses? Qin Feng said, sorry, I don't know. Those guys themselves didn't listen to advice and wanted to die, so Qin Feng didn't care about them. However, Qin Feng was still curious about Li Shan Chan's sudden death, so he said, but I can go and take a look. Chapter 26, It's getting cold now, isn't it? Out of curiosity, Qin Feng went to the school nurse's office with Xiao Meng. At the moment, there were a few doctors from the city hospital and some police officers in the school doctor's room. The dozen or so students who had fainted and the three doctors from the school doctor's office were also lying on the hospital beds inside. Including Li Shan Chan's body were also placed in a separate piece of room, not pulled away. This is because things are not investigated clearly, not only the cause of death of Li Shan Chan, but also a dozen or so inexplicable fainted and could not wake up. Chen old doctor in South Central City medical skills can be said to be second to none but also the medical profession old-timer. Just because of some reasons, do not want to go to the hospital, otherwise when a dean is not too much. However, the city hospital is now the director of the old Dr. Chen students, see the old Dr. Chen seniority. This was also the reason why everyone listened to his advice and put both the corpse and the fainted student in his place. When Qin Feng arrived, he heard a 30-year-old male doctor frown and whisper to the doctor beside him. Elder Qian said he went to hire someone, and he hired such a guy? This kid looks 18 or 19 years old. What use can he be if he comes? That's right, this guy is just a student, we have so many doctors who can't do anything about these fainted people, what's the use of this guy coming? At this time, a good-looking female doctor spoke up, Elder Chin must have a reason for inviting him here, let's just watch. This female doctor was very young and pretty, as soon as she opened her mouth, the few male doctors stopped talking, one by one, they salivated and looked at the female doctor. In the room, Chin Feng came and looked at the unconscious guys lying on the hospital beds. These guys were just rushed by the baneful chi into their bodies, and they would definitely die after a long time. As long as the baneful chi in their bodies was forced out, they would be fine. Can I take a look at Li Shan Chan's corpse? Qin Feng spoke. Elder Qian hesitated at his words, and at this time, a male doctor show of presence opened his mouth and said, Kid, Li Shan Chan's corpse has something like a virus or poisonous gas in it, it's dangerous to even get close in a protective suit, and you still want to go and look at it, don't you want to live? A male doctor next to him also spoke, that's right, these fainted ones here haven't been solved yet, what's the use of looking at the corpse? Qin Feng ignored them and looked at old Dr. Qian. Old Dr. Qian always felt that Qin Feng wasn't an ordinary person, otherwise how could he be so young that he could tell at a glance that a corpse couldn't be touched? Fine, go ahead and look, protective suit on. Old Qian said. Qin Feng smiled, without wearing the protective suit, he directly went into the inner room and pushed the door. This startled the people present. They didn't quite dare to go in wearing protective suits, this one went in without wearing it? It's over, it's over, why is this bastard pretending to be ah, it's cool now. The male doctor who spoke earlier gloated. The one beside him also opened his mouth, this guy doesn't t know the heavens and the earth. Hey wait, how does he seem to be fine ah? 
Through the glass door, Qin Feng inside was seen to be fine, and moved closer to look at the body carefully. This made everyone surprised, Chen Lao was even more relieved, this Qin Feng kid, it seems that he is not an ordinary person. At that the male doctor spoke disdainfully, old Chen, what can he be not ordinary? Elder Chen didn't say anything. In the inner room, although the air conditioner was turned on to preserve the corpse, the Yin Qi inside was actually enough to ensure that the corpse did not decay. And in Qin Feng's opinion, it was not a good thing for the corpse not to decay. It was because this corpse, the demonic Qi was too heavy. At the moment, the corpse, which was put up in an isolated plastic bag, was still pitch black. However, it could be seen that Li Shanshan's expression was one of hatred, with a hint of pain. That was her appearance before she died. Alas! Qin Feng sighed, although Li Shanshan had disappointed him, but after all, she had once loved. Why on earth did you die? Qin Feng looked carefully, this bizarre way of death, not quite like suicide ah. After looking carefully for a while, he realized that there were hardly any injuries on Li Shanshan's body. But immediately after, he realized that Li Shanshan's right hand was actually held tightly. With a frown, through the isolated plastic bag, Qin Feng forcefully broke Li Shanshan's hand. At first, he didn't break it, but his zombie's strength was no joke, and with more force, he broke it. Taking a closer look, in the palm of Li Shanshan's right hand, she was holding a black talisman paper. This surprised Qin Feng and at the same time, he also probably understood the cause of her death, including the fury on her body, it should all be because of this black talisman. Where did this talisman come from? Why could it kill someone? It could also make a corpse emit such a terrifying corpse chi? Qin Feng frowned and thought for a long time without figuring it out. So he pulled open the isolation plastic bag and took the talisman out. He then went out of the house and showed the talisman in his hand to old man Qian. With just a glance, old Qian's face turned pale. Many old Chinese medicine practitioners, especially those from ancient times, more or less knew a little bit about some esoteric arts. And Chen Lao, as a very powerful old Chinese medicine practitioner, not only had research on facial qi, but also had an understanding of this piece of metaphysical art. So he took a look and knew that this black talisman was the root of the scourge. This. This thing. Chen Lao's shocked words could not be said. Qin Feng said, the corpse's hand, the cause of death and the black qi on the corpse are all caused by this thing. At the words of the surrounding several doctors were stunned, then the male doctor who spoke at the beginning angrily rebuked. Nonsense, a piece of black paper only, why you say so mysterious, simply ridiculous. The one next to him also spoke, Elder Qian, this kid is talking nonsense, let him out. The pretty female doctor also frowned, feeling that Qin Feng was being funny here, but didn't say anything. At this time, old man Qian spoke, Qin Feng is right, the cause of the deceased's death and the odd phenomenon on his body was caused by this talisman. How is this? Qian Lao, how can this be possible, what kind of society is this that still engages in this? The male doctor frowned. That's right, it's just a piece of broken paper, how is it possible? This kid is clearly talking nonsense here, this is a scientific society now. Several people in the room were disgruntled, to which Qin Feng didn't care and said to Elder Qian. I'll take this talisman back and study it, by the way, since these few people don't believe in this, it's just as well that they can be here at night to watch over these fainted people and the corpses inside. Old man Chen nodded and said, it's true that we need them to watch over here at night, but little friend Qin Feng, it won't happen, right? Qin Feng said with a wacky smile, it's fine, at most that corpse inside will come out and move around, it's nothing, this is a scientific society, there's nothing to be afraid of. Hearing a few doctors face are white, damn, mouth say do not believe, the heart of the goose then. After Qin Feng leaves, he says to Xiao Meng, I'll stay in the school dormitory at night. Xiao Meng is puzzled, why? Qin Feng smiles wryly, because, there's a good show in the school tonight, if you want to see it, you can also stay in the girls dormitory and just come out to see it at night. Chapter 27, The Real Hammer There's still some time before it gets dark, Qin Feng intentionally wants to stay because he knows that tonight, Li Shanshan's corpse will inevitably turn necrotic. He wanted to find out why exactly Li Shanshan would die, was that talisman something she got by accident, or did someone give it to her and purposely wanted her to die? Of course, Qin Feng felt that it was the latter, otherwise Li Shanshan wouldn't have died only after chatting with herself, which meant that she had a choice, and she knew how to use that talisman, otherwise she wouldn't have held it tightly in her hand. After Li Shanshan died, because of that talisman, the corpse was bound to turn. Moreover, it was with an incomparably powerful grudge against Qin Feng that she turned into a corpse. So no matter what, she would find Qin Feng's trouble, so Qin Feng might as well stay in the school and settle her himself. It was just that he was curious as to who actually gave her the talisman. This doubt, perhaps it would be answered tonight. On campus, strolling around with Xiao Meng, he attracted quite a few people's gazes. After a day's time, the matter of Qin Feng and school beauty Su Meng had already spread throughout the campus. However, many people were still skeptical or unable to accept the fact that the goddess was with Qin Feng. 
In the small park in the school, by a pool of water, where very few students come, Su Meng also purposely looks around, before she opens her mouth with a red face. That zombie chi of yours, isn't it time to give me some? Ah? Xin Feng froze, counting the days there is almost a week, the middle-aged man said at least once a week to give, in order to be safe a day or two in advance is also good. So Qin Feng said, then, come, said he was also a little embarrassed, then came close to the body, in the small dream blushing heartbeat accelerated under, kissed her, then blew a breath into her mouth, Xiao Ming swallowed. Then they separated, both of them were a bit embarrassed. However, this scene was still seen by some students from far away, some of the boys' hearts went cold, damn it's real. Xin Feng looked at Xiao Meng, sighed and said, going on like this isn't a solution, we must find the soul fixing pearl as soon as possible, but there's still no news at all. Little Dream is also somewhat helpless. This soul fixing pearl is something that is found in the spiritual circle, and ordinary people can't learn the slightest bit of news even after a lifetime of exhaustion. To find it, one has to find a way to know more people in the spiritual circle. Xin Feng said. However, as soon as he mentioned this, he remembered the exorcist Wei family, and his eyes couldn't help but become a few points more fierce. There was another problem at the moment, raising his strength. However, he didn't know how to raise his strength, except that the middle-aged man had said that he had to drink blood, otherwise he would be malnourished. Perhaps, drinking blood is also a way for strength enhancement, after all, it is a zombie. Thinking of this, he licked his lips, actually a little hungry. After suppressing the bloodthirsty urge in his heart, he looked at the sky, it was already dark. Good show, is about to start. Time passed by, soon to 11 o'clock at night, the school fell into silence. Infirmary. Elder Qian went to rest, leaving behind the three doctors that the hospital had sent over to assist. It was the two men and one woman. One man was around 30 years old and wore glasses. The other was in his 20s, tall and thin. As for the beautiful young female doctor, she looked to be 24 or 25 at most. Originally, staying on duty with such a beautiful woman was a good thing, much to be desired. Unfortunately, what Qin Feng said today made the two big men really feel a little scared in their hearts. He heard the man with the glasses say, Humph, that kid has a big mouth, he's full of nonsense, what era is this, I don't believe that the corpse inside can still come out. Originally the tall and thin man was quite afraid, but aside from the goddess in it, cannot be abashed, so said. That guy is a pretender, don't mind him. Dr. Lu, what do you say? Saying that, he looked at the female doctor. The female doctor still looked like she didn't like to talk, and spoke faintly, just take good care of these students. Seeing this, the man with glasses also spoke, by the way dr. Lu, are you single? At that the tall and thin man also desperately wanted to know, but the beautiful doctor didn't open her mouth. However, just as they were chatting, the room inside the ward where the bodies were kept, the isolation tape containing Li Shan Chan's body was slowly scratched by a long fingernail. Then, the corpse inside slowly sat up. At this moment, Li Shan Chan was covered in pitch black, including black gas coming out of her eyes, all of her hands had long nails growing out of them, and there was a mouthful of sharp teeth in her mouth, which was very scary. Its body bounced and stood up straight, then slowly moved to look at the house. Then its body floated and landed on the ground. At this moment, in the outermost room, the two male doctors were accosting the female doctor one by one, but the female doctor was ignoring them. Just as the glasses man opened his mouth and asked the female doctor if she wanted a late night snack, the female doctor suddenly frowned and said, Quiet. I heard a sound inside. The direction she looked in was the house where the corpses were kept. The rooms next to it all held students who hadn't woken up yet. The two male doctors were stunned at her words, then the tall and thin man said, No, dear. Lou, you're joking with us. The female doctor didn't say anything and listened carefully. Snapping. 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 Vaguely, the two male doctors also heard the sound that seemed to be beating. At that moment, their faces went white. The glasses man swallowed his saliva and said, No, it can't be. The tall thin man even stood up directly, with a look of being ready to run away at any time. The beautiful doctor also nervously took a deep breath, then slowly got up. And just as soon as she got up, the door of that ward suddenly shattered, followed by a figure flying out directly to land at the entrance of the infirmary. When the three of them took a look, their legs went soft. Because this figure is Li Shan Chan's corpse, at this moment this corpse is standing straight up, a pair of dark eyes staring at the three people in death. Ma ma, ghost ah. The tall thin man exclaimed in shock and wanted to run, only to find that the exit was blocked by the corpse, and then his legs went limp and sat on the ground. Glasses man is directly backward ready to run to a ward, he just moved, the female corpse body jumped and chased up, claws a wave of the glasses man knocked flying hit the wall. After landing on the ground, the glasses man could barely move. The female corpse then looked at the female doctor, then jumped and rushed over. The female doctor's face was pale and kept retreating, 
but it was still too late, and was clawed in the chest by the female corpse, also flew out backwards, a mouthful of blood sprayed out. After landing on the ground, the female doctor also despaired. See the female corpse jumped over step by step, then slowly bent down, opened his mouth to reveal a mouthful of sharp teeth on the neck of the female doctor bit down. Just at this time, suddenly a figure appeared behind the female corpse, a foot kicked the female corpse flying out. Then, the female doctor took a look and it was none other than Qin Feng. Qin Feng squatted down and looked at the female doctor and said, Are you alright? The female doctor couldn't even speak her weak words, but her eyes stared at Qin Feng as if she saw hope and despair. However, Qin Feng couldn't help but gulp as he looked at the blood at the corner of the female doctor's mouth. Chapter 28, I'm sorry. It's been a week since he turned into a zombie, and Qin Feng is getting more and more eager for fresh blood. However, it was ultimately hard for him to accept the fact that he had to drink blood, so he had always tried to suppress his bloodthirsty urges. Now, however, he still couldn't help it somewhat. Looking at the blood at the corner of the female doctor's mouth, Qin Feng smacked his lips and suddenly, somewhat unable to control himself in general, brought his head over and kissed the corner of the female doctor's mouth. Then quickly sucked the blood from the corner of the female doctor's mouth. The moment the blood entered his mouth, Qin Feng seemed to have tasted the most delicious thing. However, the female doctor was dumbfounded, her pale face instantly reddening. She really couldn't figure out how this guy could kiss himself so inexplicably in this situation. Not far away, the spectacled man who couldn't get up after falling down had his heart broken at the sight. Beast. The tall and thin man with weak legs also gritted his teeth. Beast. Qin Feng suddenly came to his senses after sucking the blood from the corner of the female doctor's mouth clean, then hurriedly backed away and looked at the female doctor and said, Yes. Sorry. The female doctor's face turned even redder. Just then, the female corpse stood up from the ground and looked at Qin Feng, at once, the black eyes of resentment in the eyes even more, at the same time, opened his mouth and sprayed out a mouthful of black fury. Roar. Just then, he heard the female corpse roar, ferociously pouncing at Qin Feng. Qin Feng's eyes glared, sure enough, this female corpse has a deep grudge against him, otherwise how else would it suddenly become even more violent when it saw Qin Feng? However, Qin Feng wasn't afraid, having just eaten a bit of blood, he felt full of strength. He stepped forward and clenched his fist at the female corpse. The female corpse similarly swung her claws to shoot over, fist and claws met together after the snap of a sound, the corpse gas and the fury gas outbreak shocked Qin Feng and the female corpse backward together. After stabilizing his body, Qin Feng was surprised, he didn't expect this Li Shan Shan to be so powerful after her transformation. Outside the door, Su Meng who had just come over saw this and said, Qin Feng, be careful. Qin Feng nodded his head and turned away from clenching his fist again, a faint black corpse chi coalesced, then he quickly rushed out. Li Shan Shan roared, black necrotic chi erupted from her body, a pair of claws swung at the same time, grabbing at Qin Feng. After blocking one claw with his fist, Qin Feng hurriedly twisted to avoid the other claw and at the same time lifted his foot to kick Li Shan Shan in the chest. While kicking Li Shan Shan out, Qin Feng once again chased after him, grabbed both of Li Shan Shan's arms, crossed them and pressed it to the ground. After being pressed down, Li Shan Shan continuously struggled, however, Qin Feng's strength was too great, and even though the corpse on the ground was very powerful, Li Shan Shan was still unable to struggle away. Looking at Li Shan Shan on the ground, Qin Feng didn't know what to do to make it quiet down. Just as he was thinking, Li Shan Shan suddenly kicked at Qin Feng with her foot, in order to avoid it, Qin Feng could only let go. Then Li Shan Shan hurriedly got up from the ground and continued to attack Qin Feng. Qin Feng gritted his teeth and was ruthless in his heart, blocking Li Shan Shan's attack and then smashed his fist on Li Shan Shan's chest. With a bang, Li Shan Shan's body retreated, while the black demonic chi on its body dispersed a bit from this punch. Seeing this Qin Feng's eyes lit up, thinking that as long as this disperses all the baneful chi on its body, wouldn't it be good? So he quickly rushed forward, not waiting for Li Shan Shan to react his fist ruthlessly smashed on Li Shan Shan's stomach a few times. Every time his fist hit, a little bit of the baneful chi would dissipate from Li Shan Shan's body. And as Qin Feng attacked for a while, the baneful chi on its body became less and less, and in the end, Li Shan Shan directly did not even have the ability to attack. Seeing this, Qin Feng once again clenched his fist, a black corpse chi coalesced, and then he shouted and smashed his fist on Li Shan Shan's stomach. Bang! Li Shan Shan's body didn't fly backwards this time but its limbs opened violently, then a stream of baneful chi erupted from its mouth. Then the black gas in its eyes disappeared, the baneful gas on its body dissipated, and its skin gradually turned into a normal color, and finally collapsed on the ground at once, completely becoming a corpse. At this point, the two male doctors were already stunned, and the female doctor was also dumbfounded. Outside the door Xiao Meng sighed in relief and said excitedly, Xin Feng, is it solved? Xin Feng looked at Li Shan Shan's corpse on the ground and thought that it should be solved. Anyway, in his opinion, the bane was gone. However, he stepped forward, reached out and grabbed on the forehead of Li Shan Shan's corpse, and then yanked. 
A soul was immediately ripped out, and it was none other than Li Shanchan's soul. It glanced at Qin Feng in panic, a look of bewilderment coupled with fear. Qin Feng looked indifferent, looked at the two male doctors on the ground and said, carry the body back. With that, he turned around and left the infirmary with Li Shanchan's soul. Xiao Meng followed Qin Feng all the way to the edge of the water pool in the small park. Qin Feng let go of Li Shanchan's soul and spoke faintly, how did you become like this? Li Shanchan's soul lowered its head and said, I, I'm sorry. I'm asking you why did you become like this? Qin Feng roared. After all, they had once loved each other, but watching her die bizarrely in front of herself and turn necrotic, even if they were hard-hearted, they could not help but feel some grief. I don't want to break up with you, I know I'm wrong, but you don't give me a chance, I hate you. Li Shan Chan did not dare to look at Qin Feng. Qin Feng took a deep breath and said, the talisman on your hand, what's going on? Li Shan Chan said, Wang Yunfei gave it to me, he looked for me on the weekend and asked me if I hated you, if I hated you, I would pinch this talisman hard at you, he said that this way, I could get back at you. The price of getting back at me is your own death? Qin Feng frowned. Li Shanchan shook her head and said, I didn't know I would die. I didn't know. It seemed that Li Shanchan was also tricked by Wang Yunfei, who used this talisman to trick Li Shanchan into dying in front of Qin Feng. And after death, Li Shanchan's corpse turns because of the talisman, it will take revenge on the most hated Qin Feng. This is also the reason why she went crazy when she just saw Qin Feng. Indeed, it was a good calculation, but unfortunately Wang Yunfei only knew that Qin Feng could fight, but did not know that he was a zombie. And Qin Feng also did not expect, this Wang Yunfei actually can take out this kind of weird talisman, it seems that around this guy, there are high people to help him. Thinking of this, Qin Feng has decided to go find Wang Yunfei's trouble. At the same time, he looked at Li Shanchan and said, So now, do you still hate me? I, I hate Wang Yunfei. Li Shanchan said viciously, This is all caused by Wang Yunfei. At the beginning he even lied to himself that he liked himself, now Li Shanchan understood that at the beginning she was too good at lying. If she hadn't easily trusted Wang Yunfei in the beginning, there wouldn't have been a breakup of her relationship with Qin Feng, and there wouldn't have been the current tragedy. Qin Feng was already too lazy to say anything more, since you hate it, take me to him. Li Shanchan nodded, then floated off into the distance. Qin Feng quickly followed with little dream. Half an hour later, in the small villa that Wang Yunfei had specially bought near the school, he had just finished speaking when he heard a voice faintly ring out. Destroy me? I'm afraid that's not realistic. Chapter 29, What Happened? Hearing that sudden voice, Wang Yunfei was really startled. He sat up violently from his bed and shouted, Who is it? Then he saw outside the window, Qin Feng leaping in. The schoolmate on the bed was scared to the point of screaming. Wang Yunfei's face instantly became embarrassed when he saw Qin Feng, How did you? You get here. Qin Feng spoke faintly, Surprised? Are you a little disappointed to see that I'm fine? Wang Yunfei looked like he had thought of something and said in shock, How is it possible? You're fine? What could be wrong with me? On the contrary, it's you who got Li Shanchan killed and wanted to use her to get me killed, what a good intention. Qin Feng said coldly and added, isn't it curious why Li Shanchan didn't get me killed? Just as he finished speaking, outside the window, Li Shanchan's ghost floated in, a pair of black eyes staring at Wang Yunfei in death. Wang Yunfei's face turned pale, you, ghost, ghost ah. The schoolgirl on the side was even more directly stunned. Ghost? A person like you, would you also be afraid of ghosts? Why didn't you think that the other person would turn into a ghost and haunt you when you harmed someone's life? Qin Feng angrily rebuked. Li Shanchan even floated towards Wang Yunfei while speaking quietly. Wang Yunfei, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have become what I am now, I'm going to kill you. Wang Yunfei was so scared that he hurriedly got out of bed and backed away, while saying to Qin Feng, Qin Feng, you let it not come over, I don't want to die. Didn't you want to get close to her in the first place? Now, as you wish ah, you're afraid again? Qin Feng said coldly. Wang Yunfei hurriedly said, no, I swear, I didn't touch her, I didn't even hold Li Shanchan's hand, I, he still had to explain, but Qin Feng did not give a damn about it, and Li Shanchan had already drifted over it this time, just when Wang Yunfei was in despair, Qin Feng spoke again, tell me if you don't want to die, who gave you the talisman, Wang Yunfei was on the verge of collapse at the moment, when he heard this, he hurriedly said, it's the person my father hired, it's my father's friend, take me to him, no matter what, this person is not a good thing, not to mention that he also helped Wang Yunfei to get Li Shanchan killed trying to harm Qin Feng, Qin Feng has to find him even more trouble. Wang Yunfei at this moment in order to save his life, immediately agreed and said, good, I will take you to him, he is in my home. So, Li Shanchan backed up and waited for Wang Yunfei to shiver and put on his clothes, then immediately went downstairs and drove. Downstairs, Xiao Mang was waiting, so she sat in the back seat with Qin Feng and the female ghost, then Wang Yunfei drove to the Wang family grand villa. 
Wang Family Villa in the suburbs is a detached villa has its own large yard, can be described as very luxurious. After arriving at the Wang Family, Wang Yunfei hurriedly got off the car and rushed toward the villa hall. While running this goods also shouted, Dad, Dad, help ah. His commotion quickly woke up everyone in the villa. So a dozen or so figures came out, and one of them, a middle-aged man in his forties wearing pajamas, said, What are you doing panicking in the middle of the night? Dad. Chin Fong has brought that female ghost here to trouble us. Chin Fong? Female ghost? Saying that, he looked towards the doorway, where Chin Fong was slowly walking out with the female ghostly Shan Shan floating beside him. Seeing this scene, many people in the Wang family were shocked, after all, that was a ghost. It was Wang Yunfei's dad who also had his body shaken, then he said. Didn't Mr. Lu say that this woman would kill that brat when she died? How come it came here together instead? Wang Yunfei was also confused and shook his head, but at this moment he had already reacted and said to an underling. Hurry please go wake up Mr. Lu, hurry. After telling the underling to go, he let go of his heart and then said to Qin Feng with a cold smile. Kid, if you dare to break into my Wang family today, you won't want to go back alive. At the same time, his father also spoke, Qin Feng right, I heard that you pitted my son for tens of millions of dollars in gambling stones, this account, it's time to settle it. Qin Feng's face was gloomy, and in his heart, he no longer had the slightest good feelings towards the Wang family. Wang Yunfei had almost killed him back then, he had only beaten Wang Yunfei up and pitted him for tens of millions. But this guy wanted to kill Qin Feng even though he had harmed Li Shan Shan for the sake of tens of millions of dollars completely wiping out the only mercy left within Qin Feng's heart. Seeing Qin Feng sneering, he slowly stepped forward and said, Today, let your Wang family pay the price for what they have done. Just as he finished speaking, he saw a figure slowly walk out from inside the Wang family villa, while a voice faintly said, Young man's breath isn't small, but with me here, I'm curious to know how you're going to make the Wang family pay. When the crowd looked, they saw that the figure was a young man around 30 years old, the man was dressed in grey pajamas and had obviously just gotten up as well. His narrowed eyes revealed a hint of disdain for Qin Feng. And seeing this person come out, Wang Yunfei was completely relieved. This was a high-ranking person invited by his own father, surnamed Lu, everyone called him Mr. Lu. Wang Yunfei killed Li Shan Shan, wanted to borrow Li Shan Shan's hand to kill Qin Feng's idea and method including the black talisman, are all given by this guy. Qin Feng's eyes stared at this Mr. Lu, indeed from this guy's body, he saw a hint of a faint gray aura fluctuating. Obviously, not an ordinary person. Are you the so-called high person of the Wang family, harming people with evil techniques, despicable means, in vain all of you? Qin Feng spoke indifferently. Mr. Lu sneered, what kind of a thing are you? Also qualified to lecture me? That's right, Qin Feng, don't fool around, in front of Mr. Lu, you're bound to die today, it's better to think about how to beg for forgiveness so that we'll leave you a dog's life. Wang Yunfei was once again rampant. At the same time there was a man from the Wang family who spoke, this guy is still mad at the end of his life, he really doesn't know how to live, he doesn't ask around, our Wang family, is it a good thing to mess with? Mr. Lu's spells are strong, he can control ghosts and souls, his methods are brilliant, surname Qin, if you meet Mr. Lu, you'd better kneel down and kowtow directly. A girl also opened her mouth. Hearing these compliments, Mr. Lu was pleased and nodded with satisfaction. And at the same time, Wang Yunfei looked at Xiao Meng beside Qin Feng and said with a hefty smile, isn't this the Su family's daughter? I was worried about how to get you, but today I actually sent myself to the door, this is really fate. Ha, huh, when Qin Feng is done, I'll put you to sleep, this way my Wang family will have the opportunity to cooperate with the Su family, it's really both wealth and color. Xiao Meng sniffs with an angry look on her face, at the same time Qin Feng also gets angry, slowly steps out and walks towards Wang Yunfei, at the same time faintly opens his mouth. Your mouth is annoying as always, it seems that you didn't fight enough last time. Seeing this, Mr. Lu took a step out to block in front of Wang Yunfei and said, There is me, you kid don't want to be rampant. Snap. This Mr. Lu's words just finished, Qin Feng quickly body flashed to the front of Wang Yunfei, a slap hard in his face. With a snap, all of the mouthful of false teeth this bastard had installed flew off, his entire face swelled into a pig's head once again, and he screamed miserably in his mouth. That Mr. Lu was confused. What's the situation? Who am I? Where am I? What happened? Chapter 30, Too Much Chaos. Mr. Lu was very confused, he had confidently stood in front of Wang Yunfei, sure that Qin Feng couldn't do anything about Wang Yunfei. But where did he expect Qin Feng to be so fast, a flash of lightning to bypass him and slap Wang Yunfei into a pig's head once again? This is not hitting Wang Yunfei ah, this is to hit his face ah, after all, so many people watching. At once, Mr. Lu became furious, twisting his head and shouting, asshole, didn't you hear what I said? However, Qin Feng still ignored him. A kick on the ground Wang Yunfei's body to Wang Yunfei kick smashed on the wall to fall, 
body bones snapped and broke a few, the pain of this good's face are distorted. This puts the Wang family are scared face pale, damn too ferocious. And Qin Feng continued to go forward, a grabbed Wang Yunfei's clothes, swung open the slap one by one fan in Wang Yunfei's face. He did not move full force, in that case a slap would have killed the goods, what he wanted was to humiliate Wang Yunfei. But this made Mr. Lu so angry that his face turned red with anger and he yelled, Damn it, are you listening to me or not? Let go of him for me. Qin Feng didn't give a damn about him and continued to whip Wang Yunfei, who felt that his face was no longer his own. He numbly opened his mouth, Don. T fight. Any more, Mr. Lu. Lu is called. What about you? At the words Qin Feng threw Wang Yunfei out with one hand, which indifferently turned his head to Mr. Lu, you call me? Piss me off, kid, how dare you ignore me, let's see how I'm going to torture you today. Mr. Lu was really furious, shouting, his hands clenched into fists, a gray aura coalesced on his fists and slammed over at Qin Feng. Qin Feng dodged to avoid it, but he couldn't dodge the other fist, so he could only use his fist against it. There was a bang, the gray aura exploded shocking Qin Feng backward, that Mr. Lu just closed his fist. However, he still looked at Qin Feng with surprise and said, I didn't expect that you really do have two skills, no wonder the necromorphic banshee didn't kill you. Qin Feng, on the other hand, was even more shocked in his heart, the power in this Mr. Lu's body wasn't baneful Qi, but it was almost, it should belong to evil Qi. Coupled with his means of harming people, Qin Feng judged that this guy practiced evil arts. And it's also very powerful, at least Qin Feng feels as if he's not a match. Through the hard hit just now, it was also because he had some advantage because he was a zombie body, otherwise he would have been in a bigger mess. Thinking of this, he couldn't help but be cautious and clenched his fist to initiate the attack. He was very fast, which made Mr. Lu had to be careful to deal with it, and also immediately rushed up to gather evil Qi to fight with Qin Feng. Between the fists and kicks, that Mr. Lu's face was a bit ugly. Because he found that Qin Feng's body is very resistant to beatings, every time fists and feet touch together, Qin Feng is if it does not hurt, but they're on pain. So Mr. Lu immediately decided that he would no longer fight in close combat, but instead fight. Just see his body stormed back after a strike, pulling away after hands pinching the odd hand decision, randomly pointing a finger at Qin Feng. Qin Feng's face changed, Mr. Lu's punches and kicks on him he can ignore, but with the evil Qi on him more or less some effect, hit or very difficult. So he hurriedly dodged away, looking back, the evil Qi landed on the door, directly pierced the door, comparable to the power of a bullet. This made the Wang family all look shocked, at the same time they all felt relieved again when they saw Qin Feng dodging in such a sorry state. Mr. Lu also kept nodding his hand decision, a path of evil Qi quickly rushed out at Qin Feng. Qin Feng quickly dodged, there was really something he couldn't dodge, he fist condensed corpse Qi to resist. When the fist smashed into the evil Qi, also immediately issued a pop, then the evil chi dissipated, fist as the corpse chi is also much less, need to re-cohesion. But the current Qin Feng is after all a black eye level, the corpse chi is already less and thin, simply not as thick as the evil chi in Mr. Lu's body. So after supporting it for a while, the corpse chi condensing in his fist slowed down a bit, while more evil chi flew at the same time. So it was too late to resist, snapping several evil chi strikes on Qin Feng's body. Qin Feng's body shook a few times before a hint of pain appeared on his face and his entire body froze. Seeing this that Mr. Lu was overjoyed, his hand quickly condensed a wave of evil chi, then he drank loudly and fiercely slapped out a palm. The sound of suffering, that a wave of evil chi quickly flew out to hit Qin Feng's chest, only to hear a bang, Qin Feng's body violently flew backward, and ruthlessly fell to the ground. Then, there was no movement. Qin Feng. Xiao Meng was shocked and hurriedly went forward and knelt on the ground to hold Qin Feng's upper body in his arms with a worried face. Qin Feng? What happened to you? Qin Feng? You wake up ah. Qin Feng closed his eyes, without the slightest movement, as if dead. Seeing this Mr. Lu immediately let out a loud laugh, very pleased with himself. The Wang family members were all completely relieved as well, and even more so, many of them directly kissed his ass, saying how awesome he was. Mr. Lu listening to these words simply want to fly up, floating. At this time a few Wang family members helped Wang Yunfei up. Wang Yunfei's body was seriously injured, but he still said viciously. Qin Feng, you're so crazy, you're still not dying in my family. With Mr. Lu's hand, regardless of whether he Qin Feng or Yi Feng or Mo Feng, they all have to die. A woman said patronizingly. It was Wang Yunfei's father who also said, Brother Lu's cultivation is getting stronger and stronger, he helped my Wang family this time, thank you so much. Mr. Lu smiled and said, No need to be so polite, I'm also that your family's money, for you to eliminate disasters ah. Everyone laughed, just to hear Wang Yunfei look at Xiao Meng and sneer. Su Di Qian. Jean, don't cry, you still. Honestly become my. Woman, haha. 
When these words came out, Mr. Lu frowned and said, You have become like this, and you still think about women? It's better to recuperate from your injuries at ease, I'll help you enjoy a beautiful woman of this stature. At these words Wang Yunfei's face turned white, Mr. Lu, Shang, she is my, you what you? You have to lie down for at least a month before you can get out of bed like this now. This kid was killed by me, this woman should be mine, what effort did you put in and you want to sit back and enjoy it? Seeing Mr. Lu a little angry, Wang Yunfei's father spoke, Mr. Lu likes this girl, then let Mr. Lu have a good time. Wang Yunfei got a little angry and said, Mr. Lu, it's not even if you played with my young stepmother. Now you're even robbing the woman I fancy? My family invited you to help, not to rob our women. His old man froze at these words, what? Mr. Lu, you took my wife. Wang Yunfei's old man was so angry that he slapped his own young wife's face beside him. Mr. Lu grunted and didn't say anything, instead Wang Yunfei's sister Wang Yunden got angry and said to Mr. Lu, what? You took my stepmother as well. Didn't you say you just like me alone? Wang Yunfei and his old man both froze, crap. At the same time there was a voice that also said, crap, your family is so messy. The crowd looked at them and were immediately shocked, only to see that at some point, Qin Feng had already stood up unharmed and was watching the fun. Chapter 31, Crying to My Old Man It had to be said that the Wang family's lively scene was really nice to watch. It is estimated that they themselves did not expect that they invited a high person back to green them, did not expect that the old Wang family also have today ah. Originally, the Wang family father and son of Mr. Lu is very angry, but I did not expect this time Qin Feng actually the slightest bit of nothing, which makes the crowd freeze. Just clearly hung up ah? How is it all right again? Turned into a ghost? Doesn't look like it? Not to mention the Wang family, even Xiao Meng could not believe it. But then she thought of Qin Feng as a zombie, and only then did she think it made sense. But, Mr. Lu did not know that Qin Feng was a zombie ah, he looked at Qin Feng with a confused face and said, You, you didn't die? My move was powerful, it's impossible that you didn't die ah? Qin Feng said with a dumbfounded look, I don't make it either, how come it didn't kill me? Want to do it again? Lu was enraged and shouted, his hands waved out a terrifying evil chi rushing towards Qin Feng. Qin Feng was calm, he knew that there was a bit of a gap between himself and this mister. Lu, and that it would be hard to take this move, so he wasn't going to take it. So, with a bang he was hit again. This time his entire body flew out backwards and fell to the ground, once again not moving. Mr. Lu was instantly pleased and said in a cold voice, unable to take a hit, still dead? Xiao Meng was still startled, hurriedly ran over to look at Qin Feng. Qin Feng again did not move, scared Xiao Meng hurriedly called out to Qin Feng, still no response. Seeing that Qin Feng is really dead, the Wang family head looks at Mr. Lu, his face sinks down and says, Mr. Lu, I, Wang Weiming, treated you well, why are you treating me like this? I give you money, I give you good food, good drink and good accommodation, and you still play with my woman and daughter? Mr. Lu laughed and said, Brother Wang, wouldn't this make us on better terms? Kiss on kiss ah, you. Wang family head's face reddened with anger. What woman do you want that I can't give you ah? You choose to touch my family's women? Have you considered my feelings? The Wang family head said angrily. Mr. Lu was also a bit angry and said. As for that, why don't you consider other people's feelings when your old Wang family green others? Put. The head of the Wang family was so angry that he directly sprayed a mouthful of blood, yet his young wife didn't even pay attention to him. Moreover, this young enchanting woman even walked over to Mr. Lu and said to the Wang family head, Old Wang ah, you can't make it, your body is not as powerful as Mr. Lu's, and you don't have his skills, I'm more comfortable following Mr. Lu than following you. You, Wang Weiming said angrily, you left me nothing, not a penny. At this Wang Weiming's little wife laughed, come on you, Mr. Lu and I have long discussed how to seize your family property, by then your family will be broken while Mr. Lu and I sit back and enjoy the benefits. Wang Weiming was so angry that he spat out another mouthful of blood, the faces of all the people in the Wang family changed, and Wan Yundan said angrily to Mr. Lu, you're actually doing this for my family's property? Mr. Lu sneered, what else? Could it be that for the sake of a mere few million dollars, you are really willing to work for your Wang family? Wan Yundan angrily said, so what you said to me in bed was all a lie. Of course, I'm just playing with you, the real goal is the Wang family's billion plus assets. Mr. Lu said smugly, it doesn't matter if he says it anyway. But just at this moment, a voice rang out again. TSK TSK TSK, I didn't come here for nothing today, a cuckold drama has turned into a property fight again, it's so beautiful. The crowd froze, they all turned their heads to look, hell, they saw Qin Feng was standing with his waist crossed where he was watching the drama. Now everyone was confused again, Mr. Lu even directly roared, 
How the hell are you still alive? Xin Feng said with some apologies, sorry ah, the scene drama is too wonderful, cannot help but get up to see. Mr. Lua roared angrily and said, I don't believe I can't beat you today, said directly rushed over, a palm slap on Qin Feng's chest, after Qin Feng flew out backwards, he also continued to chase after him to Qin Feng's chest a burst of beatings, the terrible evil Qi attacked on Qin Feng's body again and again, and Qin Feng has long been motionless, just like dead through. Mr. Lu then gave up and said, damn, I don't believe you won't die this time. Xiao Meng was so scared that she rushed over, after fighting for so long this time, she couldn't believe that Qin Feng would still be fine. And Mr. Lu walked over to Wang Weiming, his temper hadn't disappeared yet, he said angrily, I'm telling you, I'm just playing with your woman, playing with your daughter, robbing your son's woman, and I'm going to take your family's property, what can you do to me? Wang Weiming said angrily, you, you are simply abominable. Wang Yunfei, surname Lu, you, shall not, die well, I will not, let you go. Wang Yundan also said angrily, you scum, you cheated my feelings, I will let brother Panther beat you to death, you wait for me. Hearing this Mr. Lu laughed loudly, not putting it in his eyes in the slightest, very dejected, said, you think, you Wang family today there is a person can live out? When these words came out the Wang family's face changed, this is to kill? Kill us and you won't get a penny. At this time Wang Weiming's little wife said smilingly, why not? I'm your legal wife, when your Wang family dies out, the property is mine to inherit, at that time I'll enjoy life with Mr. Lu, ha ha, shut up bitch, you are not qualified to enjoy life with me, with this money, I want dozens of women to serve, especially that woman, said Mr. Lu pointed to Xiao Meng who was crying Qin Feng, and hearing his words, Wang Weiming's little wife froze and said, what do you mean, could it be that you are also lying to me, surname Lu, don't forget that I'm the rightful heir, without me, you don't have a single cent of the Wang family property, Mr. Lu laughed loudly and said, give or not give me the property is not your say, I sleep with you when you put an evil spell on you, once I cast the spell you are just a puppet that listens to me, give or not give the property is not up to you. You, Wang Weiming's little wife roared in despair, you are not human, you animal, abominable, scum. At this time a voice also sounded again said, that is, two is not a person, a house all by the girl cheated ah, really Nima is not something, but this plot shift is too bigot. As soon as the crowd heard this voice, they knew what was going on, and turned their heads to look, and sure enough, Qin Feng stood up again, and there was a handful of melon seeds in his hand getting high, what a nasty melon eating audience. Mr. Lu Facer cramped, this time without saying a word rushed up a few palms to Qin Feng knocked down, and ruthlessly make up a few terrible evil qi before giving up. When he turned his head to leave, Mr. Lu found that Xiao Meng was too lazy to cry, so he roared angrily. Why don't you cry? He's definitely dead this time, cry for me. Xiao Meng rolled her eyes and didn't cry, she was already used to it. She felt that Qin Feng was afraid that he wouldn't be able to die in any way, since that was the case, what was there to cry about, a waste of tears. Chapter 32, Feeling Like Life Has Reached Its Peak Xiao Meng could not cry even if she died now, she kind of understood that Qin Feng was the undefeatable little strong man who could not die at all. And this Mr. Lu was still trying to deceive himself and others to make Xiao Meng cry, the whole Xiao Meng is also quite speechless. Wang family two fathers and sons are now in a very complicated mood. First of all, Mr. Lu green them, but also to take away their family property, but now Qin Feng and how to fight cannot die, for the Wang family, these two people are not to be messed with and people headache. At the same time, the Wang family wanted both Qin Feng and Mr. Lu to die, so that the Wang family would be happy. Now that Qin Feng was lying down again, Mr. Lu once again looked back at the Wang family and said in a grim voice, all of you, die here today, don't worry, the outside world will only think that it was a fire that burned you all, and that kid. Saying this, he looked at Qin Feng on the ground, and then said to Xiao Meng, As for you, under my evil magic, you can't become my woman even if you don't want to. Ha 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 ha. It really feels like life has reached its peak. As he was laughing, both the Wang family and Xiao Meng saw at this moment that Qin Feng on the ground slowly stood up once again. At this moment, Mr. Lu also felt that something was wrong, and when he took a sharp look, he saw Qin Feng looking at himself. The atmosphere was suddenly awkward. Mr. Lu froze for a while, then faintly spoke, why don't you leave, I'm not going against you anymore. Qin Feng shook his head and said, you've already messed with me, it's better to keep fighting, maybe I'll die soon. Mr. Lu shook his head and said, no, 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 no more fighting, it's not fun, you go. Lu now sort of understood that this Qin Feng was really hard to kill. Instead of wasting time with him, it would be better to put the ice on it. Although Mr. Lu is not the kind of person who takes peace for granted, but what can he do now? Qin Feng obviously do not want to give up so easily, said, have beaten me half a day, you tell me no fun not to fight? Mr. Lu froze, indeed seems like this is not good. 
So he looked at Qin Feng seriously and said, as the saying goes, it's better to settle scores than to tie them up, why should a brother be so aggressive? Moreover, I haven't used my full power earlier, if you really want to force me to use my full power, you will have to die, so it's better to forget about it, wouldn't it be better for us to make a friend? Who knew that Qin Feng's eyes lit up and said, you haven't used your full power yet, then use your full power, fight. Mr. Lu froze, what's the situation? This kid just owes it to himself? Although he may not be able to beat him to death, but doesn't it hurt? So Mr. Lu spoke again, don't force me, when I start to get angry, using my full strength one punch can kill you. Come on come on, fight now, I can't wait. Qin Feng had an expectant look on his face. This caused everyone to freeze, is this guy that much of a fighter? At the same time Mr. Lu was torn, he wasn't confident that he could really beat Qin Feng to death, but it was already like this, he couldn't help but fight. So he began to condense all the evil qi in his body, a strand of evil qi all gathered and condensed on top of his fist. Then he didn't know what incantation he recited under his breath, then he stepped out and ruthlessly slammed his fist on Qin Feng's chest. With a loud boom, the evil qi instantly erupted, directly sending Qin Feng flying out 5 or 6 meters. After landing on the ground this time, there was still a terrifying evil qi running back and forth on his body, as if it stayed inside Qin Feng's body continuing to destroy his body. Qin Feng's body also convulsed for a while, and then was no longer moving. In order to make sure that Qin Feng was dead, Mr. Lu rushed up with small steps and carefully probed his breathing and pulse, and finally grabbed Qin Feng's head and clicked and twisted it. Only then did he get up with a relieved sigh, then said to everyone smugly and helplessly, I've said that I can kill him with all my might, but he still doesn't believe me, now it's okay, right? Xiao Meng on the side looks at Qin Feng's body with some worry, this time it looks very serious, his neck is twisted again, she doesn't know if Qin Feng can still stand up or not. Anyway, Mr. Lu felt that he couldn't stand up and was about to leave. However, at this time, Qin Feng on the ground moved again, and then stood up at once. Then he moved his neck which was making a clicking sound, before stretching his back and said, Worthy of being the strongest strike, it's just comfortable, the whole body is refreshed. Put. Mr. Lu sniffed a mouthful of blood, which was angry. How could he not expect that Qin Feng didn't die even if he didn't die, he actually said it was comfortable. This Nima is simply insulting him ah, and so hit people? Kid. You. What kind of monster are you? Mr. Lu stared Qin Feng dead in the face. Qin Feng laughed and didn't say anything, he was currently feeling the subtle changes in his body in detail. From the time he was beaten by Mr. Lu before, he found that after he was attacked, his body was vaguely a little stronger than before. And the next time he was beaten several times, that feeling grew stronger and stronger. That feeling was as if he was improving himself in the midst of being beaten, the feeling was obvious. That's why he would go on getting beaten again and again without fighting back. At first, he might not be able to beat Mr. Lu even if he fought back, but now he felt that his body was much stronger again, and he was already confident that he could deal with Mr. Lu. After all, it is a zombie body, immortal, the more they fight, the stronger they get, the more they are beaten, the more resistant they are. At this moment, Xin Feng looked at Mr. Lu and said, since you can't beat me to death, then, I can only beat you to death. This Mr. Lu helped others to harm people, harmed people for himself, and also hit Xiao Meng's idea, in Qin Feng's place, is already a dead man. Mr. Lu eyed Qin Feng's gaze and couldn't help but feel a trace of fear rise in his heart. He couldn't beat Qin Feng to death, then Qin Feng could beat him to death. So, he hurriedly spoke, brother, I can divide half of the Wang family's property too. Qin Feng laughed coldly, his body flashed and rushed to Mr. Lu, not waiting for Mr. Lu to finish, his fist smashed at him. Mr. Lu hurriedly resisted, bang, corpse chi and evil chi collided and erupted, instantly shocked Mr. Lu flew out backwards. Looking at Qin Feng again, this time instead, his body didn't even move, obviously much stronger than before. Mr. Lu flew out backwards and knew that Qin Feng was not going to let him go today, so he roared and quickly rushed up, his body exploded with evil chi and raised his hand to attack Qin Feng. Qin Feng blandly faced, casually resisted, then found an opening and slapped his palm on Mr. Lu's forehead. Mr. Lu's entire body shook and a lot of blood flowed out of his mouth before he slowly fell to the ground. With this palm, Xin Feng had shattered his skull, it would be strange if he didn't die. After Mr. Lu collapsed, the Wang family's father and son both breathed a sigh of relief. However, immediately afterward, they realized that Qin Feng's gaze was looking over unkindly, and immediately, they all shivered as well, directly kneeling on the ground. Qin Feng had killed even Mr. Lu just by saying so, how could this Wang family's father and son not be afraid of death? Qin Feng, I, our father and son will never dare to mess with, again. Before Wang Weiming could finish his words, Qin Feng spoke faintly. Then also have to pay the price for what has already been done, of course, 
without me personally doing it, said, Xin Feng turned around and left with Xiao Mang, the Wang family were relieved, but the next moment, saw the female ghostly Shan Chan floated over. Chapter 33, The End of a Relationship After Qin Feng left the Wang family, Li Shan Chan was so powerful that she scared the Wang family to death. Among them, Wang Weiming and his son Wang Yunfei were scared into a nervous breakdown. Although they didn't die, it's almost as bad as becoming a psychopath. Back to the rental house is already 2 o'clock in the middle of the night, at this time Li Shan Chan also came back. It looked at Qin Feng, eyes are still reluctant. In fact, some women are quite good, just in this pompous material society, more or less some can not withstand the temptation, and ultimately harm their own lost a lot of things that can never get again. When they realized it, they could only regret it. Qin Feng, if I could do it all over again, I would still be willing, to be with you in the world's simplest and happiest love affair. Li Shan Chan said. Thinking back to the old days, it was indeed a wonderful memory. It was believed that everyone had a clean and pure memory in their youthful years that was not polluted by society. However, she is a beautiful woman, but she has fallen. Facing Li Shan Shan, Qin Feng did not know what to say and could only be silent. The sight of the small dream consciously back away, he wants to give Li Shan Shan and Qin Feng the last chance to get along. However, in the face of this last chance to get along, Qin Feng and Li Shan Shan were both speechless and silent for a long time. Finally, Li Shan Shan opened her mouth and said, Qin Feng, I'm leaving, thank you for accompanying me for a few months, those were the most memorable days of my life. Qin Feng, in the end, still didn't say anything either. The female ghost left. Qin Feng sighed, a relationship, completely over. At this time, Xiao Meng walked over and looked at Qin Feng, she didn't say anything either. Qin Feng, on the other hand, had a smile on his face and said, by the way, last time Zier said that your birthday is coming up, when is it? Xiao Meng didn't realize that Qin Feng was still thinking about her birthday, so she smiled and said, Saturday, but we agreed that you would accompany me. Okay, accompany you. Qin Feng said and went back to the house with Xiao Meng. Xiao Meng had been staying at Qin Feng's house recently, mainly because she was worried that the Ghostbusters would come and hook her soul. Luckily, Xiao Meng's parents didn't know and thought their daughter was living at school. The next day, when Qin Feng and Xiao Meng went to school, they had just arrived at the school's entrance when they saw the woman from the strange man's mansion walking over. Mr. Qin. The woman nodded politely to Qin Feng. Qin Feng was stunned, this condescending woman, actually had this attitude towards herself today, it was a bit of a surprise. What? Still want to take me to the strange man's mansion for questioning? The woman hurriedly said, Mr. Qin misunderstood, this time it's to invite you, a big shot from our odd man's mansion would like to meet you, there's absolutely no disrespect. Qin Feng said indifferently, if he wants to meet me, I have to go? Heh, you go back and tell that big shot that if he wants to see me, come himself. Hearing that the woman was a bit embarrassed, but she still didn't say anything else and left on her own. Qin Feng grunted and entered the school. What happened in the infirmary last night did not spread in the school. The glasses man and the tall thin man endured their fear last night and carried Li Shan Shan's body back. In the morning when old Dr. Shen came and found that the body had become normal he was also very puzzled, but the glasses man and the tall thin man as well as the female doctor didn't dare to tell what happened last night and asked questions. However, the fainted dozen students as usual did not wake up, the school side of the pressure, decided to still send these students to the hospital. The hospital asked Dr. Qian for his opinion, after all, Dr. Qian is the premier doctor in South Central City. However, Dr. Qian still does not recommend sending to the hospital, he knows that these students are not sick but dissipated the evil spirits, sent to the hospital is useless. However, he could not think of a way to dispel the evil aura of these students. In the end, he thought of Qin Feng. After finding Qin Feng, old man Qian said sincerely, little friend, I know you are certainly not an ordinary person, can you think of a way to save those children? Previously, Qin Feng had refused once, saying that he had no way. But now that he saw that old Dr. Qian was so sincere, he couldn't help but be touched by his healer's heart. So he opened his mouth and said, then I will try. Well well well, many thanks little friend. Qian Lao said excitedly. When they arrived at the infirmary, the ambulance from the hospital had already arrived, and several doctors and nurses were ready to pick up the dozen or so people to the hospital at any time. But just then, old Dr. Qian brought Qin Feng. Dean Lu, Principal Zhou, wait for a moment, let this little brother try, if it doesn't work, send him to the hospital, old man me, there's nothing more I can do. Old Dr. Qian said. The others all looked at Qin Feng when they heard this, and at once, many of them revealed mocking smiles. Is old Dr. Qian senile? He was the best doctor in South Central City and he couldn't even cure these students, so what was the point of calling a brat? Although Dean Lu respected old Dr. Qian, he still couldn't help but say at this moment. Qian Lao, this saving people is not a child's play. If it is really not possible, we pick up just. 
Principal Zhou also said, Chen Lao, if something goes wrong, it's the school's responsibility. Chen Lao's face sank and said, just try it, it's hard not to affect anything? I'm here to watch. These words left Dean Liu and Principal Zhou speechless. Xin Feng also ignored them and walked over to the rows of hospital beds in the room to look at the students. These guys didn't listen to advice and taunted themselves in the first place, but now that they've suffered all these sins, it's almost time. So he reached out and touched the face of one of the girls. In order to make a show of it, he used his sword finger to press on the girl's face and head as if he was pressing acupressure points, and in reality, he was using the corpse chi in his body to dispel the demonic chi in her body. Seeing his actions, several doctors and nurses sneered, one of the male doctors said. Just touching a few times like that if the person wakes up, that would be hilarious, this is simply insulting medicine. Forget it, don't say that, let's watch him perform. Another doctor also said. Although the others didn't say anything, except for old Dr. Qian, almost all of them had mockery on their faces. Qin Feng ignored them and after pointing his fingers on the face and head of one student after another, he walked over to old Dr. Qian and said, It's alright, after pressing the acupoints, you'll wake up soon. Many of the people present finally couldn't help but laugh at these words, it was the principal, who didn't know anything about medicine, who sneered. This student, isn't this too perfunctory of you? Just touching two times like this is pressing the acupoints? Dean Lu said, even if it's pressing the acupoints, how could it make them wake up? If it's that simple, would a group of doctors be helpless? A doctor director even spoke directly and said, young people nowadays, are they not willing to put in the effort to pretend? Can you at least press the button for a while? Even though the person won't wake up, it can still give them a chance to move their body. Ha ha ha. Everyone laughed, but the laughter all came to an abrupt end. Because at that moment, a few students on the hospital beds opened their eyes and were sitting up with a blank look on their faces. Chapter 36, Nonsense Recognizing Father. It's no wonder Qin Feng is so angry, it's really that these ghosts are looking for death. There are so many ghosts in the world that they don't go to catch them, but they are focusing on Su Meng. But Su Meng is like this because of Qin Feng, if she is allowed to be taken away by the people of hell, she will easily be dispersed. Therefore, these ghosts had already touched Qin Feng's bottom line, and Qin Feng had already begun to kill. It was a bit scary to see that his eyes were all white in one pair of eyes. White corpse chi was emanating from his body, and as he swung the soul chain, the white corpse chi also followed the soul chain and hit the bodies of those ghosts. Only heard a crackling sound, but all the ghosts that were hit by the soul chain synergistic corpse chi, all immediately flew away after a miserable scream. Because he was worried that Xiao Meng's soul wouldn't be able to support him for long after leaving his body, Qin Feng decided to fight quickly. He injected almost all of his body's corpse chi into the soul lock chain, and it took the white, terrifying corpse chi between swings to send all of those ghosts flying away. This time, he absolutely could not let another one go, otherwise, it would cause even more trouble. After a dozen or so ghosts were all exterminated, Xin Feng's body went soft and he felt a wave of weakness. The consumption was too great, after all, he had utilized all of his corpse chi, making him a bit deflated. However, he couldn't rest at this moment, he pulled Xiao Meng's soul and quickly rushed towards Xiao Meng's house, his speed was very fast along the way, but he had just run out not long before he encountered a figure. This one figure quickly blocked in front of Qin Feng upon seeing him, then a voice was heard saying in surprise, Ha, huh? it's you zombie. Qin Feng was also stunned, the person on the opposite side was actually Wei Dong of the Wei family, the exorcist family that tried to kill Qin Feng last time and subsequently injured Xiao Meng by mistake. I didn't expect to meet you zombie again, that female ghost is the one I mistakenly killed last time? Surprisingly, the soul hasn't dissipated yet. Wei Dong sneered. Qin Feng's face sank, with a murderous aura on his face as he stared at this guy called Wei Dong dead in the face. If it wasn't for him, Xiao Meng wouldn't have become like this. Slowly letting go of Xiao Meng's hand, on Qin Feng's body, white corpse Qi appeared. White-eyed zombie? Wei Dong gave a surprised cry and said. I didn't expect ah, after only a week or so of absence, you've actually broken through to white eyes. Since this is the case, it's all the more reason to hurry up and eliminate you, keeping it is really a scourge. Wei Dong said, suddenly his body rushed, while three talismanic tablets emerged and flew over at Qin Feng. Qin Feng frowned, raising his hand to condense white corpse Qi also quickly rushed out. In the next moment, the two men approached, Wei Dong's palm carrying a faint trace of green aura slapped at Qin Feng's chest. Qin Feng blocked it with a palm, then three talismanic pieces hit the white corpse chi around Qin Feng, snapping three times, the three talismanic pieces were blocked by Qin Feng's corpse chi and exploded. At the same time Qin Feng and Wei Dong's body fell back at the same time, then Wei Dong narrowed his eyes and said, You can, you can actually block my attacks now, a bit of skill. Qin Feng was too lazy to talk nonsense with him, he directly jumped forward and kicked out at Wei Dong. Wei Dong raises his hand to parry it, bang, shaking his body staggering backward, at the same time Qin Feng backs up and comes back with a step and rushes up again. 
Next he carries corpse chi all over his body and keeps attacking, punching and kicking, corpse chi spreading. That way Dong is also hand decision pinching constantly resist, a time the two actually fight some indistinguishable meaning. Wei Dong see this is not the way to go on, then clenched his teeth, from the waist to pull out a stick, a throw, the stick elongated, but it is a devil stick. The demon bucking stick was made of steel, with runes drawn all over it, and was blessed with talismans and spells, hitting the ghosts and evils with great power. If it was combined with powerful talisman paper, it would be even more terrifying. Xiao Meng had blocked a demon subduing baton for Qin Feng, and her soul had almost been broken. So when he saw the demon bucking stick, Qin Feng also got angry and directly rushed up and slammed his fist against that Wei Dong. Wei Dong hurriedly resisted with the demon bucking stick, the demon bucking stick hit Qin Feng's fist and shocked the corpse Qi to dissipate quickly. Then between Wei Dong's attacks, the demon bucking stick continued to disperse the corpse Qi, making it impossible for Qin Feng to counterattack. He knew that although he was very strong now, there was still a bit of a gap in dealing with Wei Dong, the young leader of the exorcist Wei family. Moreover, at this time, Xiao Meng's soul was in a bad state, so after thinking about it, it was better if he left. So after Qin Feng exploded and shook back Wei Dong with a palm, his body hurriedly retreated and brought Xiao Meng's soul to quickly rush towards the distance. His speed was so fast that by the time Wei Dong stabilized his body and wanted to chase after him, it was already too late. Hmph, kid, count on you to run fast, but next time we meet again, we must kill you. Wei Dong said viciously. And at this moment, Qin Feng flew towards the Su family villa with Little Dream's soul. In the Su family villa, Su Meng's parents were walking around with worried faces. On the sofa, Little Dream's body was about to start getting cold, it was already dead by any standard. But Qin Feng hadn't returned yet, and he didn't know what he had gone to do. The young men and women present also knew that Xiao Meng was dead this time. The men couldn't help but feel a bit sorry for her, such a big beauty died like this, it was simply an outrage. There were even a few males who thought to themselves, if there weren't other people here, they would have wanted to take advantage of the heat. The man in the suit frowned and said, Uncle Su, you shouldn't have listened to that brat, if you sent Xiaoming to the hospital in the beginning, there might be a save, now. Another rich second generation male also opened his mouth, yes Uncle Su, it's all because of that kid just now, it's him who harmed Miss Su Meng. Call the police, that kid should be arrested, he is equal to disguised murder. In the room, gradually another person opened his mouth to point the finger at Qin Feng. Su Long was also a bit bottomless, could it be that he really trusted the wrong person? Could it be that his daughter really died like this? At this time, the man in the suit opened his mouth again, Uncle Su, why don't I call 120, no matter what, it is necessary to send to the hospital. Su Long sat on his but on the sofa, his entire body was desperate. Uncle Su, Xiao Meng, has died. The man in the suit sighed and said with false sympathy, I've always liked Little Dream, and now that she's gone, it's hard for me too. But uncle and aunt you have to take care of your health, in the future, you two old people have any needs, you can always order me, just take me as a godson. It looks like this guy's look of sincerity is very touching, but in reality, he is only looking at the Su family's money and power. Su family only Su Meng a thousand gold, who became the aunt of the Su family, that is a great wealth for life ah. But Su Meng died, this suit man although feel very pity, but take the opportunity to show a little as a godson is also okay ah. Just when he was playing a little game in his mind, suddenly a voice rang out from the doorway. Little Dream is not dead yet, so don't recognize your father here in a messy way to disgust people, right? When the crowd sniffed and looked, they saw Qin Feng walk over from the doorway. The man in the suit immediately frowned and blocked Qin Feng saying, Little Dream hasn't been breathing for a long time, how could she not be dead? If you hadn't stopped me, sending Little Dream to the hospital earlier wouldn't have been like this. Qin Feng coldly pushed the man in the suit away and said, Get lost. Chapter 37, Saying What You Want Qin Feng was carrying a murderous aura on his body at the moment and shouted angrily at the man in the suit, scaring him so much that the man in the suit immediately got out of the way. However, this made him feel disgraced, after all, he was still somewhat famous in the circle of rich second generation people in South Central City. So he once again blocked Qin Feng to say something, but he saw Qin Feng suddenly slap out, hitting the man in the suit directly flying out backwards, scaring everyone. Who did not expect Qin Feng so violent, said hands, and so ruthless, the suit man on the ground face directly swollen, teeth are lost too. Qin Feng, on the other hand, ignored him, and went up to himself, looked at Xiao Meng's body, and there was still heat, which made him sigh with relief. Then he turned his head to look at Xiao Meng's soul, Xiao Meng understood what Qin Feng meant and hurriedly floated back to his body. Then with a movement, the soul moved, the body didn't. Qin Feng frowned, signaling little dream to return to the body again, also ignoring the various gazes of surprise from the people around him. He directly lowered his head and kissed Little Dream on the lips. Then a mouthful of corpse chi was once again injected into Xiao Meng's mouth, and Xiao Meng's soul was once again sealed within her body. This time she moved and opened her eyes. 
Seeing Qin Feng kiss Xiaoming, the surrounding people were stunned, especially some boys, it was really a jealousy ah, actually watching the goddess being kissed. As for Xiaoming's parents, they were instead somewhat accustomed to it, because Qin Feng had already kissed Xiaoming last time. And then to everyone's shock, Xiaoming actually woke up. This made those men who were ready to reprimand Qin Feng freeze with a look of disbelief. Damn the story of the prince kissing the sleeping beauty awake was staged? Xiaoming woke up and directly jumped in Qin Feng's arms and said, scared me to death, I really thought I was going to die. At this moment Qin Feng's heartstrings seemed to be touched, he patted Xiaoming's back and said, it's okay, I'm here, it'll be fine. Xiaoming was at peace like never before, because she saw how desperately this man fought for himself. She is not a formerly Shan Shan, she understands that a man is willing to fight to protect himself is how rare. She had to cherish it and would not follow in Li Shan Shan's footsteps. Qin Feng, from now on, I am your girlfriend, whether you agree or not. Inexplicably, Xiao Meng suddenly said so. This made Qin Feng himself freeze, it seems that in this world, there is also a big gap between women. Some people regret it only after they lost, while others started to cherish even before they got it. Qin Feng didn't say anything, just smiled, smiled under the envious gaze of these rich second generation. Xiao Meng's parents didn't say anything, they believed in their daughter's vision, even though they had no idea what was going on. They saw that Xiaoming's parents didn't say anything, they naturally wouldn't be stupid enough to make a fool of themselves. In the end, people left, and Xiaoming and Qin Feng chatted a lot and had a very pleasant conversation. That night Qin Feng stayed at the Su family villa. The next morning, after breakfast, Su Long brought Little Dream and Qin Feng to prepare to go to a business gathering. The purpose was simple, he wanted Qin Feng to go to these places to see the world as well, preferably to be groomed as his successor in the future. In his opinion, Qin Feng was very knowledgeable about Jade or else he wouldn't be so good at gambling on stones. And the Su family industry jade is also a very important part, since so, just can let Qin Feng understand this industry, know some big brother. This is just like treating Qin Feng as a son-in-law, while fellow traveler Qin Feng listens to Su Long's various introductions, his heart also feels funny. Is this Su Long in a hurry, or is he really a good judge of character? Just can't wait to train himself? Little Feng ah, at the business gathering today, there's a big jade boss from the next city. I'm going to talk to him about cooperation to enter their city's jade market. However, there is another guy from this city who will be competing with me today, this person is called Zhou Dequan, and he is the only one in the jewelry industry in this city who can compete with me. By the way, you should have an impression of his son, he was there last time when Meng Meng was in the hospital, called Zhou Ji. This guy has been holding a grudge against you. Xin Feng laughed and didn't take it to heart at all. When they arrived at the party hotel, there were immediately quite a few people who came over to strike up a conversation with Su Long. After Su Long politely greeted them one by one, he led Xiao Meng and Qin Feng towards a hairy middle-aged man around 50 years old. When the hairy middle-aged man saw Su Long he also came over to shake hands, Su Long smiled and said, Mr. Xia, for this gathering, I hope we can also have cooperation. Definitely definitely. Mr. Xia, the hairy middle-aged man, smiled and nodded his head, looking like a good person. And beside him stood a middle-aged man, Su Long looked at him and said, Mr. Zhou, are you also planning to cooperate with Mr. Xie? Zhou Dequan wore a pair of glasses and said with a leathery smile, having cooperation is naturally good for everyone. Su Long smiled, then everyone took their seats, Qin Feng and Xiaoming both sat beside Su Long. And beside Zhou Dequan, there was also Zhou Ji who he had seen last time. This guy had given up on Xiaoming after the hospital last time but he had been unhappy with Qin Feng, and this time when he saw it, he was also a bit of a tit for tat. On the table, Su Long and Zhou De all chatted with Mr. Xia about the cooperation of Jade, all wanting to fight for the right to cooperate. And at this time, Zhou Ji also opened his mouth and said to Mr. Xia, General Manager Xia, our Zhou's jewelry is still quite famous in South Central City, all kinds of Jade in our Zhou's, can shine, if we can cooperate with us, I believe that the benefits can definitely be maximized. Mr. Xia smiled and nodded, Mr. Zhou has a good son, his future achievements in this industry are unlimited. Then Mr. Xia looked at Qin Feng, obviously he thought that Qin Feng was a descendant of the Su family and also wanted to see how Qin Feng would perform. Qin Feng had no knowledge of Jade, so naturally he didn't know what to say. It was at this time that Mr. Xia removed a piece of white jade from his neck and said to Zhou Ji and Qin Feng, You two juniors, are you interested in taking a look at this piece of jade of mine? Give a talk. These words were quite a bit of a test, after all, if a company's juniors were capable, there would be hope for this company in the future, and only then would they be able to cooperate in the long run. Joji understood this, and after looking at the white jade, he spoke. This jade is very warm and moist, it looks ordinary, but it's absolutely superb. And it doesn't seem to be recently polished, looking at the character, it should be an ancient jade. 
If my guess is good, it should be a jade pendant worn by princes and nobles during the Han Dynasty. The Han Dynasty thought gave jade the connotation of virtue and personification, and jade is the embodiment of a gentleman, and now that it is worn on Mr. Xia, it is even more so. Upon hearing this, Mr. Zhou nodded his head proudly, and Mr. Xia even laughed out loud and said, well said, it's really a later generation. Saying that, he looked at Qin Feng again, expecting Qin Feng's comment on the jade. However, after Qin Feng looked at the jade, he suddenly opened his mouth and said, Mr. Xia, this jade of yours, after you put it on, you basically never took it off, right? Everyone was stunned by these words, then Mr. Xia nodded his head and said, Yeah, I just took it off today because I wanted you guys to say something about it. Qin Feng nodded and said, I have nothing to say, only a kind reminder, take it off and stop wearing it, it will kill someone. When these words came out, everyone froze again, then Zhou Zhi caught the opportunity to angrily rebuke. Kid, are you saying that this jade is bad? Mr. Xie's brows also furrowed. Chapter 38, Strange Jade. If you say good things in this kind of scene, others may not necessarily love to hear them, but saying bad words, others would definitely not love to hear them. What Zhou Zhi had just said sounded very comfortable to Mr. Xie, but Qin Feng's words made him dissatisfied. Young man, I've been wearing this piece of jade for a year, it was given to me by my lover, saying that it can bless me, telling me to keep it on and not to take it off. But why do you say that if you take it off, you can't wear it, and it will kill someone? It's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? Mr. Xia had some birthday and a bad tone. Qin Feng sat on the chair and said indifferently, your lover gave you this? And you're not allowed to take it off? That's really quite loving you. But I still say, stop wearing it, throw it away, of course it's up to you whether you listen or not. Mr. Xie's face sank, if it wasn't for the fact that Su Long was here, he would have been designated to be furious. However, he still said to Su Long, Mr. Su, is this your son? Not very good at talking. Su Long said, it's my daughter's boyfriend. Randomly, he looked at Qin Feng and said, little Feng, what exactly do you mean by what you just said? He more or less believed Qin Feng's words, after all, he had saved his daughter twice. Qin Feng said, this jade is indeed good jade, just look closely, the center of the jade, there is a little black. Mr. Xia frowned and said, it's not surprising that jade from the Han dynasty period has a bit of impurities, it's another 2000 years old. Besides, does it have anything to do with what you said about not being able to wear it? That's right, do you know anything about jade? Don't deliberately nitpick here, mister. Xia is also a jade tycoon, you can't fool him with this little trick. Zhou Xi sneered. Upon hearing this, mister. Xia also nodded his head, displeased with Qin Feng for questioning his jade. Qin Feng, on the other hand, said indifferently, this jade, it came out of the tomb, right? General manager Xia froze, this point he could also see, said, thousands of years old, quite a few of them came out of the tomb, what's so strange about it? That little bit of black stuff inside the jade is not an impurity, but the unclean chi from the tomb. You've been wearing it for a year, and quite a bit of it has already invaded your body and affected you, and wearing it for a long period of time is even more unfavorable to you. And now that you've taken it off, you'll be fine if you don't wear it, if you wear it again, the unclean chi in the jade will form a conflict with the chi that has invaded your body, and if it's serious, you'll die on the spot. Qin Feng had little regard and spoke directly. Although these words made many people at the scene feel amused, thinking that Qin Feng was talking big here. General manager Xia even sank his face and said with a cold snort, simply nonsense, a piece of jade is just a piece of jade, yet you are pulling these superstitions with me, said Mr. Xia then looked at Mr. Su Long and said, if Mr. Su Su group is full of such young people, then there is really no one left to succeed him, so let's dispense with the cooperation. Then Mr. Xia said to Mr. Zhou, Mr. Zhou, let's talk about cooperation in another place. Zhou Daquan and Zhou Zhi were both looking at Su Long and Qin Feng in a very smug manner, and even after getting up, Zhou Zhi said to Xiao Meng, you were really blind to pick this brat, of course, I can accept it if you follow me now. Xiao Meng twisted her head and didn't even bother with him. Zhou Zhi's face sank as he left, while many of the bigwigs at the party looked at Su Long, revealing mocking smiles, they just didn't dare to directly mock him. Su Long sighed and didn't say anything, Qin Feng also didn't say anything. And at this time, Mr. Xia walked a few steps at the same time, hung the jade pendant on his neck again and carefully put it into his collar. However, the next moment his face suddenly turned white, his entire body went limp, and he suddenly fell headfirst to the ground. This startled many people around him, and many of them gathered around. He saw that general manager Xia's face was pale and bloodless, and his body was trembling slightly, as if he was still unable to breathe. At the same time vaguely, there was a faint trace of black chi swimming around on his body. The female secretary who followed Mr. Xia was in a hurry, and at this time, Su Long also frowned with a shocked face. In the midst of the chaos, Qin Feng's voice could be heard faintly ringing out. 
Take off his jade pendant and he'll be fine for now. In the heat of the moment, the female secretary didn't think too much and reflexively took off Mr. Xie's jade pendant. At once, Mr. Xie took a breath and eased up, his face looked a little better, and his body didn't tremble, but he was still a little powerless. Help! Help me up! He said weakly, after standing up with the help of the female secretary, he slowly returned to the table and sat down. I looked at Qin Feng and spoke, young man, this jade. I said, if you wear it again, it might kill someone, you don't believe it yourself. Qin Feng took a sip of his drink. At this time, everyone was stunned, no one thought that Qin Feng actually really said the right thing. After all, the jade pendant was indeed fine when it was removed. At this moment, Mr. Xia also had to pay attention to Qin Feng's words and said, I apologize to you, little brother, for my rudeness just now, could you please, little brother, tell me more in detail? After all, it was a matter of life and death, and Mr. Xia was scared. Qin Feng saw his attitude change, and only then did he continue. As I said, this jade is tainted with the evil aura of the tomb. This kind of thing is most unlucky, and your wife actually lets you wear it on your body. Mr. Xia said, my wife doesn't know much about this, does she? She said it would keep her safe. Qin Feng shook his head and said, don't understand? Then why does she let you wear it and not allow you to take it off? It means she knows that once it's taken off, wearing it again could kill someone. That's why I said, your wife can really love you. Add this Mr. Xia's face changed and said, what little brother means is that my wife knows that this jade harms people and deliberately gave it to me to wear? But, since it harms people, why don't you let me take it off again? How can I be harmed if I don't take it off? Qin Feng said, do not let you pick, is what to let you wear first, wait for the jade and the evil breath try to invade some in your body. When the time is ripe to take it off for you, and then let you wear it, won't you almost die just like you just did? Mr. Xia said with some confusion, but, why is it like this? Loss you are still the boss, your wife put a time bomb on you, but instructed you not to detonate it, indicating that for the time being, she does not want you to die. But since she wants to harm you and doesn't want you to die for the time being, it means that she still has something unfinished and you can't die yet. Understand? Xin Feng said. Mr. Xia reacted violently and said with a sullen face. This woman, wants to swallow all my industries? No wonder ah, she's been interfering in the company's affairs for the past year. At this point, even a fool understands what's going on, it's obvious that Mr. Xie's wife wants to swallow his family's assets, and gave him this jade pendant that can be detonated at any time to kill Mr. Xie. This will make Mr. Xie dead, absolutely can't check his wife's head ah. Mr. Xie's face was ugly, he turned around and took the jade from his secretary's hand and looked at it. Wait, little brother, the black impurities inside are gone. Qin Feng frowned and took the jade and looked at it, suddenly his face changed and he twisted his head to look at the female secretary on the side. The black gas in the jade pendant was gone, but the female secretary, at the moment, was wearing a bizarre expression, with black gas still bubbling from her body. Not good, everyone back off. Qin Feng shouted. Chapter 39 Retribution Comes Too Fast Hearing Qin Feng's voice, everyone's backed off. At this moment, that female secretary actually had a face of black aura and her expression was twisted, looking very scary. What is going on here? Mr. Xia was shocked. Xin Feng frowned and said, the evil fury breath in the jade pendant has attached itself to her body, she's in danger now. Please, you must save her, she is my niece, nothing can happen to her. Mr. Xia was anxious, if something happened to his niece, then he couldn't explain to his sister. Xin Feng did not say anything, went forward to carefully measure the female secretary, thinking that it should be evil. At this time, the female secretary suddenly moved, as if she was looking at Qin Feng, she called out to him with a slap. Qin Feng dodged out of the way, and then grabbed the hand of the female secretary, and then a wave of corpse chi entered the female secretary's body along the palm of his hand. Then his other hand clasped the female secretary to prevent her from moving. After carefully sensing it, Qin Feng realized that the evil fury breath was very strong, although his own corpse chi could force it out of the girl's body, it was very laborious. Especially now that the girl was struggling so much, Qin Feng was a bit unable to hold it down. While his corpse Qi was starting to force the evil fiend breath out of the girl's body, the girl suddenly broke away from Qin Feng's hand, followed by a palm slap with evil fiend breath on Qin Feng's chest. Qin Feng's face sank as he felt a bit of pain, but the palm didn't cause much damage to him. Hence he once again backhandedly suppressed the female secretary and then continued to enter her body with his corpse Qi. The people around him stood far away, they looked at this scene with fear, not knowing what was going on. At this moment, Qin Feng endeavored to suppress the evil fiendishness within the female secretary's body with his corpse chi and force this evil fiendishness out with all his might. Soon the female secretary stopped moving and slowly fainted. However, the body of the evil fury breath are out, face above not a bit of black gas. 
Seeing this, Xin Feng sighed in relief and let go of the female secretary's hand. Mr. Xia rushed over and said, How is it? Is it all right? Qin Feng nods his head, the evil fiend breath is out, it's fine. Only then did general manager Xia breathe a sigh of relief and said to Qin Feng, thank you, really thank you so much. At this moment, general manager Xia's attitude towards Qin Feng completely changed. From the fact that he had just almost died because of the jade pendant, to the fact that his niece was now possessed by an evil spirit, it all proved that Qin Feng's words weren't a lie. Therefore, Mr. Xia was completely convinced of Qin Feng. However, just then, he heard Joshi suddenly speak, Humph, just pretending to be a god, I don't know what he's up to. After he finished speaking, everyone looked over. They heard Joji continue, Mr. Xia, don't be fooled by this guy, who knows if he was just playing some trick. I remember that the Su family's daughter also met him at first then had an accident, and then the next day, he was revived by himself, I guess all of this might be by his own design. Hearing this, Qin Feng's brows furrowed. This Joji was really a bit disgusting. It was also at this time that his father, Zhou Dequan, also stood out and spoke. Mr. Xia, I also think my son has a point. This kid is making such a mystery here, who is he bluffing? It's just a piece of jade, what could be wrong with it? Why don't I see any evil breath? If you have the ability to get it on me, let me take a look. When he finished speaking, the evil fury breath that was forced out by Qin Feng and floated in the air seemed to understand Zhou Dequan's words, and flew into Zhou Dequan's body at once. At that instant, only Zhou Dequan's body shook, and then a wisp of black aura surfaced on his body. His face was also hideous, and there was a faint black aura in his eyes, very frightening. Seeing this Qin Feng smiled then, it seems that he doesn't need to take action himself, this is really retribution. At this time, Zhou Ji hadn't realized that his old man had been possessed, and he even opened his mouth and said to Qin Feng, Your set is the trick of the Jang Hu cheater, it won tea work in our place, so. Hey, what's going on? He was saying it, suddenly felt his body off the ground, and then turned his head to see, damn Zhou Dequan is using his hand to carry Zhou Ji, and looked at Zhou Ji with a hideous face. Zhou Ji was scared dumbfounded, what the hell? Dad, you. What's wrong with you? Put me down ah. Zhou Dequan roared angrily and violently dropped Zhou Ji on the ground, painful Zhou Ji screamed miserably and hurriedly rolled and crawled to escape away. Mr. Xia looked at Zhou Dequan and said in surprise, this. He also got hit by evil? Qin Feng nodded and said, this is retribution. With that, he calmly sat back down on the table and said to Su Long and Mr. Xia, come, let's continue eating. Mr. Xia smiled awkwardly, thinking who would dare to eat in such a horrible scene. At the moment that Zhou Dequan was acting like a madman, constantly trying to attack the people around him, causing everyone to stay away for fear of being hurt by him. At the same time Zhou Ji's face was ugly, and finally walked to Qin Feng with an unwilling face and said, Qin, Qin Feng, can you help my father? Zhou Dequan is the top pillar of Zhou's jewelry, if something happens to him, the Zhou family will play. So Zhou Ji had no choice but to come over and soften to Qin Feng. Qin Feng sniffed and said, it's okay. Zhou Ji froze, he didn't expect Qin Feng to agree so painfully, and hurriedly said, then hurry up? What's the hurry? First transfer a hundred million dollars to my account, immediately save your father. Qin Feng said as he ate a mouthful of food. Zhou Ji's face immediately froze, one hundred million dollars, this is also a large sum of money for the Zhou family. Immediately, his face sank again and said, I can still do it without begging you, 100 million, you're dreaming. Saying that he turned to leave, he thought to himself, Qin Feng has a way, it means that there are others in this world who can surely do the same. Then it was better to spend money to hire someone else than to beg Qin Feng. So he called a lot of security guards and Zhou family bodyguards and forcibly tied up his old man and took him away. Qin Feng did not care about this, anyway, if he did not get rid of the evil aura within two days, he would surely die. At the party, Mr. Xia looks at Qin Feng in size. Little brother is decisive and capable, and acts with his own bottom line and style, it's really admirable. The reason why Mr. Xia said that was because Qin Feng hadn't made things so difficult for him when he saved him at that time. Of course, it's also because Mr. Xia didn't offend Qin Feng, even if he didn't recognize him Tai. Tie in the beginning, it's just a normal person's reaction. After knowing that he was wrong, he immediately corrected his attitude and apologized to Qin Feng, unlike the Zhou family, who deliberately picked a fight. Hearing Mr. Xia praise Qin Feng, Su Meng can't help but feel a little proud, as if saying again, excellent, right? This is my man. After chatting for a few sentences, Mr. Xia suddenly opened his mouth and asked Su Long, Mr. Su, I heard that there's an auction in South Central City in the next two days? That's right, there is an antique auction, is Mr. Xia interested? Su Long was puzzled. Mr. Xia said, a little bit of understanding, I heard that this auction, there is an antique bead, which is said to have the magical effect of making people tranquilize the mind elaborately. It seems to be called what? 
soul settling bead? I recently one or two years mental state is not good, thought this bead so magical words, get over to play. Soul calming beads? Qin Feng's eyes snapped. Chapter 40, Picnic. For such a long time, Qin Feng has never heard about the soul fixing bead and has always had a headache over it. Unexpectedly, this Mr. Xia actually knew about it. Seeing Qin Feng's reaction, Mr. Xia was puzzled, little brother knows about the soul fixing pearl? No. Qin Feng eagerly asks, Mr. Xia, are you sure the information is reliable? Su Mang also looked at Mr. Xia, and heard Mr. Xia say, I also heard it from a friend, and this time I came here, and by the way, I intend to take a look. Qin Feng asked again, when exactly is the auction? This time it's Su Long who replies, it seems like it's Wednesday night, what's up little Feng? Uncle Su, I have to go to this auction, to be honest, the soul fixing pearl, I have to get it. Qin Feng had his serious face. At this point, Su Long is puzzled, a curio bead with a tranquilizing effect is just a bead, why is it so imperative? Mr. Xia also looked at Qin Feng curiously, at this time Su Meng bit her lip and said, Dad, Qin Feng is also doing this for me. Without the soul fixing pearl, my life might be in danger. What? Su Long instantly became anxious and said, Why? I can't explain it clearly, in short, the soul fixing pearl is very important to me. Xiao Meng said in a small voice. Su Long glanced at Qin Feng, then said to General Manager Xia, General Manager Xia, in that case, it might be time to take someone's love. General Manager Xia hurriedly waved his hand, words are too strong, I'll only use it to calm my nerves, if your daughter has a greater use for it, I'll definitely give it to her. Su Long nodded gratefully, then they talked about cooperation, Qin Feng and Xiao Meng accompanied them in boredom. With the news of the soul fixing pearl more or less put Qin Feng at ease, with the soul fixing pearl in front of her, Xiao Meng wouldn't be worried about being hooked by the Ghostbusters. That night Qin Feng still stayed at Su's house, Xiao Meng's mom heard Su Long talk about the party, and the couple also became more satisfied with Qin Feng as their future son-in-law. After arriving at school the next day, Qin Feng's class was a buzz. Because the school flower Su Meng had actually transferred to this class, making everyone very excited. However, some of the males were also more disappointed because Su Meng was sitting next to Qin Feng, so the purpose of the class transfer was obvious. The fact that the high and cold schoolgirl had switched classes for the sake of a guy made the vast majority of the boys know that they didn't stand a chance. In the class, Qin Feng twisted his head under the envious gazes of many boys and looked helplessly at Su Meng and said, You girl, are you planning to spy on me every now and then? Su Meng hemmed and hawed and didn't say anything. At this time, the class teacher came, a 27-year-old beautiful mature woman named Chinya. After Chinya looked at the class, she opened her mouth and said, Classmates, the school has made a temporary decision to let our class organize a field activity, the location is outside a remote village in the western mountains. The class boiled with this statement, each one excited. Only Qin Feng falls into silence with a slight frown. Western mountain? Outside a remote village? He thought of the location where the head of that odd man's mansion had asked himself to go and help last Friday, wasn't it also a village in the western mountains? Qin Feng thought to himself, this odd man's mansion doesn't seem to be as useless as he thought at least a certain amount of power is still there. Otherwise, how could it allow South Middle School to temporarily organize some kind of field activity in Qin Feng's class? Wasn't it just trying to get Qin Feng to go near the village where the accident happened? Laughing coldly, Qin Feng was somewhat speechless. If everyone is fine with it, then I'll go and pack up, take the school bus at 12 noon to leave in unison, and come back at noon on Wednesday. Chen Ya continues. Wednesday noon? Qin Feng thinks to himself, Wednesday night he has to go to the antique auction to get the soul fixing beads, this is a big deal, but if he comes back at noon it's just right. Then this field activity will take part in it, just to also go and see, what's going on in that remote village in the western mountains. So at noon the class of four dozen students a bus all pulled to the western mountain remote a place called the Ghost Door Village. The name of this village is strange enough, called Ghost Gate Village, the students have also been talking about it. After getting off the bus, the students took out the things, the bus went. After hiking to find a flat lawn, Shinya and physical education teacher Zhang Jian greeted the students' first tent, and then set up pots and pans to build stoves, all kinds of rice and vegetables ready, everything is ready, waiting for 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon to cook. Sea time is still early, Shinya let everyone free to move, but cannot go far. The air in the mountains was good, so everyone wandered around the neighborhood. Xin Feng walked around with Xiao Meng and looked at the village looming in the distance, thinking that everything was quite normal, unlike what's strange off. But since the odd man's mansion said that people were always inexplicably disappearing here, there must be something wrong. At the same time Qin Feng was observing the surroundings, in a flat area in the distance, there were also a few people with binoculars looking at Qin Feng. This person was Uncle Jiang, the head of the Qiren mansion, and next to him was an old man in his 50s or 60s, the very same old man who had blocked Qin Feng with a hand decision in the Qiren mansion. The last one was the haughty young woman. 
Head seat, can he really? The woman asked Uncle Jiang. The middle-aged man, Uncle Jiang, smiled and said, I've been observing him for a period of time, and there are definitely secrets in his body. Of course that's not the point, everyone has secrets. But he's different, he has not weak ability, has his own bottom line, the main thing is that his character is not bad, much better than some people with strong ability and poor character without bottom line. At this time that old man also said to the woman, Shayan ah, this Qin Feng last time blocked me a hand decision can see that his strength is not weak, now seems to be even stronger, not to be underestimated ah. But, the woman seemed to think of something and said, those headless things are too scary, I don't know if he can deal with them. Moreover, there are so many more students. Uncle Jian laughed, do you think I'm really stupid, getting so many students is putting them in danger? Since the ones we encountered are ghosts, having more people means more popularity, and it may not be impossible to act as a deterrent to those ghosts and evils. Hearing this Xia Yan nodded and didn't say anything else. Time passed by minute by minute, it was almost dark, the students started cooking. Usually pampered, they now began to experience the feeling of doing it on their own, but also entertained themselves. After the meal, it was dark. Lights were lit around the tents, and everyone sat around between several large tents with a fire burning in the center, and began to engage in activities. First, a few girls from the class went up and performed a dance, and some boys went up and did a comedy routine. Just when everyone was having fun, a cold wind blew around them, and all the embers of the fire in the center fluttered, and the flames turned strangely long and blue. Xiao Meng shrunk her neck and turned her head to Qin Feng, suddenly it's chilly, eh? What are you looking at, Qin Feng? Qin Feng signaled Xiao Meng to keep quiet and then looked in the direction of the village and said, If you look at the direction of the village from this position, does it look like there's a big empty gate at the entrance of the village there? Xiao Meng froze, then looked, sure enough, the distant village direction village entrance, seems to vaguely have a tall, similar to the pagoda of the empty door. This, ghost, ghost door? Chapter 41 Unmanned Village as Xiao Meng looked at the thing that seemed like a huge door-like thing at the entrance of the village that was vaguely visible in the distance, she couldn't help but associate it with the name of the village, Ghost Gate Village, because this door-like thing was not there during the day. But now it was faintly visible, very spooky. Qin Feng withdrew his gaze and took a deep breath, feeling that this trip to the western mountain was definitely not simple anymore. Qin Feng, will that village be weird? Xiao Meng asked suspiciously. Qin Feng said, maybe, whatever happens you don't care. Little Dream nodded, but curiosity was still high. It's a bit chilly in the mountains, everyone is hugging their bladders at the moment, all wearing short sleeves. Seeing this, Teacher Chinya continued to let everyone play in order to liven up the atmosphere. Qin Feng is a bit speechless, the surrounding is so heavy with Yin Qi, still playing? Play a ball ah? But he didn't say anything. Everyone played until 10 o'clock at night, then Chenya let everyone rest. Several large tents can sleep 10 people in one, 5 tents everyone stayed. The night in the mountains was unusually quiet. In the boys' tent, Qin Feng listened to the rising and falling snores, but did not fall asleep. Waiting until 12 o'clock at night, Qin Feng made sure everyone was asleep before he quietly got up and went out of the tent. The Yin Qi outside was getting heavier and heavier, to the point where an ordinary person could see a layer of white mist. Qin Feng frowned and looked around, around his extraordinary pair of zombie eyes, but he could only see within a few dozen meters. The village in the distance was no longer within visual range. Since this village is said to be odd, then I'll explore the ghost gate village at night to see what's odd about it. As the words fell, Qin Feng headed towards the village, and not long after, he once again saw the black pagoda at the entrance of the village. After getting closer and looking at it, three big words were written on this pagoda, ghost gate village. The pagoda was carved in black stone and was very large, it was normal to place it at the entrance of the village to mark the name of the place. What's not normal is that this thing is not there in the daytime, but at night when it's dark, it appears inexplicably. After a few more glances, Qin Feng walked into the pagoda and entered the village. Inside the village, it was pitch black, and every household had closed their doors and turned off their lights, as if it was an uninhabited village. Walking in the village where the households were densely packed, it was surprising that not the slightest movement could be heard. Although everyone in the countryside rests early, but not to 12 o'clock at night, this village of hundreds of people of bright lights are not right? In the village walked for a while, not to mention people, the dog did not see a dog. Even if the people are asleep, the dogs are also asleep? With doubts, Qin Feng continued to walk to the center of the village, saw a temple. There was even a hint of firelight in this temple, and when he looked inside, he saw a kerosene lamp with a greenish light on the table in the temple. Upon taking a closer look, Qin Feng frowned, because he then saw that there were actually a dozen people kneeling in that temple. These people were kneeling there motionlessly, if not for Qin Feng's good eyesight, it would really be hard to spot them. So he slowly walked over and after looking at the dozen people kneeling in the temple, he couldn't help but speak. Excuse me, excuse me, may I ask if you have a flashlight here? 
Qin Feng was just about to find a reason to strike up a conversation when he saw those people stand up in unison before turning back together. Qin Feng's eyes glazed over and he couldn't help but take two steps back, a wave of fear inexplicably welling up in his heart. Only after these people stood up did Qin Feng see clearly that they actually did not have heads. No heads, only bodies. Empty necks, too scary, even Qin Feng was startled. The key name of these headless people also turned their bodies to look at Qin Feng, as if that headless neck invariably have a pair of eyes in general, too oozing. Qin Feng swallowed his saliva, inexplicably nervous. Those headless bodies turned towards Qin Feng for a minute or two before they all turned around again and knelt down towards the idol in that temple. Only then did Qin Feng let out a sigh of relief, and then also looked up at the idol. It was only after this look that he realized that yeah the idol didn't have a head either, there was only a body in armor that was majestic, while also revealing a bit of an evil aura. Slowly backing up a bit, Qin Feng felt that this temple was too weird to bother with for now. He now desperately wanted to see the other villagers, as he always felt in his heart that all the people in this village were, probably, not right. This time, he had no scruples and looked for a house and went straight up to knock on the door. With a knock on the door after, there was movement in the house, then the door was opened. Then, Qin Feng froze. The villager who opened the door, actually also did not have a head. Because there is no head, that villager also did not speak, just invisible, as if there is still a pair of eyes, staring at Qin Feng. Qin Feng swallowed a mouthful of saliva, really ah, this village of people, most likely are headless ghosts. Actually, whether they were people or ghosts, Qin Feng hadn't seen it yet. Because the entire village was gloomy, looking at anyone looked like a ghost. That. Qin Feng did not know what to say for a while, hesitated before continuing. Is there. A flashlight? After thinking about it, he could only ask again, because he really didn't know what to say. The headless man stood for a while and suddenly snapped the door shut. Qin Feng was speechless, then he went and knocked on a few more doors and realized that the ones inside were all headless ghosts. A village full of headless ghosts, Nima, where is this someone missing? Is there no one at all alright? Qin Feng felt it was too scary. The whole village was at least a few hundred people, if they were all headless ghosts, I'm afraid that only a large number of ghostbusters coming from the hell would be able to do something about it. Thinking of this, he felt that it was pointless for him to be right here, it was better to hurry back. So he went towards the village entrance. But went to the village entrance, that tall pagoda actually disappeared. This thing appeared very suddenly, did not expect to disappear even more suddenly. Qin Feng did not think too much, so he went out of the village, toward the place where the students pitched their tents. But after walking for a while, the white fog around him became heavier and heavier, and Qin Feng actually became a little confused about the direction. It seemed like he was lost in the Yin Qi, and no matter how he walked, he couldn't find the location of the tent. Qin Feng's face became more and more gloomy, he used his corpse qi to try to disperse the surrounding Yin Qi, but the Yin Qi was too heavy, his corpse qi couldn't effectively disperse it. After walking for an unknown period of time, Qin Feng didn't even know where the hell he was now. So he turned back and walked, but within a minute, he actually returned to the village. In an instant, he thought of a bizarre phenomenon, ghosts hitting the walls. Looking outside the village, there is no point in walking further, so he went straight back to the village. Walking in the village, originally Qin Feng thought of just casually strolling around, but he didn't want to, this time a few headless ghosts appeared in front of him. They had knives in their hands and they all rushed towards Qin Feng. Qin Feng's face changed and he hurriedly resisted, and in a flash, he fought with these headless ghosts. Although these headless ghosts were scary, Qin Feng was after all a white-eyed zombie, so the knives of these ghosts slashed at him, doing him almost no harm. And every time Qin Feng's corpse Qi hit these headless ghosts, he hit them with ghost Qi staining their bodies. Not long after, several headless ghosts were all beaten to death, while at this time, another headless ghost wearing armor as if it was a general appeared in front of him. Chapter 42, The Wind Titans and Pulls The armor on this headless ghost wearing armor was much worse compared to the armor of the stone general in the temple. But obviously, it was again more powerful than those headless ghosts just now. Qin Feng had to be cautious because this time, this headless ghost had a very heavy Yin Qi on it and was tall, carrying a large sword in his hand with an aggressive aura. Qin Feng took a deep breath and then took a step. That headless ghost is also quickly rushed out, both speed is very fast, a meat, the big knife swung at Qin Feng cut down. Qin Feng's body dodged, then a fist bang, smashed in the headless ghost's chest, instantly shocked the headless ghost flew backwards. But that headless ghost as if it had been through a hundred battles, flying out backwards at the same time also with a large sword swung violently, even still a knife chopped at Qin Feng body. With a snort, Qin Feng's body was hacked by the large knife was also backward, but because his body was covered with corpse qi, at the moment copper head and iron arm, that knife did not hurt him at all. The headless ghost and Qin Feng stabilized their bodies at almost the same time before they both charged out towards each other again. After meeting each other, the fist and the big knife continued to hard anus, Qin Feng's fist condensed corpse qi, directly smashed his fist on the falling big knife. 
With a bang, the large knife shook and flew. Then Sheen Feng's second fist smashed out, but the headless ghost grabbed his fist. Immediately, Sheen Feng let out a cold laugh, then corpse chi quickly erupted from his fist, while ghost chi quickly dissipated from that headless ghost's hand. By the time it reacted and immediately let go of its hand, the entire palm had already been eroded by Qin Feng's corpse chi as if it was melting ice. He he he, it doesn't look like it's any good. Qin Feng said as he quickly stepped forward, his fists that condensed corpse chi thumped and thumped continuously on that headless ghost's body. Because he was too fast, the headless ghost was constantly getting hit and was unable to counterattack for a while. At the same time, every time Qin Feng punched it, the ghostly chi on its body would dissipate a lot. Without reaching 10 punches, the headless ghost directly turned into a ball of black gas and dissipated into nothingness. Closing his fist and standing, Xin Feng smiled with satisfaction. This was the advantage of a zombie. Although the other party's battle power was more powerful than his own, but how the other party attacked himself, he would be fine. And although he is now at a low level, attacking the opponent a few more times would be enough. This was being invincible at the same level, and also being able to fight across levels. Looking around, no headless ghosts came out again this time, so Qin Feng found a place to sit down. Now in this situation, he can only wait for the dawn, otherwise if he goes out, he still won't be able to find his way back to the tent. Time was lost, minute by minute. After an unknown amount of time, Qin Feng almost fell asleep while sitting there, when suddenly he sensed danger. Then the moment he opened his eyes, he felt as if his neck had been cut by something sharp, making a dang sound. He hurriedly turned his head and saw that behind him, there was actually another headless ghost in armor standing. This headless ghost was holding a machete in his hand, facing Qin Feng. At the moment, there was a blunt cut on that machete, obviously from cutting Qin Feng's neck. Qin Feng's neck, on the other hand, was unharmed. That headless ghost froze, and it was conceivable that if it had a head, it would definitely be in a daze. And Qin Feng was even more dumbfounded, rubbing his sleepy eyes and saying, What are you, doing? The human head ghost could not speak, but waved the machete in his hand, the meaning is obvious, I cut your head. Qin Feng yawned and said to the headless ghost, Get out of the way and play, tossing, and turning all night sleepy, I'm going to sleep. Said Qin Feng as he continued to sleep, the headless ghost froze again, if it had a head, its expression at this moment would definitely be angry. It would definitely say, Big brother, I'm here to chop off your head, can you respect me? Apparently Qin Feng was very disrespectful to it because he was asleep and snoring. Now the headless ghost was furious and raised its knife to chop Qin Feng's neck again with a bang. As a result, Qin Feng did not even move but instead the machete was once again shaken, and up the roll mouth, the knife has been ruined. This headless ghost gas, knife a throw, then a cohesion of ghost gas hand to Qin Feng neck scratch, only to hear a snorting sound, Qin Feng's body's corpse gas instead of the ghost gas erosion, shocked the headless ghost rushed backward. Then the headless ghost quickly left, it could not kill Qin Feng, the wind is tight pulling call. After the headless ghost left, Qin Feng continued to sleep. During this period, several other headless ghosts appeared from time to time, all of them came to kill Qin Feng but none of them killed the sleeping Qin Feng. Until later, it was almost dawn, and he could vaguely see his surroundings. So Qin Feng got up and realized that he was standing at the entrance of the village, and also saw the pagoda at the entrance of the village. He was puzzled and walked out of the pagoda, turned his head to look, damn in the twinkling of an eye the huge pagoda was gone again. And at this moment, when he looked at the village, he also felt that the whole village was different from the previous one. He walked into the village again, looked back, the village entrance pagoda or no, into the village, the village temple those headless ghosts are gone. The whole village in Chi is gone, there are dogs barking, there are chickens barking, everything is no difference with the ordinary village. Gradually the light of day, many people's homes chimneys began to smoke, there are people go out to work in the field. These people looked like normal people, nothing special. Some of them even smiled and nodded when they saw Qin Feng. Qin Feng was confused, why was there such a big difference between day and night in this village? He couldn't help but wonder and asked an uncle who was down on the ground. Uncle, I came to the village last night, why didn't I see anyone? He didn't say headless ghosts, only that he didn't find anyone. Who knew that uncle's face changed when he heard that and said, Young man, you came to the village at night? Yeah why? Qin Feng asked. That uncle looked Qin Feng up and down and said, Our ghost gate village, coming in during the day is an ordinary village, coming in at night is a ghost village. Qin Feng hurriedly asked, Uncle, can you speak carefully? That uncle said, if you really entered the village last night, it was not into the village where our living people live, but to another village where the dead stay. It's a mysterious thing to say, but that's what it means. If you come to our village during the day, at night, it's okay for you to wander around the village. But you can never go out of the village at night, much less enter the village at night. Because when the ghost gate opens at the entrance of the village at night, what you go out and come back in is not a place for people to stay. Hearing this, Qin Feng instantly understood. 
He then says why the gap between the village during the day and night is so big, together they are simply different spaces. During the daytime the village was a village in the young world, without the three characters of Ghost Gate Village on the plaque. At night the entrance was changed, there was an extra plaque, and what came in was a ghost village, not a village where people live. That uncle looked at Qin Feng again and said, Young man, you have a great life, you went to the ghost village at night and actually came out. Pity the dozen innocent people who went in and never came out. Qin Feng didn't say anything, after looking at the uncle in the distance, he left the village and went back to his tent. But as soon as he went back he froze, because there was no one in the tent and several people had disappeared. Damn. Xin Feng's body shook as a bad premonition surged through his heart. Chapter 43, Leaving People Under the Knife After searching around the neighborhood for a few times and not finding a single classmate, Xin Feng knew that something must have happened. But where to find them now? Frowning, Xin Feng stood still for a long time thinking. Nothing had been taken away from the tent, only the flashlights were missing, indicating that they had gone out at odd hours of the night. Since they were up, they must have realized that Xin Feng was missing. So many people with only flashlights and nothing else went out together, they must have gone to look for Qin Feng. Thinking of this, Qin Feng expanded his search and went a bit deeper into the mountains. He ran up very fast, even if the mountain road is not good is much faster than normal people. But after half a day of searching, he still found nothing, not even a little clue. Finally, Qin Feng suddenly thought of a possibility. Could they have guessed that they had gone to the village and gone to the village to look for themselves as well? The village was a ghost village last night, and Qin Feng was also in a state of being lost in it, so if so many students had gone in, it would be normal for him not to have found it. If that was really the case, then it would be serious. And it was at this time that three figures walked over in the distance. These three figures Qin Feng recognized, it was Uncle Jiang of the strange man's mansion and that old man as well as the condescending woman. After the three approached, Qin Feng frowned and said, Are you satisfied now? Uncle Jiang said awkwardly, Eh, what does little brother mean by that? What do you mean? Didn't you guys try your best to get me here? Now that a class of students has gone missing, don't you guys think that the loss outweighs the gain? Xin Feng's tone was unkind. Don't worry little brother, last night we watched them enter the village in order to find you. The old man spoke. Xin Feng coldly grunted, I know they went into the village, but the entrance to the village that night was the entrance to the ghost village, once you enter, there are no living people inside all headless ghosts, do you guys think it's dangerous for them to be in there? At this time, that Uncle Jiang was surprised and said, you have already discovered this situation? I really did not see the wrong person, you are right, the night to go is definitely the ghost village. But don't worry, we saw them enter the ghost village at dawn, it's daytime now, and there are no ghosts in the ghost village. As long as the ghost village opens at night and we rush in, they'll be fine. Hearing this, Qin Feng thought about it, and only then did he feel a bit more at ease. Then he said, you guys watched them go in? Little brother listen to me, there are numerous ghosts and monsters in this ghost village, a single person who is powerful enough to go and may not be able to deal with them. And once there are more people, enough popularity can suppress the ghostly chi inside. The old man hurriedly explained. At the same time, Uncle Jiang said, and we still need the help of these students to sing a play. Sing an opera? Qin Feng was puzzled. Uncle Jiang and the old man both laughed, while that condescending woman Xiaoyan pointed to a few large bags in the distance, which seemed to be loaded with theater costumes, hell really want to sing an opera? Although Qin Feng was puzzled, he was not in the mood to ask more questions. He now just wants to hurry up and get dark so he can go in and save everyone. Sitting on a rock outside the village, the old man said to Qin Feng, Little friend, I haven't formally gotten to know you yet. My name is Blackwood Taoist, I am a disciple of the local Taoist sect Sanqing Mountain, my cultivation is poor due to my stupid talent, I later left Sanqing Mountain and went down to the secular world, and then I was sought out by the odd man's mansion to ask me to join them. Qin Feng nodded and then heard the condescending woman say, My name is Xiaoyan, I was born to be able to see ghosts and evils, my body is special, and I have a strong resistance to blows, in addition to being in charge of finding special people to join the odd man's mansion. Qin Feng nodded again and looked at Uncle Zhang. Uncle Jiang smiled and said, I'm also considered a person of cultivation, slightly stronger than Hei Mu, before I became the head of this odd man's mansion. Qin Feng didn't say anything, but in his heart, he knew that this Uncle Jiang was much stronger than old Taoist Blackwood. At this time, Uncle Jiang said to old Taoist Blackwood, By the way, didn't you say that you have a nephew who was coming to help you? Old Taoist Blackwood looked at his watch, he should be here soon, this nephew of mine is also among the geniuses in the younger generation of Sanqing Mountain. With his help, our pressure is much less. One sentence should be here soon, let everyone wait it until it was dark but did not arrive. Seeing the sun setting, old Taoist Blackwood looked at his watch, my nephew should be arriving soon. Qin Feng rolls his eyes and at the same time sees a village not far away, a pagoda vaguely appears. Above the pagoda, the three big characters of Ghost Gate Village are particularly conspicuous and ghostly. 
Ghost village appears, quick, bring your costume and enter the village. Uncle Jiang said hurriedly. Xin Feng, on the other hand, didn't bother to nag, his body flashed and rushed in towards the ghost gate village. The ghost gate was wide open, and the entrance was no longer a ghostly village in the young world. After entering it, Xin Feng immediately saw some headless ghosts inside. These headless ghosts were all standing in the village, as if they knew that Qin Feng was coming and were deliberately waiting here. Moreover, these headless ghosts were all holding large swords, invisibly as if they had a pair of eyes looking at Qin Feng. Qin Feng knew that it wasn't that easy to get in, so he clenched his fists and his body's corpse Qi emerged. By the time old Taoist Blackwood and the others entered the village, Qin Feng had already taken a step out and charged at those headless ghosts. Those headless ghosts were also holding their swords and stepped forward, and between the swings of the large swords in their hands, terrifying ghost qi erupted, and the corpse qi that Qin Feng's fist slammed over clashed together, instantly emitting a snapping sound. Qin Feng carries white corpse qi, between his fist swings, shocked on top of those big knives, after shocking all those big knives away, his fist hurriedly attacks on the headless ghosts again. After the sound of thumping, a few headless ghosts quickly went up and smoke under Qin Feng's fist. However, the other few headless ghosts continued to charge at him. At this time, old Taoist Blackwood and the others rushed over and shouted at Qin Feng, little brother, you go save the others first, we'll deal with these few ghosts. Qin Feng nodded his head, his body flashed around the few headless ghosts and headed towards the village. And at this moment, outside the village temple, forty or so figures stood there in unison. These people were none other than Qin Feng's classmates, as well as the two teachers. Around them stood many headless ghosts, about two dozen of them, all holding large swords surrounding these students. Outside the temple, Two headless ghosts wearing armor as if they were generals stood on the left and right. At this moment, these students are very afraid, almost everyone's face is pale body trembling, some even cried. All. Oh, blame that Qin Feng. Big night do not sleep to run what, caused everyone now to die. A boy said with a trembling voice. Then everyone began to complain, damn. Dead Qin Feng, if I had known. Me. We wouldn't have looked for him. Oh. I. Don't want to die. I'm still so young. I'm still a virgin. I don't want to die. A man directly cried. At this time, suddenly a voice came out from the temple, kill. The surrounding headless ghosts raised their large knives together, looking like they were about to slash down at those students. These students were scared to death at the moment, on the verge of collapse. However, right at this moment, a figure quickly rushed over and shouted, stay under the knife. Chapter 44, it's here to be funny. With a loud shout, those headless ghosts froze after raising their knives. Then a figure appeared in the field, and it was none other than Qin Feng. Qin Feng first looked at the whole class, there were none missing before he sighed in relief. At the same time, Xiaoming's heart was also put down, she had been worried that Qin Feng had an accident. At this time, those headless ghosts were already holding knives and rushing towards Qin Feng. Qin Feng snorted coldly and slammed his fist out, hitting a headless ghost in the chest with a thud, and that headless ghost directly flew away. This angered all the headless ghosts around, and they all surrounded Qin Feng. Those students, on the other hand, hastily backed away, only Xiaomang shouted, Xin Feng, be careful. Chen Ya and physical education teacher Zhang Jian retreated to a certain position, then they all looked at Qin Feng worriedly. At the same time, Zhang Jian couldn't help but want to go up to help, but before he could get close, he was hit by a trace of Yin Qi and flew backward. At once, Zhang Jian was embarrassed, the students were also speechless, a girl said, Mr. Zhang, your physical fitness cannot ah. Zhang Jian hurriedly said, nonsense, otherwise why do I keep calling in sick for gym class? Looking at Qin Feng again, he remained calm in the face of two dozen headless ghosts. Those headless ghosts kept slashing at Qin Feng with their large swords, but once the ghostly swords opened up, Qin Feng could not be seen anymore. Because Qin Feng had already easily dodged them with his maneuvering position and continued to make a fist in his hand to dry them out. In a short period of time, Qin Feng had already destroyed four headless ghosts. The two headless ghosts in general's armor outside the temple rushed up and could not help Qin Feng. However, this also seemed to have angered the one in the temple who had spoken earlier. Inside the temple, the headless stone statue suddenly emitted a strong black gas. Then the black gas took shape and coalesced into a headless ghost with a tall and sturdy figure. This headless ghost was covered in black armor as if it was still stained with blood, and his thick arm held a two-meter tall long pole dagger. The blade of this large knife was still dripping with blood, as if it had just chopped someone. Moreover, this general-like headless ghost had black gas rising from its headless neck, which vaguely formed the likeness of a human head, as well as a pair of pitch black eyes, which at the moment seemed to be staring at Qin Feng in death. He saw this ghost shouting, I am the ghost general is also, who are you, how dare you be so reckless in front of this general. Qin Feng sneered and then said, a beheaded body, must be a defeated army, also dare to show off here, don't you think it's embarrassing? This seemed to be that ghost general's soft spot of pain, since they all had no head and were ancient generals, 
They must have been defeated and beheaded, so Qin Feng's words immediately angered this ghost general. Roar ah ah ah. Thou this vertical sun, looking for death. As the words fell, the ghost general carried a two-meter sword and slashed at Qin Feng. Qin Feng coldly laughed, lifted his foot and kicked on the long pole of the great sword, a bang shook both of them backward. Then Qin Feng once again shouted, a general of a defeated army, showing off after death, simply pathetic, even more pathetic. Shut up, vertical sun shut up. This ghost general was so angry that he couldn't even do it, his large sword once again slashed at Qin Feng, carrying a terrifying ghostly aura. Qin Feng did not dare to be careless, between the white corpse qi condensation, sidestepped the big knife and smashed his fist on the blade. When a shocking sound, the ghost general retreated two steps back suddenly with a long pull atop, poking in Qin Feng's chest, shocked Qin Feng flew backwards to fall to the ground. After rubbing his chest, Qin Feng hurriedly stood up and dodged away. And where he originally stood, the large sword slashed down violently, a stone slab instantly shattering. Eyes glaring, Qin Feng secretly this ghost general really powerful, if not his own as the body of zombie, just received a bit of estimate will be finished. At this time the ghost general continued to attack Qin Feng, between the opening and closing of the sword ghost gas surging, incomparable terrible. Qin Feng's corpse qi compared to it all looks less, good thing that the ghost qi itself is not as good as the corpse qi, and the ghost qi to Qin Feng's damage, almost no. So that was why Qin Feng and this ghost general could fight for so long. However, right at this moment, Uncle Jiang and the three of them all rushed over as well, along with a young man around 20 years old, a very skinny guy who also dyed his hair yellow, just like a punk. As soon as this guy came out, he started to fool around, shouting, Tai, that headless ghost, your Taoist master yellow hair is here, don't hurry and kneel down to die. The domineering words fell, he held the peachwood sword and charged forward in a majestic manner. As a result, the girl did not see a stone on the ground, directly fell a dog eating Xiang. When he climbed up again, his mouth had swollen into two sausages, hanging on his thin face, especially conspicuous. Seeing the situation all the people in the room are speechless, you girl is too funny, right? In everyone's confused and speechless time, yellow hair in order to save face, holding a peachwood sword rushed up to be with the ghost general dry. The ghost general at the moment is angry, also not polite, the hand of the big knife roll between, with a terrible ghost gas ruthlessly cut in the yellow hair of the mahogany sword on a number of times. To say that the mahogany sword itself is to deal with ghosts and evil, so the infinite power can break the stone of the big knife cut on it, but also did not cut the mahogany sword. But the huge force is shocked yellow hair arm numbness, as soon as possible he read the incantation to the mahogany sword pinch hands, bite through the finger smeared with blood, cannot resist the ghost general's terrible power. So this good shameless to Qin Feng said, brother, or you come, I can't eat, the wind is tight pull call. The words fell this goods hurriedly flash back, also do not mind shame. Qin Feng helplessly rolled his eyes, this bastard is absolutely too funny. Then the ghost general once again raised his sword to Qin Feng rushed, Qin Feng also cold snort rushed up. Qin Feng's strength is not as good as the ghost general, but his zombie body is also so that the ghost general can do nothing to him. So the two were at a standstill for a while, neither could do anything to the other. Looking at the other side, old Taoist Blackwood and Uncle Jiang as well as the newly joined yellow hair fought against the remaining dozen headless ghosts, while the condescending woman, Yen Tong, was distributing the costumes to the students to put on. Not long after, all the students and teachers put on the ancient soldier and general's costumes, each holding a weapon prop in their hands. And under the command of Yen Tong, they stood in a row, making them work hard to make angry and ferocious expressions. At this time, Huang Mao took the time to touch a handful of talismans, each person divided two, one posted on the chest, one posted on the weapon props. With that, Yen Tong looked at the remaining piece of the general's costume in his hand and said, Who wears this one? Qin Feng was fighting with the ghost general while keeping an eye on this side, and vaguely he understood the meaning of the singing, so he dashed and rushed over to take the general's costume. Then he quickly put it on his body and took the large sword in Yen Tong's hand. The sword was a real one, but it should be many years old and was rusty, but it had been treated. Holding this great sword, Qin Feng was dressed in the general's armor, his head held high, his eyes glaring angrily, invisibly as if he also felt an aura of galloping into the battlefield. And at this moment, that ghost general rushed over holding the two-meter greatsword. Just saw Qin Feng glaring and shouting, bold. Fiercely, that ghost general took a few steps back, as if he had seen something terrifying. Chapter 45 Acting At this moment, Qin Feng stood there in full armor, like a general, holding a large sword full of killing aura. The dozens of students behind him were like soldiers and generals at the moment, all of them trying their best to look fierce. It felt as if they were some of the generals from the ancient times. It was also at this time that Blackwood Old Dao walked out wearing a eunuch's clothes, holding something similar to an ancient holy decree in his hand, and said in an effeminate manner, Great General of Divine might receive the decree. Saying this he looked at Qin Feng, who immediately understood and said, I accept the decree. 
By the Emperor's decree, the rebel general Black Tiger and the offending traitor's three princes conspire to conspire, want to plot against, disobedience, today I decree, make the general of gods might wrestle the crowd to siege, one not to stay. I am hereby authorized to order General Shen Wei to surround and annihilate all of them, and not to leave a single one of them. Blackwood Old Road collected the imperial decree and retreated, Qin Feng cooperated with the play, holding the knife and looking angrily at the ghost general, shouting, General Black Tiger, disobedience, this general personally, how dare you resist? Who knows that the ghost general actually knelt on the ground at once, including those headless ghosts around, also kneeled. At the same time, the ghost general issued a voice, I know the crime, please your majesty net open one side, I know the crime. Old Taoist Blackwood hurriedly gave Qin Feng a wink, Qin Feng continued to cross his eyes and waved his hand. Men, give me the rebels to behead them all. Then Uncle Zhang and Yen Tong hurriedly signaled for the students to take the prop knives labeled with talismans to cut down the headless ghosts who were holding their knees. Although these students were scared, after experiencing almost being beheaded by these headless ghosts before, they also knew that if they didn't do as they were told, they might be finished for the day. So one by one, they gritted their teeth and walked forward with trembling steps. Among these people, it was only Little Dream who was still calm, raising his sword and slashing at a headless ghost with a snort. The headless ghost fell to the ground violently, then turned into black gas and dissipated. Because these students had talismans attached to their bodies, they would not be contaminated with ghostly yin qi, while the talismans attached to their prop knives would help them kill ghosts. Seeing Xiaoming, the school flower, dared to kill ghosts, many girls were not willing to show weakness, and the men even felt that they couldn't save face, and all of them were bullish. As a result, the knives rose and fell, and one by one, the headless ghosts were quickly dispersed. Originally here a dozen headless ghosts plus dozens of headless ghosts walking out of the village have been cut to pieces. In the end, only the ghost general remained. It was very scared, its body trembled slightly, and its mouth said, I deserve to die. Please ask your majesty for leniency. I got killed. As if history repeats itself, Qin Feng did not hesitate, the ancient sword in his hand, condensed the corpse chi in his body, and fiercely chopped down at the ghost general. Thumb. Ah. The ghost general screamed miserably and collapsed to the ground, a cloud of black smoke emanating from his body and slowly dissipating. Qin Feng himself was stunned, this ghost general can be said to be very difficult to deal with, he simply did not have the certainty that he could exterminate it, I did not expect that he would now be killed with a single slash. After the ghost general had completely dissipated, the Yin Qi around here was also rapidly dissipating. In the blink of an eye, as if from the original gloomy and foggy, became clear at once. Although it was still night, it looked far too normal. Looking at the village entrance from afar, the pagoda was gone. The village has a dog barking, indicating that the ghost village is gone, and now, it is a village in the Yang world. Looking at the ancient knife in his hand, Xin Feng sighed and said to Old Taoist Blackwood, This knife, it's from ancient times, right? Old Taoist Blackwood smiles and says, Not only is it from ancient times, but it's also General Shenwei's saber, the same saber that beheaded General Black Tiger. And that General Black Tiger is also the ghost general just now. Back then, in a certain dynasty, there was a prince who plotted against the king and convinced this black tiger general. Later on, the king was suppressed, and the black tiger general fled here at the rate of his men's cronies who knew that they were involved in the rebellion. But then the court at that time sent the first general, great general Shinwei, here to decapitate the rebel general Hei Hu. General Hei Hu was afraid of general Shinwei, and knowing that there was no way to live, he didn't put up any resistance and obediently suffered death. Qin Feng nodded, it was pretty much the same as what he had guessed. From the time they said they were acting and took out their ancient costumes, Xin Feng had guessed it. After all, ghosts, most of them were affected because of what happened in their lives. This ghost general's greatest fear was when it was beheaded as a rebel in life, and it became its obsession after death. Xin Feng and the others had once again staged the scene from back then, which was considered to be a direct pinch on the ghost generals their death throes. This matter was resolved, so Xin Feng said, since you guys know these things well and have the means to deal with them, why do you still have to ask me to come? Uncle Jiang smiled at this time and said, if it were any one of us, I'm afraid we wouldn't have your aura of carrying a sword, let alone shocking the ghost general and beheading it. With this ass kissing, Qin Feng instantly stopped getting angry. However, he still has doubts. What about the village, the missing people? Smiling, Uncle Jiang said, already dead, after entering the ghost village, can they not die? Qin Feng smiled, at the beginning when he entered the ghost village, there were a dozen headless ghosts kneeling in the temple, wearing modern clothes, so he thought that they were the missing people who died in the ghost village. No matter what, now that the ghost general is dead and the ghost village is gone, this ghost gate village, there won't be any more spooky things in the future. Seeing everyone surrounding Qin Feng, Yellowhair immediately topped his sausage mouth and came out to pretend to be a bully and said, Okay, okay, everyone don't get entangled, it's all a small scene, don't make it look like you've never seen the world before. Qin Feng laughed, 
The mouth is swollen like this, but also a small scene? The crowd burst out laughing, yellow hair had an embarrassed face. After leaving the village, they all returned to the tent site. For many students, this field activity, too meaningful, damn breaking into the ghost village was almost beheaded by a ghost, and in the end, against all odds, cut down the ghost. And from this beginning, they also worshipped Qin Feng even more, this is the guy who can fight the ghost general with his bare hands, the crowd can't help but be convinced. Yellow hair and blackwood Lao Dao, they also temporarily stayed in the tent for a while, they will leave tomorrow anyway. This night, everyone slept pretty well. Only the next morning when they got up, Blackwood Lao Dao was surprised and said, How come yellow hair is gone? Uncle Jiang went to the toilet. Blackwood Old Dao worriedly said, Impossible, I've been awake for an hour and haven't seen him. At that moment, he didn't say much, so he found a yellow hair in the place where yellow hair slept, then he touched a talisman, wrapped the hair in it, and recited the incantation to fold it into a thousand paper cranes. The paper crane has a spirit, a thousand miles to find someone. The incantation fell, the crane actually fluttered its wings and flew up. Qin Feng's eyes glared, crap. Really envious of their Taoist priests, how cool this spell is used. The thousand paper cranes flew out and actually headed for the mountains. So old Taoist Blackwood and Uncle Zhang as well as Yen Tong all chased after it. Qin Feng hesitated for a moment and took Xiao Meng with him to follow. Chapter 46, The Auction Begins. The thousand paper cranes entered the mountain and flew for some time before landing in front of a cave entrance. A few people were puzzled, when they saw old Taoist Blackwood carefully walking to the cave entrance and shouted, Yellow hair? There was no response, and looking at the thousand paper cranes again, he was sure that yellow hair was here, so he shouted a few more times. Immediately after that, a figure suddenly emerged from the hole, frightening a few people hurriedly backed up, and then took a look and froze. The figure that came out of this hole was actually a guy with a human body and a dog head. Demon. Demon? Blackwood old Dao's face changed greatly. The human body dog head demon looked angrily at a few people and said, What's the noise? The Blackwood old road swallowed his saliva and said, This mister. Demon, I. We are here to look for someone, is there a person with a head of yellow hair in your place? Who knows that this dog-headed human body demon actually said, There is a yellow hair, but he is not a human being, he is also a demon, you don't want to take him away. Blackwood old Taoist froze and said, He is my nephew, a Taoist cultivation is more powerful than me, how can he be a demon? When I say he's a demon he's a demon, don't think I don't know, you hateful humans captured him, luckily I saved him. This dog-headed demon said with a straight face, but at this point, Qin Feng also absolutely this dog-headed humanoid demon must have misunderstood, because if you think about it, yellow hair really looks like a demon at first glance. First of all, that head of yellow hair is enough anti-human head shape, plus last night fell a sausage mouth, simply then in front of this dog-head human body of the demon monster is still like a demon ah. So Qin Feng opened his mouth, why don't you do this, you get him out first and let him say himself whether he is a demon or not. The dog-headed humanoid demon thought it made sense, so he went into the hole and resisted coming out a person, which was Huang Mao. But this good's actually still huffing and puffing, damn by the demon from the tent out to the demon cave he did not wake up, the heart is also too bigot. Hey, yellow hair? Wake up. Xin Feng shouted a few times. Yellow hair only opened his eyes, got up and looked at the crowd dissatisfied said, noisy what ah, still let people sleep? Blackwood old road rolled his eyes and said, you this guy, by the demon resistance to the demon cave you do not know? Yellow hair scratched his head and said, is there such a thing? At this time he looked around and realized that something was wrong, how did he wake up and come in the mountains? Then he turned his head to look at the human body dog head demon, froze, then backed up two steps and stood beside Qin Feng and then said to the human body dog head demon, crap, where did the dog demon come from? You're the dog demon, I'm the wolf demon, can't you see? The demon was enraged. Yellow hair took a closer look and said, a wolf demon? It looks just like Era. By the way, why did you put me in your cave? Do you want to anus me? The wolf demon said, I see that we are all demons, so I kindly saved you from the humans, don't be ungrateful. Demons? Yellow hair froze and said, you're the demon, your whole family is a demon, don't drag me into this, I'm not. The wolf demon nodded and said, my whole family is demons, are you sure you're not? If they hold you hostage, just blink, I can save you. Save your ass, I'm a human. Yellow hair was speechless. At this time that wolf demon also scratched his head and said, could it really be that I'm mistaken? Nonsense. Yellow hair did not have a good temper and said, this heart to you to manipulate the broken, somehow I resisted the mountain to come, really. Misunderstanding was lifted, this wolf demon awkwardly went into the cave. Yellow hair they are also speechless back to the tent, then Uncle Jung they drive their own car to leave. Waiting for the time to noon, the school to the school bus, the students are also all pulled on the back to school. To the school is already in the afternoon, Xinyu said the afternoon everyone free activities, so Qin Feng and Xiaoming cleaned up a little, went to the Su Long home. 
the antique auction in the evening, Xin Feng can always hold on to. When they arrived at Su's house, after Su Long saw Xin Feng, he also hurriedly said, Little Feng Ma, I've also inquired, tonight's antique auction, there is indeed a bead called the soul fixing bead, it is said to have existed in ancient times, the way it came from is mysterious, and it is only known to have the effect of calming the spirit and nourishing the soul. Hearing this Qin Feng takes a deep breath and says to Su Long, then Uncle Su, tonight, the soul fixing bead will be a must have, at all costs. Su Long nodded, and on the side, Xiao Mang felt warm in her heart. Just after dark, Su Long's driver drove Su Long and Qin Feng as well as Little Dream to the location of this antique auction. It was a high-grade mountain villa, and at this moment, everything was ready in the auction hall. Su Long brought Qin Feng and Xiao Meng into the room and directly found a seat. This antique auction was filled with antique enthusiasts and businessmen, many of whom Su Long recognized. Everyone greeted Su Long politely when they saw him. Among these people, Qin Feng also saw an acquaintance, who was actually Zhou Zhi. This guy was also looking at Qin Feng with gloomy eyes, Qin Feng frowned, Zhou Zhi's father had been entered by the evil fiend a few days ago, and by all accounts, he couldn't last more than two days. At that time, Qin Feng said that he would help by giving him a hundred million dollars, but Zhou Zhi refused at that time, not thinking that now, he was still in the mood to come to the auction. But it was quite a surprise to Qin Feng. And after Zhou Zhi looked at Qin Feng for a few moments, he retracted his gaze with a cold snort and then said to a young man of 25 or 26 beside him, Brother Lu Qian, that kid just now, is Qin Feng. With a hint of gloom in his eyes, that young man faintly spoke, Qin Feng? That's the guy who killed my little uncle? Yes, I've investigated, the Wang family asked your little uncle, Mr. Lu, to deal with Qin Feng, but instead, he was killed by Qin Feng, and the Wang family's family was also broken. Zhou Shi said. The young man Lu Qian nodded, then faintly said, that young girl beside him, not bad. Zhou Shi frowned, but still spoke, after we clean up this brat, I'll help you get Su Meng. Lu Qian nodded, then Zhou Shi asked, brother Lu Qian, that soul fixing pearl, can it really save my father? Well, the evil fury breath in his body is too heavy. It has been in his body for too long, his soul is unstable, he needs the soul fixing bead to stabilize his soul, otherwise he will surely die. Lu Qian said. Good, no matter how much money, we must get the soul stabilizing bead today. Zhou Shi said viciously. Lu Qian laughed coldly, it's okay if you can't get it, whoever gets it then, just grab it. Zhou Shi also laughed, he knew that this young man beside him was powerful, much more powerful than that mister. What's his name Lu, the best of the spell family Lu family. With him around, Zhou Zhi was determined to win the soul determining pearl, and was even more confident in dealing with Qin Feng. As time passes by, the auction begins. The first to come up were some ordinary curiosities, everyone shouted their prices, but Qin Feng and the others were not interested at all. Chapter 47 Another Breakthrough The antique auction, as the name suggests, is to auction off some antiques. Most of them are from normal channels, but there are also some good things from special channels, and we all know it by heart. The auction began, up as the blue and white porcelain this good thing, the price is hundreds of thousands of direct start, the scene atmosphere to a high level. People continue to raise the price, and finally sold at 1,100,000. Then came out a few pieces of bronze and porcelain and jade, antique enthusiasts were excited, while Qin Feng, they are indifferent. The purpose of their visit was only for the soul determination bead. However, although he had no interest in these antiques, when Qin Feng saw the next antique that came on the stage, his brows frowned slightly. It was a jade pendant, red jade, also known as blood jade. Blood jade this thing says a lot, some of them say that blood jade itself is a rare red jade, because of the inside of the strands of red like blood, so it is called blood jade. There are also said to be a piece of spiritual jade worn on the body, to blood jade, jade inside slowly seeped into the blood, also became a veritable blood jade. The latter is too scary, so the auction only said that this jade is a rare red jade, inside the blood like red silk, natural. However, in Qin Feng's opinion, this was a blood jade that had absorbed a lot of blood chi. This blood jade, blood gas is rich, with some fury, obviously is an evil thing. By this time, many jade lovers had already raised the price, a piece of evil, actually raised to 1,300,000. Qin Feng shook his head, this thing to take back to bring, not bad luck is strange, these people really do death. However, on second thought, if he gets his hands on this thing and absorbs the powerful blood chi inside, will it be useful for his breakthrough? He couldn't forget how he felt when he ate the blood from the lips of that female doctor in the infirmary last time, at that moment, he felt that with a little more blood, he would be able to break through. However, the blood was too little, and in the end, Qin Feng only broke through when Mr. Lu broke the limit of Qin Feng's zombie body. Thinking of this, Qin Feng was ready to raise his sign. However, he heard the host, okay this gentleman bid 1,400,000, is there any more? Qin Feng froze and turned his head to look, but he saw the young man beside Zhou Zhi raise his card. Eyebrows furrowed, Qin Feng carefully sized up that young man and realized that there was a faint trace of green aura on him. A cultivator? 
What does he want with the blood jade? Sheen Foam frowned. With that, he also raised his sign and started shouting the price. As a result, that young man kept raising the price and finally got it to over $2 million. At this time, Su Long asked Sheen Foam, that jade, do you want it? Sheen Foam nodded and said, it's a bit useful to me. Su Long nods, then he raises his card and speaks faintly, $5 million. Sheen Feng's eyes glazed over, no way? That young man also froze, 3 million he could still accept, 5 million to play with ah. He just saw that this blood jade also has blood chi and wanted to use it to absorb in practice, but he felt that spending 5 million would be really unnecessary. Su Long, on the other hand, smiled at Qin Feng and said, it's just a little bit of money, even 500 million is just a little bit of money. He now regarded Qin Feng as his future son-in-law and was quite satisfied with him. Not to mention spending 5 million dollars on Qin Feng, he wouldn't even frown at 500 million dollars. Therefore, the last time in Qin Feng's helped to talk about Mr. Xie's business, a year will be nearly a billion. Blood jade into the hands of Qin Feng, that young man Lu Qian frowned, but then said, It's okay, when the time comes from your hand, just take it over. When the blood jade arrived, Su Long went to pay for it first and took it over directly. Qin Feng took the blood jade over, and as soon as it was in his hand, the terrifying blood chi seemed to be pulled by Qin Feng's zombie body. It was as if Qin Feng's zombie body craved for these blood chi, because these blood chi were the essence of countless blood condensed in it. If one absorbed it, it would be the same as absorbing these blood essences. Immediately, Qin Feng held it in his hand, and immediately afterward, his body began to absorb the blood chi of the blood jade in his hand somewhat uncontrollably. This feeling was very comfortable and made Qin Feng feel very satisfied. At the same time, after these blood chi entered his body, it made him feel like his power was continuing to grow, and vaguely, he ran into some sort of invisible barrier. Another breakthrough? Qin Feng himself is a bit surprised, it's only been a few days since he broke through the white-eyed zombie, if he breaks through again, wouldn't he be grey-eyed? Thinking of this, Qin Feng gets up and says he's going to the restroom. When he reached the toilet, Qin Feng started to absorb the blood chi and the blood jade crazily, not too long after he absorbed all the blood chi inside. Immediately after that suddenly he tilted his head back and stared at his eyes, at this moment his eyes became white, at the same time there was white corpse chi on his body, and the two zombie teeth in his mouth came out again. The next moment, the white color in his eyes began to slowly darken a bit. Or rather, it began to slowly transform into gray. At the same time, the corpse chi on his body also started to change from white to gray. And the corpse aura, became a little more intense, and the aura became even more terrifying. Roar. Qin Feng couldn't help but let out a low roar, then he lowered his head and clenched his fists, feeling the powerful strength in his body. Did you break through, the gray-eyed zombie? So fast, it's fucking like being hung up. Qin Feng exhaled a breath, then collected the zombie teeth, and the pupils of his eyes became normal black, his body's corpse gas converged, and he went out of the toilet. The auction hall is still continuing, Qin Feng took his seat and looked at the jade in his hand, it has become a normal white jade. Continued waiting, after a few more pieces of antiques, finally, an exquisite box appeared. The host slowly opened the box, and inside was none other than a black, rounded bead. Placing the box on a stand, the host said, Ladies and gentlemen, the bead you see now is called the Soul Restoring Bead, as the name suggests, this bead can play the role of restoring the soul and nourishing the body, which is where its value lies. And this bead also has a history, it is said to be a bead made by some powerful illusionists during the Tang Dynasty. Although it is a legend, the magical effects that the bead itself has are self-evident. She said a long string of words, raising the grade of this bead continuously, making everyone very curious and yearning. Then a reserve price was given, two million dollars. At once, many people started auctioning. Even a big boss like Mr. Xia wanted to get this bead in the first place, so this shows that there are still quite a few people who want it. So the price went all the way up, and in the end it even reached 6 million. Only Qin Feng under the stage frowned, the host said it was called Soul Settling Bead? Yes, if it is called Soul Setting Beads, which is called Soul Restoring Beads to make people feel at ease to buy. So Qin Feng dispelled his doubts. At this time, the price reached 8 million, the voice of the shouting is also less. Su Long was ready to make a move and shouted, 10 million dollars. This time, he couldn't shout too high, otherwise everyone would think that it was a good thing, in case someone raised the price again. But even though everyone else had lost interest, there were still people following the price. 12 million. Qin Feng looked over and the person who shouted this price was none other than Zhou Zhi. Qin Feng froze, thinking to himself that this guy, is also here to seize the soul defining pearl? Chapter 48, Forced Robbery. As Qin Feng looked at Zhou Zhi, Zhou Zhi also looked at Qin Feng and smiled provocatively. Qin Feng's eyes narrowed, it seemed right, the other party was also here to seize the soul setting pearl. It was at this moment that Su Long shouted with a stern face, 20 million dollars. The entire room was shocked, all of them did not expect the Su family had to be so determined to win this bead. 
But immediately after that, Joji opened his mouth, $25 million. The crowd looked over, and immediately there were murmurs. This is the son of the Zhou family, although the Zhou family is not much worse than the Su family, but the son of the Zhou family actually dared to fight with the Su family head in the open, brain in the water? Su Long's face did not change, $50 million. Joji's face sank, gritting his teeth, $60 million. This is really a god's fight, the previous few million is like a child's playground. Su Long remained calm, 100 million. The audience clamored, 100 million dollars? Buy a bead? Well rich people arbitrary. Joji's face was getting worse and worse, when Qin Feng said that he would help save Joji's father if he gave him 100 million. Joji didn't agree, so he spent 5 million dollars to ask Lu Qian, the son of the spell family Lu family, to help. Lu Qian said he needed the soul fixing bead, so he came here. Now the soul fixing beads were shouted down to 100 million in one bite. Joji calculated, Nima la sa. But without the soul beads, his father will die, Zhou family will be half finished. Just at this time, a side of Lu Qian calmly said, Don't panic, let them spend this money to auction, and I'll just grab the beads and jade from wherever they are. Joshi said, But, didn't you say that my father couldn't last the night? So, snatch it now. Lu Qian sneered, But there are so many people here? Zhou Zhi had some concerns. Lu Qian, however, was not afraid and said viciously, If you piss me off, kill them all. The big deal is to burn them in a fire afterward. At this time, the auction is still continuing. Su Long has already gone to pay the money and the staff sends over the box containing the soul restoring beads. Xin Feng opened the box and looked at it, realizing that the beads inside did have a mysterious power that was very special. This kind of exotic treasure was originally priceless. Nay, these mortals did not know its preciousness and actually measured it in terms of money. Xin Feng closes the box and hands it over to Xiao Meng, then says to Su Long, 100 million dollars for this thing. It's simply a huge profit. Su Long smiled and said, mainly because it's useful to my daughter, 10 billion dollars is worth it. Xiao Mang also smiled and grabbed the box in her hand. However, right at this moment, two figures walked over. Looking up, it was none other than Zhou Zhi and Lu Qian, Qin Feng spoke indifferently. Both of you, you didn't get the shot, are you still unconvinced? Not convinced? I still have to thank you guys for making me spend less money. Zhou Zhi sneered. Then his face sank as he said, Xin Feng, hand over the soul determining pearl, otherwise you'll surely die today. Xin Feng laughed then and said, I don't know where you get your confidence from, did he give it to you? Saying that he looked at Lu Qian who was currently sizing up little dream with a greedy gaze, then smiled with satisfaction and said, hand over both the soul fixing pearl and the blood jade and I won't make things difficult for you, of course, my anger needs to be extinguished by this beautiful young lady. Xin Feng's face sank as he kicked out. That Lu Qian's face changed, and he hurriedly gathered light green breath to resist. With a bang, the green breath dissipates, Lu Qian directly takes a few steps back and sits on his butt on a chair, his arms somewhat numb. The scene here attracted everyone's attention, a staff member came forward and politely said, Several gentlemen, please keep the venue quiet. Fuck off. Lu Qian stood up and waved his hand, a faint chi shook the staff member directly out. The whole place was shocked and the host shouted for security. At this time, Lu Qian didn't care that there were dozens of people here, and directly shouted at Qin Feng. Hand over the blood jade and soul restoring pearl, or I'll let you die here. Qin Feng sneered, you want the jade right, here you go. With a wave of his hand, the jade flew out to be caught by Lu Qian, but at a closer look, the blood jade had become white jade, where there was still a bit of blood? This time Lu Qian really angry, yelled out, you looking for death? Then his body rushed up in one step, his fist condensed a faint green breath and smashed over at Qin Feng. Qin Feng also blandly punched a fist, bang the two fists intersected, the results of Qin Feng did not move, but Lu Qian once again flew backwards. After stabilizing his body, Lu Qian said with an ugly face, Impossible, your strength is at most about the same as my little uncle, you can kill him, but it's impossible to be my opponent right? Your little uncle? That mister. Lu who knows spells. Oh, it's true that snakes and rats are all in the same nest, none of them are good. Qin Feng laughed coldly. Lu Qian also realized at this moment that Qin Feng was definitely not as simple as he thought. But no matter what the reason was, he had to destroy Qin Feng to capture the soul-fixing pearl and Xiao Meng, an extremely beautiful woman, as well as his face. So Lu Qian's eyes were grim as he opened his mouth, Qin Feng, you forced me to do this, so let all the people here, bury you today. The surrounding auction guests froze, what did that mean? This young man was going to kill everyone here? Crap, this young man, has a sick brain, right? An old man said. A middle-aged man also said in a cold voice, young people nowadays, are they so hostile? Speaking so recklessly now? That's right, watch too many TV dramas, the lines are so middle-aged, it's really boring. A girl scoffed. Lu Qian sneered and said, go ahead and say it, you guys will regret for it. Lu Qian then looked at Qin Feng and then touched out a black talisman. 
After taking out the talisman paper he violently unfolded it and shouted, The seven deadly deities come out. As the words fell, a black aura flew out from the black talisman paper, transforming into seven black shadows that flew down the hall. These black shadows seemed to be in human form, floating in the air and emitting weird sounds were very scary, scaring the several security guards who just rushed in, not to mention the dozens of people in the hall. At the same time the windows and doors around all closed, and then heard Lucian's grim voice laughing. He 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 he. Everyone don't want to go today, all die here. In the hall, quite a few women screamed out in terror by the horrifying scene in Lu Qian's words, all of them were extremely fearful. Qin Feng, on the other hand, his eyes narrowed as he realized that these seven figures were all very powerful ghosts, carrying a terrifying fury. This Lu Qian is really a crazy person, for his own selfish interests and personal grudges, he actually went so far as to use evil magic in public and tried to kill everyone, he really deserves to be family with that mister. Lu. Such a person, stay in this world, that is the real scourge. So Qin Foam had already decided to kill this guy. Seven deadly ghosts, kill this brat for me first. Lu Qian pointed at Qin Feng and said to the seven ghosts in the air. Those seven ghosts heard the order and one by one flew over at Qin Feng. Qin Feng raised his eyelids and condensed gray corpse Qi in his hands, then he slammed his fist at the flying ghosts. With a bang, the ghost that rushed at the front, its soul instantly exploded. Chapter 49, Looking for Qin Feng for a one-on-one -on -one fight. After punching one of the ghosts and sending its soul flying, the other six ghosts continued to fly in, each of them waving their claws with a terrifying fury, as if they wanted to tear Qin Feng apart. However, Qin Feng was calm, any ghost that dared to come close, he directly went up and punched them, even if they were fury ghosts, their souls immediately flew apart. At this moment, there were already three demonic ghosts that had dissipated under Qin Feng's fist, and cold sweat gradually appeared on Lu Qian's forehead. These seven demonic ghosts were refined by him with great effort, and each one of them was very powerful, but he didn't expect that in Qin Feng's hands, he would actually destroy one of them with a single punch. Is this still a human being? Lu Chen really can't figure it out. At this time, Qin Feng had begun to take the initiative to attack those ghosts, until the last ghost was destroyed by Qin Feng, Lu Qian was still in a daze. He stared blankly at Qin Feng and realized that he had seriously underestimated him. Still, he didn't admit defeat and said to Qin Feng, I didn't expect you to be this strong, but it's a pity that you met me. As the words fell, he saw his hands waving, wisps of green aura emerged, then formed an odd seal, which he pushed with force and flew towards Qin Feng. Qin Feng could feel the terrifying power on the seal, however, these powers were really not considered strong for the current Qin Feng. Only to see Qin Feng twisting his body and kicking his foot carrying a terrifying corpse Qi on the flying seal, the snapping sound directly crumbled and dissipated that seal. Lu Qian's face turned white and a mouthful of blood spurted out. He looked at Qin Feng incredulously and said, No. It's impossible. Qin Feng slowly walked up and looked at Lu Qian with a compassionate gaze and said, With this amount of strength, you have the nerve to blabber on here? Then he raised his hand and patted Lu Qian's shoulder and said, Better hurry up and get lost. Lu Qian spat out two more mouthfuls of blood, he had been backfired by his own spells and was seriously injured. He knew that his current self was no match for Qin Feng. Still, he opened his mouth and said, I won't let you go, just wait for me. Saying that, he twisted his head and walked towards the outside of the hall, Zhou Ji on the side followed closely, not daring to utter a single breath. Throughout the entire process, Qin Feng had a smile on his face as he just stood in the hall looking at Lu Qian who had gone out the door. Waiting for Lu Qian to walk out far away, the smile on Qin Feng's face grew even bigger, then he faintly spoke, blow up. At this time, Lu Qian, who had walked far away, his face changed violently, and with a struggling face, he said, he, he tapped me on the shoulder left a gas in my body. Words just spoke, poof, Lu Qian's entire body suddenly like a bomb exploded. And the body that blew up were all worn out and dissipated by Qin Feng right in his body's corpse Qi, leaving no bit of flesh and blood behind. Zhou Ji who stood beside Lu Qian was also affected by Lu Qian's blowing up, an arm and leg were directly broken, and he screamed in pain. No one in the hall saw this scene, only Qin Feng saw it. He withdrew his gaze and looked at the people in the hall, speaking faintly. What everyone has seen and heard today, I hope that you don't go out and talk nonsense, otherwise it's not good if you get into any trouble. Everyone said that they didn't dare to talk nonsense, after all, this was all beyond their knowledge, even if they said it, no one would believe them. Everyone felt that this was all like a dream, somewhat unreal. After returning to the Su clan, Qin Feng put asked little dream to bring the soul fixing bead with him. Xiao Meng had a special necklace made, and the soul determining bead was fixed to the necklace and worn around his neck. The moment he put on the soul fixing bead, Xiao Meng suddenly felt a spiritual shock and said, it seems like, there's no more of that trance feeling, inexplicably there's more of a peace. Qin Feng breathed a sigh of relief and said, it seems to be a real soul fixing bead, I did not expect a treasure, but it is measured by money among mortals. 
Staying at Su's house that night, after arriving at school the next day, Xin Feng actually saw Huang Mao in his class. It turns out that this guy is also studying, but before in the town, now through the arrangement of his junior uncle, old Taoist Blackwood, he has entered Qin Feng's school, still in the same class. This time Qin Feng is not bored, there is yellow hair this goods in the class, I believe it will be very interesting. It's just that Qin Feng didn't expect that interesting things actually happened to him. After lunch, after Qin Feng and Xiao Meng came out of the cafeteria, they were blocked by a few men. The scene attracted many men and women to watch. Qin Feng frowned as he looked at the men and said, What do you mean? One of the males said with a serious face, Student Qin Feng, we want to fight you one-on-one. -on -one. Qin Feng froze, four or five of them looking for Laozi to fight alone? Why? I don't seem to have messed with you guys, right? Qin Feng was a bit puzzled. Because I like schoolgirl Xiaoming, but by what right did you dump the class flower and then chase after the school flower? A philanderer like you doesn't deserve to be with little dream schoolgirl. I'm not convinced, so I'm going to challenge you, if I win you'll leave little dream schoolmate and I'll pursue her. The male student said with a serious face. Qin Feng nodded, this reason was okay. So he looked at the other male, what about you? You're also going to chase after Xiao Meng while singling me out? The other male said, I know that schoolmate Xiao Meng can't see me, but she's my goddess. I heard that you kissed my goddess, wah, I'm jealous, I'm hard, I'm going to beat you up. Xin Feng nodded, this reason, it makes sense. So he looks at the third male again, so do you want to chase after Xiao Meng, or are you just jealous? The third male tartly touched his bangs and looked up at the sky at 45 degrees and said, neither. That day I was walking around campus with the girl I like, but she told me to stop looking for her in the future and to break up with me. Xin Feng's eyes glared, what the hell does it have to do with me? Your girlfriend broke up with you and you're also looking for me to go solo? Tartman said, you wait for me to finish it, I asked her why she broke up, she said, because she liked her male god. Slutty man said, are almost crying. Xin Feng frantic, this fucking also does not have anything to do with the old man ah? The Tark man looked at Qin Feng angrily, the male god she's talking about is you, Qin Feng. Eh? Qin Feng suddenly froze, gloating, I'm actually a male god level in school? Then Qin Feng looked at the fourth male, a fat guy, so Qin Feng said, Fatty, you're so fat, you shouldn't have a girlfriend, right? The fat man froze, solid old iron, so he opened his mouth and said, I am just purely here to get together. Qin Feng speechless, Nima a group of oddball ah. But can see, around a lot of boys look at Qin Feng's eyes, that all want to be Qin Feng ah. Who let Qin Feng get their school's breathtakingly beautiful number one duty Su Meng, and also kissed, which ruined the dreams of how many boys ah. Qin Feng thought about it and said, forget about single combat, you guys go together. The first three males were furious and rushed towards Qin Feng, that even if they were punished by the school, they would beat up Qin Feng first before they could do so. But just as they got close, Qin Feng put them down with a leg sweep. The remaining fat guy who was leaping forward turned his head away when he saw this scene. Xin Feng smiled and looked at the four people rubbing their asses on the ground, and was about to leave when he suddenly thought that there was one more important thing he hadn't done, and that was to act tough. So he put his hands behind his back and sneered, Just you guys, how dare you challenge me? Garbage. After saying that, he turned around in a dashing manner, leaving behind a back that made countless women infatuated and countless men gnashing their teeth. Pretending was sometimes an art, and pretending well would have unexpected effects. Just like Qin Feng at this moment, he casually pretended to be a pussy and caused a large swath of young girls to kiss his ass. After leaving with a satisfied twist of his head, Qin Feng secretly thought to himself that he must be more level-headed in the future. After returning to the classroom, classes continued to start. With the soul determining beat on her body, Xiao Meng didn't need to follow Qin Feng at all times at night, so she stayed at the school. Qin Feng was also too lazy to go home and was going to stay at the school dormitory tonight. Then helplessly, he even had to go to the evening study hall. It was already dark when he was studying at night, and Qin Feng was bored in the classroom. At this time he found his desk by the window of the yellow hair has been staring out the window, cannot help but curiously asked. What are you looking at? Yellow hair said, look at the two fools below, you see, there is a man and a ghost, they're staring at each other for a class. Qin Feng was puzzled and put his head together to look out the window, and sure enough, he saw a gloomy ghost in a small garden under the school building. At the moment, the ghost was standing there, staring blankly ahead. When Qin Feng looked to the side of it, he saw a fat man on the opposite side of the ghost, also staring blankly at the ghost. The man and the ghost were two to three meters apart, just staring at each other, not moving. Qin Feng was puzzled, and after looking for a while, he realized that they were still looking at each other motionlessly. So he opened his mouth and said, isn't this fat guy the one who was looking for me to fight in the daytime? He can see ghosts ah, why not afraid? Yellow hair said, it looks like he can see ghosts, possibly out of curiosity. But I've been watching them, these two guys have been staring at each other for a class, it's really boring. Qin Feng froze, thinking to himself, 
You've been watching others for a class, you seem to be even more bored, right? And you still have the nerve to laugh at others. Xin Feng didn't pay any more attention, while Yellow Hair continued to watch with great interest, this guy was really the most boring. After two evening study sessions, Qin Feng and Yellow Hair went downstairs and walked towards the small garden. In the small garden, that one person and one ghost were still staring at each other, really Nima have perseverance ah. So Qin Feng suspiciously went up and opened his mouth to ask, what are you two looking at? Fatty looked back, looked at Qin Feng, smiled sardonically and said, this guy has been looking at me, I'm not convinced, I also looked at him, and then stared at each other for more than an hour. That ghost was a male ghost, in his twenties, and at this moment, he sniffed and said, how do you know I look at you if you don't look at me? Hey, no, you, can really see me? Qin Feng face skin trembled open mouth said, damn he cannot see you, can with you here to stare at an hour? The most important thing is to stare at an hour, you still do not realize that the fat man can see you? Your ghost brain is also too bad, right? Smiling at that, Fatty laughed and said, that's right, stupid as a fool. Xin Feng grinned at the corner of his mouth and said to Fatty, you still have the nerve to laugh at others, your damn brain isn't much better, you've actually been staring at a ghost here for more than an hour, it's really. Xin Feng couldn't find words to describe Fatty. Fatty scratched his head, then said with a surprised face, ghost? It, is a ghost? I said how this cargo looks uglier than me, hey no, I said how this cargo does not look like a human being. And Qin Feng was even more surprised and said, You, are not afraid of ghosts? Not afraid of ah, what is there to be afraid of, is ugly. Fatty smiled. Qin Feng can't help but admire this fat man a little, but on second thought, it may not be that he is bold, it is more likely that he is missing a bone, so he is not afraid of ghosts. So Qin Feng turned his head towards the male ghost and said, Who are you? Why are you here? The ghost spoke, I died in this school before, so I'm here ah. However, when it said this, it seemed to have violently remembered something and said, not good, I almost forgot about what that guy gave me. Saying this it turned around and floated towards the distance, floating for a while and then turned back to Fatty and said, Brother, with you look at so long is also considered to have feelings, kindly remind you, April 5th day do not come to school, or we'll die. Sheen Foam and Yellow Hair both froze when they heard this and wanted to ask the ghost, who had already left. What do you mean? Don't come to school on April 5th or you'll die? Sheen Foam frowned. At this time, Yellow Hair's face became ugly and said to Sheen Foam, it seems that Odd Man's Mansion's guess was right, there is indeed something wrong with this school. Qin Feng looked at Yellow Hair suspiciously, then asked, You came to the school for a purpose? Ah uh ah, -uh, otherwise why did Junior Master invite me here, really sending me to study? Yellow Hair rolled his eyes. Then Yellow Hair opened his mouth, My little uncle has always suspected that there is something wrong with the school, because in the last two years there have been too many students who have committed suicide, eight died in two years, and all of them were beautiful young ladies. The little master uncle once detected that the school has been getting heavier and heavier in the last year or so, and it has reached a serious point. He suspected that there were ghosts in the school, so he didn't dare to come and investigate openly for fear of spooking the snakes, so he sent me to the school. Xin Feng probably understands, so what that ghost said just now might have something to do with the school's dead incident? Yellow hair nods and says, there should be a connection, otherwise how would it know that someone is going to die? And April 5th, isn't it the Qingming Festival? Xin Feng also felt that there might be something going on here. At this time, the fat man on the side suddenly opened his mouth with a serious face. I also have something big, I believe you guys will be interested. Xin Feng and Yellow Hair looked solemnly, and heard Fatty say, you guys come with me. Looking at Fatty's serious face, Xin Feng and Yellow Hair didn't dare to be slow and hurriedly followed. Not long after, they arrived outside the girl's dormitory, and then followed Fatty carefully behind the sidewall of the girl's dormitory building. Here basically no one, is also a monitoring blind area, there are some window openings and installed outside the air conditioning unit. Xin Feng whispered, be careful, if someone finds out, they'll think we've come to spy on the girl's dormitory, then there'll be no defense. Yellow hair nodded, while Fatty gestured with a serious face. The approximate meaning was for Xin Feng and yellow hair, to climb up through the air conditioning unit installed outside. The two saw that Fatty was so serious, and did not dare to delay. Then after seeing the fat man's obese body climbed up skillfully, they also climbed up immediately. Climbed to the second floor, an air conditioning unit a little above a small window account. Fatty solemnly said, you look inside. Then Xin Feng and Yellow Hair both took a deep breath, and the fat man together probed his head to look into the small window. This time, they saw that there were a few girls taking a bath inside the small window. Hey, not right ah, uh, this, is not to peep? Xin Feng was speechless and said, is this the big fucking deal that you said we were interested in, fatty? I'm fucking crazy I come with you guys to peep at the girls bathing? Am I that kind of person? I jumped down from here today I also. Ugh you don't say, that long haired girl has a pretty good body ha. Huh? 